Hello everyone, oh, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're back for another live stream playthrough. This time we're playing through Arkham Horror the Board Game. You see behind our heads or above our heads here. Welcome, welcome everyone in the live chat. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, hello. hello. Uh, you're here already, nice, nice. Uh, so Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, this is the first time we're ever streaming it on the channel. Uh, for those that are curious. Um, We've played now, we're on like this, you know, HP Lovecraft, Arkham Horror Files, Fantasy Play Games kick, um, you know, in the, over the last few months or so. And uh, now we're trying Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, the board game, uh, which is a game I saw unveiled at Gen Con, uh, saw demoed at Gen Con the first year. It was uh, shown off early. And I asked some people at the convention who have played Arkham Horror 2nd Edition, and there was a lot of ho-hum, and why are they doing this, and it's not needed, and it, why is it not compatible, and FFG ruined my life, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, so I went, okay, I'm staying away from that, uh, and avoiding it. Uh, but over time, they've come up with expansions, people have been asking us to play it on the channel, so then I was like... Okay, maybe, and then, you know, now we play Arkham Horror, the, the the card game version of this game, like, card game version, not really, but, uh, I guess it is. Um, so we started playing Arkham Horror, the card game, we played Arkham Horror Final Hour, was, like, our really first, mm -hmm. first experience with an Arkham Horror Files game, and then we realized, like, oh, wait, this is just some little game, kind of like Elder Sign idea, and it's not really an Arkham Horror game, it could be anything, it's just very, like, themeless. Um, so yeah, we play like Cthulhu Death May Die, and uh, now we've played Elder Sign, we've played Arkham Horror the Card Game, I don't know what other HP... Mansion of Madness. Mansion of Madness was the first one. Yeah, that was the first one, yes, yes. Sorry, Mansion of Madness was the first one that got us even looking at the Cthulhu mythos and all that stuff. Sorry, Mansion of Madness 2nd yeah. Edition. And I love that game, that game is amazing, well done, app integration, I'm all for it. And then once like we started having fun with that and I kind of liked <laughs> it, it was like, alright, I can be kind of swayed on other games but this is not an ip i'm usually into but now i'm like buying books and novels and <laughs> looking up shows and movies and stuff and uh yeah yeah so uh so we got this game now and there are more to come so uh yeah stay tuned to the channel uh more arkham horror themed games and things coming including a uh, more tomorrow we're playing through arkham horror the card game curse of the rougarou using some investigator starter decks so tune in for that and while we're on the topic actually 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 um uh we're gonna be starting soon in a couple weeks maybe three weeks two weeks one week i, I don't know arkham horror the card game we've been playing through it blind we've collected a bunch of the cards thanks to the pressure from our supporters patreons producers everyone who you know funds the channel and keeps us going uh lots of pressure lots of pressure so uh we gave in we've been playing this game we played through the corset campaign dunwich legacy pat the carcosa we are soon going to be playing through Blind for the first time, the Forgotten Age playthrough series. Uh, and we did a vote for all the viewers, anyone who follows us on Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, eh, subscribers, all that, uh, Patreons. I let them all know to vote on which characters we play with. And we're doing it kind of like a progression series. So the investigators were chosen. It was Ursula and Father Mateo uh, won the poll. So Mel, Mel was vote was chosen to play with ursula mm -hmm. uh father mateo in my poll actually just squeaked past uh ursula so it's like but obviously i would have if father mateo didn't win it was weird like uh we both uh, almost had ursula as the top voted uh character that people wanted both of us to play with so there's some that wanted me to play with it i don't know what the, they were voting for you because there was no second close one there was so many that were all tied kind of um, so a lot of people, I guess, voted Ursula for me and then just picked like something interesting for you. Yeah. But that interesting was kind of a split vote and spread out. So the investigators were chosen. Now we have a poll up. Uh, we've had some of our producers who are in our private discord. Uh, if you want to join that discord, Patreon links down below, or you can hit the join button, uh, to find out more information about that. Uh, but in there, we have a, a group of Arkham Horror card game fans who build decks, who discuss the game, who meet and come up with crazy deck ideas for us to play with uh, on the stream during those campaigns and stuff. Uh, so they all submitted some decks blindly uh, or privately. I, I know some of them know what each other's deck is and whatnot. But uh, I posted a poll. The link is in the live chat and the video description. And you can go vote on the decks we play with for that series. So I'm just letting you guys know anyone can vote. 
This this poll is fully open to anyone who watches the channel. Uh, it's one vote per person. You got to log in with a Google account. Uh, but all the decks are linked in the poll, and you can go through them. You can pick them just if you don't even know that game very well. Uh, I asked everyone to kind of just give it like a funny name or a, a clever name to your deck. Um, which they did. Which they did. Uh, so I know some people are just voting who watch the channel, watch along, who don't own the game or, or know the game very well like we don't. Uh, they just vote based on deck names. So if you're just interested, go vote based yeah. on like what name was clever or if there's some cards in there you like or whatever. Uh, you can look through the decks. You can take the time. And as of now, uh, let me see here. I'm going to post... In the live chat, get the the link in there because I didn't post it. Okay, so the link is in the live chat if you if you want to take a couple minutes uh, or open it in a tab and do it later. But there have been forty five people, and I'm impressed because wow. uh, there's forty five people. I know some people just voted based on name or whatever, or some of the creators voted on their own decks or whatever. That's fine. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, the people who actually went in and like looked through some of the decks and picked some uh, and took the time to do that, because this isn't just a normal poll, like, hey, what game should we play? This game or this game? Like, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It doesn't take two seconds to just click and go. Uh, some people are taking the time to go through and look at the decks that were submitted uh, over on ArkhamDB, and you guys are awesome. Thank you for taking the time to do that. Uh, we appreciate it very much. So if you want to impact uh, which Father Mateo deck I play and which Ursula... Uh, Ursula Downs, is it? Yeah, yeah. Ursula yeah. Downs, uh, deck that you play, uh, you can get in there. So uh, go in there, vote. Uh, your vote can make an impact still. I, I don't expect this poll to have a crazy amount of respondents because A, they have to be following along with that series, and B, take the time to actually go in there and like look through decks. But you don't have to. You can pick it just based on name if you want. But go in there, get your vote in, have some fun with it, and we'll play the deck. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then you guys can impact through the playthrough how we upgrade the decks uh, through the comment section uh, and how we spend or save our XP or whatnot through that playthrough series. So if you want to watch that, subscribe to the channel uh, and turn on your notifications and you'll be notified when we go live with our Forgotten Age uh, campaign playthrough, which should be coming up in the next couple weeks. So, boom, there you go. Uh, uh, let's see what... A lot of people are just coming in and saying hello. <laughs> hey, Sherston. Yeah, I, I thought that too. Uh, yeah, I put it in the credits. I got to change it because I put in Sherston in the credits too. And I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, yes, yeah, yes. so it's fine. So now that, now in the credits, we got Sherston and Chizzy. But I'll, I'll get rid of the Chizzy and, and update <laughs> and everything. Um, but I may forget. So you get your name in there twice. But you do you do back us on two things. So it's it's like whatever. <laughs> no worries. But yeah, I was going to ask. I was like, I was a little confused. But I just threw it in anyway. But thank you for letting us know. Oh. So these like the refreshes. No. We got oh, a new producer. New Christopher, Christopher Headland. Hello. Thank welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you for becoming a producer and supporting the channel by clicking the join button. Uh, down below. Thank you so much. Speaking of this, uh -oh. just an FYI, people's dice are starting to change. If you scroll up, we'll see some orange dice in oh, there. Oh, no way. Yeah. So, I was looking for it. I was um, at the start of the stream, like when we're waiting to go. You scroll up a little bit, who, you can who, see. So Janet it? is an orange. Oh, James yeah. James has orange. Tara, Shane. Sick. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it is working. Nice. Yeah. So that's awesome. So thank you, James, Janet, and Shane, Tara. Shane and Tara. There might Oops. be another one up. Uh, I can't remember. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I just it, thought this when before we started. Thought, thank you for keeping your support beyond yes. two months or, or whatever, whenever that changes. And it, it'll keep changing colors at, at like the six month and the twelve month. Uh to really show like who's who's been around supporting the channel through the YouTube membership program. Yeah. Uh which is pretty cool. So you get like bragging rights and that kind of stuff. I gotta come up with other stuff in there too, but yeah. Thank you so much for we your support. That. We appreciate it. And Christopher, if you have a Discord, make sure you link your Discord to your YouTube and you can jump into our yeah. Discord channel. Yeah, it is automatic. As long as you have a Discord account, you go in, you just Google how to link Discord to uh, YouTube and then uh, it should automatically pull you in with like a bot into the group. And then you can chat with our other producers in there, um, send us messages and also... Uh, chat with us. Yeah, you can... Um, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, was sorry. Gonna say? You can get in the Arkham Horror or, or whatever uh, channels and talk about specific things and stuff. Uh, and yeah, so that would be cool. So I'm trying to promote his decks. Go vote. Hint, hint. My decks are the best. Uh, but don't say which decks are yours, Bob. Nope. Please don't. We're trying to keep it so nobody knows whose decks are what, you know, because 
you know, people might find out this deck's Bob's and then no one votes for it, you know, that kind of thing, just based on Bob's attitude and stuff like that. So, you know, <laughs> just kidding. Or people in the, in the, the other side of the spectrum, you know, Kate's awesome. And, and, you know, then people vote for Kate's deck because Kate's, you know, extra awesome. And then, you know, that kind of thing. So I wanted to see, I wanted people to vote on the decks just based on like, just their bias, their favorite cards. They're like, you know, I think Father Mateo should be built with these cards, not these cards. And like this deck stinks because it doesn't use these cards. Or this deck's got a crazy combo, which I want to see on YouTube. Uh, this Rob guy get frustrated trying to figure it out. You know, that kind of stuff. So, yes, dad joke. There's a dad oh, joke there's channel. A da yeah, there. yeah, yeah. That is the best. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> I remember the day that we started that channel. I was crying, yeah, yeah. laughing out loud on the couch. I look every now and then I go into <laughs> the scroll and I just shake my head for like a minute. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing in here? <laughs> what am I doing? But it's definitely a good place to go if you're having yes. a bad day. <laughs> and Brian S is in the chat. He, he'll be yeah. your ambassador for the dad joke yep. uh, channel there. Can and get you started. I think you, I think Bob's in help. there a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so good, yeah. I have official word. K is awesome. Yes, uh, I I I, I mean, think I think you said that before. I, I don't say it enough, or maybe I said it when you weren't <laughs> on stream or something. But yeah, I I, I yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a timestamp later. Yeah, you know when Rob said K is awesome, and then like <laughs> you know links and everything all over the place, like that one time. Remember. Yep. But yeah, no, no, it's official. <laughs> it's been official for a long time. Uh, especially compared to Bob. I mean, come on. Like, I'm just kidding, Bob. Love you too. But I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, what's next? Let's uh, let's go to the BGGs. Uh, this is like the first time we're kind of playing this game. Uh, I'm sure people know what this game is. This is like. Technically, it's like the fourth edition of this game, um, I think. Yeah, like we're late to the party on this one. Or second edition. No, it's, it's third edition, I think. First edition was 80s, second edition, 2000s, and then third edition, 2019, 2018. Uh, I think Board Game Geek's broken, though. I think we're geek geeks broken slowly uh, this morning as I've been on the website. Oh. I noticed stats have been missing, images that... haven't been loading. So they're having some servers fail or some database issues and corruption or something. Um, but something's happening. Yeah, because there was. Oh. oh, now the pictures are loading. If I refresh. Oh, we got a super chat from Kanji. Hashtag Kate is awesome. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Kate is awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> he just wanted that official timestamp. Yeah, yeah. There. Now, now there's two timestamps that are just going to be all about Kate. Come on. That's it. Never again. No, just, uh, playing the last Insmo scenario and chilling with you guys. Thanks for the company in the pandemic world. Jordan. Jordan. Welcome. Thank you. We appreciate you being yes, here. Thank you for your company through the pandemic world, yeah. too. It goes both ways. Like, it you does. guys all chilling in the chat, keeping us sane while we're staying inside, trying to, you know, avoid virus contamination, whatever. People. And not getting troubled by our government and all yeah. that stuff. While everyone's getting jabs in their arms. You two just get <laughs> So uh, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition came out in 2018. Uh, and it's not loading the ranking where it is in all board games of all time. It's not loading the ratings. Uh, the complexity is there. This is a 3.28 complexity for those that aren't familiar. Uh, which means it's a medium game. But some consider it medium and heavy it looks like. Okay. Almost the same amount. Uh, so yeah, let's say medium, heavy. I'm assuming expansions probably increase that complexity. We are just playing with the base game today. FYI, just base game. Okay. We're still new to it. This is going to be our third time playing the game. Feel free to help out, at, you know, point out rules, strategy stuff. Just discuss the game in general. We're learning the game. We're new to it. We're kind of late to the party. Um, but I, I, I don't know if this game sold that well that like a lot of people have and it's just known to be like a really good game. Again, I can't tell you what the rating is. I can't tell you what the ranking is. Excuse me. I can't tell you what the ranking is uh, because it won't load. Uh, there's like database issues or something. Like I click on this, it goes nowhere. And then we can't see the all-time game list. I checked a few other games. It's not working either. So I don't know if it's just me where I am uh, on our, you know, cloud replication servers uh or if, if this is the same everywhere um but if you guys can check just go load up bgg and click on any board game uh and see if you get a rating showing up or a, a ranking up here it's not showing up for me 
but it's still pulling all this data. So like, I don't know if it's just like one table is broken or something. Hmm. Um, Are they updating something? Maybe. Yeah. So it's best with three players. We're only playing two. We're only playing two, obviously. Um, but yeah, we plan to play this with more players in the future, yes. as we do with most games. It's just COVID has kind of screwed us with uh, having more players come and play with us. So eventually, once everyone gets their, their jabs, and uh, uh, we know a few of our players that play with us on stream already have got their first shot. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there. it's a matter of time. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, we're counting down the days. <laughs> um, boom. All right. Let's, uh, let's get down to the table, I guess, and we'll talk about our scenario. Oh, Kate says, looks like the same for me, but oh, Kate, okay. you're in the... But she's west, though. Yeah, so, true, uh, true. But, but, but we're, Canada. we're most likely pulling from servers around the Chicago area, both of us, so... Uh, anyways, let's, uh, let's, let's fly to it. Yeah, oh, it looks the okay, same. Looks the so, same yeah, they're definitely yeah. having problems today, because sometimes the pictures aren't even loading for me uh, and, and things, so it's, they're definitely having issues this morning. Oh, in, broken in the, in the UK, UK also. too. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 something's going on. Interesting. Yeah, the rating's blank. No, no, that's what I'm okay. saying. It's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we might be pulling from the same servers. Yeah, but it's broken in UK and California as well. So oh, no. I, I assume it's everything. Quick! <laughs> what are people going to do? Yeah, how what, do we know what to play? What game to buy next? <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, this is Arkham Horror. As you can see, it barely fits on the mat. The official, we're playing with the official Arkham Horror 3rd Edition mat sold by FFG, uh, which they just use the generic 3x3 three three size for the mat, which drives me nuts uh, because that worked for X-Wing. It doesn't work for every single game they make, so stop doing it, FFG. <laughs> if the game's bigger and you want to play three, four, five players, uh, give us a mat that's larger, you jerks. Yeah, you cannot play this. Yeah, this is stupid. This is like... yeah. Yeah, we have some of the mat that's off screen, and you technically could fit some other players on it. But with all the decks and components and tokens in this game, uh, it feels like it barely fits. It's like you're you're squishing it all on. But uh, I guess if you owned a square table, it, it works. But most people play on like rectangle tables, is my understanding, uh, based on reading what board game table manufacturers talk about. That three by five is like the you know the most common size, and that's what some board games are designed with. But uh, Yes, it's a Rob's rant. So yeah, get out of here with the damn maps. But anyways, so we have it. But we got it for like a background for playing Arkham Horror LCG because the mat for Arkham Horror LCG is way too small. Yeah, that's even smaller than this one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's a four-player mat for Arkham LCG, and it like barely fits two. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna use it for solo playthroughs, I think, in the future. But uh, we do have that one. Yeah. Yeah, where's our bag? Like, we had to buy a bag again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you guys know that FFG doesn't put bags in their games that need bags? I don't think they knew that. You guys didn't know no, that? they didn't well, know that. Well, pull up a chair. Let me tell you all about it. <laughs> so these bags are made for pennies, and they won't include... No, I'm just joking. All right. Don't get on the not enough dice either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the game only comes with six dice, and literally, I think the first time I went to go roll dice, I needed seven. Yep. Because I had an item... That we'll see in a second and i went to attack a monster and i could roll three dice and then i had a thing letting me roll plus four dice so the first very turn of the game i go to attack a monster i go to reach for the dice and i realize ffg is still screwing us over with putting not enough dice in a game uh and th th these cost pennies to them like they buy them in such bulk i'm sure and these are so generic like these aren't custom these these cost nothing and they didn't just throw extras in. Like, it, it drives me nuts. Or add some to expansions. So when you buy an expansion for the game, give us a couple dice in the expansion just to add more dice. So annoying. Drives me nuts. Uh, so we have four extra dice that we pulled from another similar game uh, that has the same size and kind of generic dice. But, uh, yeah. Dear FFG, go F yourself. Uh, that's so annoying. Especially too because it was a main character with the main character's ability that you needed the dice for. It wasn't yeah, even yeah. like you had no, it, you no, drew a card right that broke it. It was right from the start from the character. And later in the game I started rolling eight for things and it's like I'm rolling dice and it's like okay I'll grab these ones, re-roll them and like you know which ones were the ones I rolled and I'm saving and like yeah it's just like yeah. why? Why? Give us enough dice to grab them quickly and roll them and just go with it like close down gameplay. It's annoying. Anyways, hashtag gamer problems. <laughs> Man. Hi, Sajat. You know this is a, is a co-op, right? No hashtag team Mel for this one. 
Yeah, well, yeah. We're playing together. <laughs> but if Team Mel does well, yeah. we do. We overall do well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I'm voting Team Mel too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's just yeah. Anyway, so enough with the FFG cheating us out of stuff, Ryan. Just increase the price of the game by fifty cents and throw in a bag and a couple more dice. Like you know, you'll still make profit on that. Uh -huh. No, your idea of adding two dice or one dice, one die to every expansion is is a good idea. That's yeah, really like good. Yeah, yeah, just throw a couple dice in expansion, increase the price of the expansion by a dollar. Like you know what I mean? Like still take advantage, you know? Yeah. Because the people who are buying expansions are hardcore into the game, and they want extra dice. In most cases, right? Yeah. And yeah, everyone can use more dice. Although at least they're generic. So you could just go buy a set of Chessex dice or something like that, or cheap dice on Amazon or eBay. Uh, any size, any kind, any color you want. And just, and just replace them. Yeah, just buy a set of, like, a couple sets of six or 12 or whatever, and then boom, you have, you have enough dice for every player at the table kind of thing if you want. But again, you'll be spending extra on that and shipping, and it's just silly. Just silly. It's the worst when they're custom dice and they don't give you enough. Yeah. And then they sell a pack on the side. With but more for dice. For like twelve dollars. Yeah, that that's just like <laughs> drives me freaking nuts. Drives me nuts. It's like not everyone needs these extra dice. Cause some people love re-rolling the same dice and forgetting what they rolled on the result. Ah. Anyways, all right. So on that positive note, we're gonna continue <laughs> on with uh setting up this game. And a reminder, we've only played twice, like I said before. Uh so this is the third time we played. We play the same characters every time. Mm -hmm. We're only playing the first scenario in the box, the recommended starting one. We've seen two different kind of paths and outcomes, uh, which I guess we won't really talk about. We'll talk about it at the end. Yeah. We'll talk about it at the end. Um, so anyone who's interested in this game, there are kind of spoilerish stuff. Um, and I thought when we played through the first time, we were going to see everything and kind of know the scenario. And then we tried, to, we reread the rules and tried to play it again. And then all of a sudden... Things started working out differently, and we saw different goals. But this has the same mechanic as Mansions of Madness and Arkham LCG. It's basically the Arkham Files kind of idea of you don't know the objective when you sit down to play. Because based on things that happen, based on choices, based on card draws, whatever, dice rolls, uh, and, and how long you take, uh, the path to victory may appear. It may appear in different versions. It may not appear at all. And uh, the try not to lose objectives show up. Uh, so it is that kind of game. It's very much like Mansion Madness Second Edition. If you've only played that, like we we did before we played all these other Arkham games, um, but it has that to it. So there will be kind of spoilers as we go on, but you'll see the basic start will be the same for everybody who plays this first recommended scenario. Uh, supposedly the scenario is supposed to be really hard. Like there is something like I saw in one video, and I saw also. On BGG, when I was looking up rules, people saying that this scenario is like shouldn't be the first scenario you play. It's it's really difficult, but I think it's it's fine rules wise. I haven't played any other scenarios, but it feels pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, so you lose. Well, welcome to Arkham Files. Like that's the way it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to win very easily, I don't think. Uh, maybe some other scenarios were not tested enough and they're too easy, and that shouldn't be a thing in this these games. Rob should be complaining that he's losing all the time. That's that's a staple to these games. If I'm not ranting and getting frustrated by the end of one of these games, they didn't do it right. So uh, we're going to play through again, and we're going to see what happens. We may see some different stuff. But if you're watching this and you're interested in playing in the future and you want to kind of be surprised on your first playthrough or two, um, probably just tune away, you know, once we get to flipping over one of the Codex cards and, and seeing what's next. Uh, and you'll kind of know when that is. Like, we, you always start out with, like, kind of the same... Things are going on the same objective, uh, and it will it will give us some codex cards. Uh, and the game comes with all these little cards here, and they have numbers in the top. And based on you achieving goals on the cards, like finding clues, very original. Um, so you just got to find clues, but then there's doom that is the bad clock ticking against you. Uh, and if too much doom happens, you may draw different cards or get rid of cards than if you start getting more clues. So it's that whole balance of clues versus doom. Uh, but we may see different cards in here than you'll see on your first playthrough, uh, for those that aren't familiar with the game. So we might see new stuff today, we might see the same stuff, we're not sure. Uh, but playing the game twice, uh, there is a lot of variability, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just look at the board, how many decks of cards. So this, we're going to shuffle up and only draw 13 out of like 40-ish uh, cards. Uh, in the base set. So every time you play, uh, these are different and can screw you over in different ways. 
Uh, this is shuffled up and random based on things happening. The enemies are shuffled up, and you'll see them different every time at different times and different orders, and they're all different strengths and stuff. So that can affect your playthrough being easier or difficult. Uh, the allies, spells, and items that come up in the shop or to buy or to grab or whatever, uh, all are shuffled and all are different. And there's quite a few items in the game. And I find that this deck, depending on what you see and what you get to specific characters, can totally change the game's difficulty, I feel. Uh, also, there's a randomized event deck, which will decide where clues go and where doom spawns. That can come up in different orders and, and be shuffled and things are different, so that's variable. Uh, the board's the same for this first scenario, uh, but these decks down here all align to a different neighborhood. And based on your shuffle of event cards into these decks for clues, uh, obviously if you're shuffling stuff, uh, clues into the deck and they're on the top, versus three down, more often than not, will lead to a quicker game or a more successful game, depending. But what I'm trying to say there's like some luck, there's some randomness, there's some variability that can drastically affect the playthrough. But there's lots of decisions to be made. So it is can get very tactical and strategic and stuff, uh, and if you're smart with actions. But it feels like there's some characters in this game that are very strong at two player, three player, four player, five player. There's some that are horrible, you know, if you're playing solo, two player, three player, that, you know, are pretty weak unless you have some other good support characters. So there's also that randomness of what your player account is and what your character is. And you do have some choices in this game, which is interesting on picking which abilities you start with. So even though you pick the same character, you can start with a different ability, which could lead you down a different play style or different path, um, which is really neat. So we're not pros with the game. I just picked Tommy Muldoon to start with. I'm familiar with him from other Arkham games. I felt like we need a fighter based on reading the rules. So I picked Tommy Muldoon and I'm gonna play with him as a fighter. I don't know if he's the best to play with two player. That is fine. We're gonna have fun today. We're not here to like win, even though you'll see me get very competitive and I wanna win. <laughs> Uh, but we're okay if we just flop. Today, we're just trying to show you guys this game, another cool Arkham Files game, because I know there's a bunch of people who watch this channel that uh, we, we didn't start this channel playing Arkham games. We played for like eight years on YouTube with no Arkham games at all. Uh, this, it wasn't our theme. It wasn't. We didn't build a channel on these at all, but we've had some fans show up, some people that like this game, lots of people recommended it. So I know there's a lot of people who haven't played this game that are watching and will watch in the future. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of treat it that way. Um, but if you're a pro and you play this game a lot, feel free to chat about it in the chat. Comment down below. Give us tips. Point out where we made poor decisions. And you know where we want to learn. We're gonna play this game more on the channel. Uh, so watch for more streams coming soon. But feel free to give us tips down below in the comments and timestamp it if you have a suggestion or a comment or a rules debate or you know something like that. We can we can talk about it in the chat. But um, anyways. Lots of decks, lots, lots of, decks. of tokens, yep. lots of tokens, lots of stuff. holy tokens. There's even more tokens that aren't even here. Yeah, we got tokens, off, tokens. The, off to the tokens side. Tokens everywhere. Tokens, this, tokens. The amount of components in this game, different decks, tokens, boards, tiles, dice, all this stuff, player cards, scenarios. I was blown away by the amount of stuff in this game. No miniatures, though. I, I like it. No miniatures. Uh, but a lot of stuff, like a lot of paper, a lot of paper. <laughs> uh, there's just a lot, which is, which is cool. But yeah, I was just like, wow, just so many things to learn and, and discover and could change. Uh, so we're playing Approach to Azathoth. Okay, we're going to read some story stuff on all these cards and things, see if we can set the mood. At the center of infinity slumbers Azathoth. Lulled to sleep by the ceaseless piping of accursed flutes. Yet some mortals would seek to draw the infinite power and calamity of the blind idiot god to them, and thereby doom of all humanity. Okay, so we're gonna go through setup. I just wanna make sure we get it all because there's a lot to it, and just make sure we've done it all. Yeah, let me. You have. What is this? This is a, this is a paper a, book? This is a rule reference. Hold on. You wanna use a crappy paper rule book to set this game up? No, 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 no. We use oh. deluxe rule books around here. So we use hardcover deluxe rule books for our games because we're balling like that. We're better than you. <laughs> we're better than you. So let's let's go through the deluxe rule book. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Get to the rules reference part. Uh, here we go. Setup. There you go. So if you can just use oh, that sure, book, sure. that'd let's, be great. Let's use Come this on. Book Come on. 
We don't use paper. <laughs> Come on now. Okay, choose our scenario. Done. Prepare the board and encounters. Uh, is this already prepared? Minus we have to just shuffle it. Okay. <laughs> Prepare the event deck. Create the monster deck. Is that done? Uh, yes. I just know we need some robed figures. So I'm going to take two of them out, but oh, okay. I will shuffle the rest of it. Well, you'll see lots of familiar monsters in here. You'll see art from all the different Arkham games. A lot of uh, reused art, which is fine. Um, but a lot of the same figures and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, and we'll shuffle. <laughs> we'll shuffle all the decks in a minute. But okay, so create the monster deck. Create the mythos cup slash bag, not included. Uh, create the headline deck. Oh yes, yes. yes Thirteen yes. headlines will yeah, be. Yeah. So we'll just do a quick job. I've been shuffling this before the stream, but uh, we'll just do some cuts and jam some cards together very sloppily here. So that book is not paper. You're right. This is paper. Uh, sorry, soft cover, soft cover. Yes, it is made of paper. Hard cover, soft cover, the words I should have used there. Uh, uh. But it uses this floppy newspaper type rule book. It is, it is fancier paper. The paper is, yeah. The it's paper nice. inside, it feels like it's thicker too. Yeah. But not by much, but it is. it does feel more quality. Yeah, yeah. What? You use the PDF on an iPad? Get out of here. Get out of here with your fancy technology. No, I'm just kidding. We'll use that too. <laughs> so, so this rule book, you guys are saying we went all out. Uh, when we ordered from our, our local store, they had these in stock, normal price. Uh, it wasn't that much more. And I, when I found out it has, if Mel can show that there's lore in there, like even at the front and the back, there's like, uh, there's like little lore write-ups. And I, I love these when they come with games. Uh, I hate when they're on Kickstarter and they cost like extra, you know, 30 bucks plus shipping and all this other stuff. Let's find some cool. But uh, when a game comes with it, like, you know, some extra lore talking about the locations, the characters and all that stuff, uh, I think that's great. Yeah. I, I think it's great. So I, I really bought it for that. I, I didn't buy it because, you know, I needed another rule book. No. But it does have lore in there. So if you're having trouble finding the Investigators of Arkham book or in the novellas or any other, the novels and stuff, uh, for Arkham Horror, this is not a bad addition to the game if you want to get more into the theme, uh, besides just like, you know, the little text boxes on scenarios and cards and stuff. So yeah, it's, it should be at your local game store. It seems like it's in stock. I had no problem getting it. Uh, oh, it was a pre-order bonus they made, apparently made too many of. Oh. Okay, maybe it's not as easy to get. I just saw it was in stock yeah, it was and in it stock. wasn't overpriced or anything weird. Yeah. I didn't have to find it on eBay for eight times the cost or anything. Uh, it was just in stock at my local game store, so uh, I was like, yeah, sure, just throw it in, whatever, it's fine. Um, That's cool. It's cool, but yeah, definitely need up upgrade, uh, which is cool. Okay, so you're going to select 13 of those. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like I said, tons left in the base set without expansions, lots of variability there, which okay. is really cool. Uh, prepare the assets and display. Okay, so I'll shuffle. I've got some allies here. Okay, I'll just do a little, little shuffle there. Some spells. Shuffle those up. Okay, this deck of, I don't remember what it's called. Special, unique, special cards, unique cards, special whatever. Cards. Uh, these are put in just alphabetical order, very much like Manage the Madness style. Um, they're kind of like the unique item deck, I consider it. This is like the common item deck, I, I would call it. Uh, but the common items, they get shuffled up. You don't grab them by name. You only care, I think, by trait usually um so we get five of them to start right yep painkillers don't think i've seen that before silver key i like that one other world codex tattered cloak and mystic tome okay not the i think it's a pocket watch we need the pocket watch to make the game easy uh which <laughs> i feel uh is a great one so this one's painkillers just a common item uh, cost a dollar in the top left. You'll see items have a cost. So if we have a chance to buy them, if we're at a specific place on the board, uh, items in this game can also soak up damage and horror by showing in the bottom left there. Same with allies in this game. They all have a trait like item. You'll see common, you'll see curio, you'll see weapons and stuff like that. So at certain points in the game, it might allow us to grab a common item, a curio item, a weapon, uh, and we can gain stuff out of this row. And if you don't like something there, you can, uh, draw through the deck until you find something with the trait you're looking for. And then you just shuffle those cards and put them on the bottom, the ones that you didn't choose. Uh, and if ever you're given the option to buy a card and you choose not to, uh, you can discard two cards if you want and draw two new cards to put them in the, the row at the end. Oh, Pocket Watch and Shotgun are the best items in the game. Shotgun? shotgun? I'm, uh, uh, have we seen that one? 
I don't know if I've seen the shotgun yet. I have seen yet. that one yet. Um, but there is another one, uh, Lucky Cigarette Case, which is always a great item in, in all the Arkham games, it feels like. Yeah. Uh, where you can, like, add a pip to it, like, increase a die by one on a test or something like that. That feels like it's really powerful, too. Yeah, definitely. Anything for rerolls, uh, changing dice values, and taking extra actions all seem like they're, like, they're, they're where it's at. Yeah. They're where it's at. Yeah, dice mitigation is definitely needed in this game. So, Silver Key is the other item available here. <laughs> Uh, item magical curio once per round you may reroll any number of dice while resolving a lore or observation test which this one is right up there yeah like I, this I one, love yeah, this one this one's right up there rerolls any number of dice very powerful uh, and on two different stat tests yeah even and, better and we need to use lore tests to help remove doom by default it's a main mechanic in the game uh so lore you're gonna do lots of lore tests in the game if you're trying to remove doom uh it also might help with other things in the scenario and observation is a way to research you have to do that test to get clues onto the scenario sheet, which is part of the objective of winning the game. So those are very much tied into winning the game, those two tests. Uh, so that's why that's a six cost item for sure. Uh, Cause it's really good. Five cost here, you get a plus three as part of a ward action. So ward is the action to remove, uh, remove doom from the board. So that's again, right with what we need to do to win the game. Uh, you know, it's gonna, that's why it's five costs. Another five cost item, which must means it's really good. Tattered Cloak. Non-epic monsters ignore you while activating and do not engage you unless you attack or damage them. That's something you would need, I think, if you're not the fighter. I feel like that's like a card in Gloomhaven. Yeah, yeah. The ability. <laughs> uh, Mystic Tome. Oh, we already looked at this one. Oh. No, it's, it's similar to the Codex. Oh. But that one's for casting a spell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Warding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, plus three lore while casting a spell. So, lore is tied to spells in this game. Uh, and that's what we saw. I don't know if that's a good row of items, bad row of items. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't know. There's some cards in there that I already want, so. Awesome. Okay, prepare token pools. As you saw, we have those yep, already ready. token pools are ready. Prepare the archive. Archive is... People archive cards in numerical order for easy access. Oh, I think oh, that's that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, archive is prepared. <laughs> okay, perfect. Choose investigators. Done. One thing I didn't say about my oh, investigator yeah, yeah. is tell us, tell us. I am playing uh, Dexter Drake, and I picked him because he has a four lore value. So show, it's... show. Oh, show sure, the stats sure, sure. and show the ability. Oh, I didn't know and... if you did all that on yours yet. No, no. I was. Yeah, we. we, we um, I figured we'd do that when we choose investigators. Yeah. So I picked this one um, because he has the high lore value, and I knew lore is used for warding. So Rob picked a guy that is more of a like stronger fighter and can get rid of enemies, where hopefully I can then ward and get rid of the doom. So hopefully we can kind of work well together on that. Um, so my ability that I have, which I have to remember, is a magical gift once per round. While resolving a lore test, you may re-roll one or all of your die. So that's on any lore test. And what's your focus My limit My focus there? limit is equal to the number of spells I have. So focus tokens, similar to Mage of Madness uh, that we've seen before. These increase your stats. You're allowed one focus token per stat, but every character has a limit on the amount of focus tokens they can take. So she yeah. can she can take as many focus tokens as spells. Yes. Uh, I can only take two focus tokens. Yeah. So that's the thing. Uh, and Tommy Muldoon. So I'm going to be the lead investigator, FYI. So I have a different activation token there. Uh, Tommy Muldoon has shield from harm. If a monster would engage another investigator in your space, you may engage that monster instead. I don't know how well that ability comes up in two-player. It doesn't seem to happen very often, but Mel, remember that's there. Yeah. Uh, so if I'm in the same space with you and a monster is going to engage you, I can take it, you know? Yeah. Uh, because I have higher health. My san my sanity is like at five, not the best, but the stats, two, two, three, 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 uh, seem pretty solid. That's why I took him. He's like kind of all well-rounded. Uh, do we get our starting stuff now? Uh, each player chooses one investigator. Uh, one of the players takes the lead investigator, return all access investigators to the box, and player refer to as investigators and rule. Oh, no, that's it. So the story so far, each, I'm not going to read through this, but each investigator has their own little story on the back to kind of set things up. And if you're choosing your characters, they have this primary and secondary role tips in the bottom right there to kind of give you an idea of like what this character is, how you should be playing them, what you're trying to do, you know, so you can combo good characters together, I guess. Uh, starting possessions, I get Becky, uh, which is like a shotgun, right? Becky's my gun. Yeah, yeah. So I got Becky here. I start with this. Becky's like a shotgun. It's two-handed weapon. You can only use two hands worth of items during a single test. Uh, so Becky can give me plus four strength as part of an attack action. And also absorb two damage and three horror. 
uh, before it's discarded. So I got to be careful and not load it up, but uh, it's good. And then um, the other thing, every character, I think every character in the game has a choose one out of two items. Change kind of how your play style goes. So I can choose between motorcycle, uh, which instead of normal move action, you may move up to three spaces and may spend $1 to move an additional space. So basically all this does is uh, lets me, reduces a dollar for an extra move. It saves me a dollar and I can move a little further. Uh, but normally I can just pay that dollar to move the extra space. It's just kind of saving me money, which I like that very much. If you're in a two player game, less investigators to get around the same size board, similar to Mansion of Madness, why we house rule using an extra action. Uh, I, we're not gonna do that in this game, but uh, I feel like the extra space could come into play more in two-player, which is another reason why I wanted to go with this guy. Um, but then again, he also has handcuffs, which I've not played with. Once per round, after you damage, disengage, or are damaged by a human non-epic monster, non-epic human monster, you may defeat that monster. So there's lots of cultists in this one that are human, I believe. Uh, yep, yeah, we got a bunch of human cultists. These are human cultists. Uh, so that could be very powerful too. Where I don't have to waste actions on fighting them. I don't think you have to choose that yet, but... Well, either way, we're talking about it now. Because yeah. we're talking about our characters. But I don't know. Any recommendations here? I, I mean, I always, I always go with motorcycle. But now that I'm kind of... After we played a couple times, I'm kind of realizing, like... Maybe I could save some attack actions. But again, it's after you damage. And they're most likely one health. So it's like, who cares? And I'm not going to disengage them. Because I'm not going to waste actions evading. And... When I'm damaged by them, that means I'm not attacking them and they're hitting me. Yeah. So I feel like this is situational and it, it maybe is not needed in this scenario. But uh, hello, George A. Welcome, welcome. No, we're just getting started. We're just explaining how the game kind of works. Like an overview for new players who've never seen the game before. Yeah, we're going through setup. We are new players. We've only played the game twice before, George. FYI. So uh, just, just so you know. Uh, and I know, I know you got some strategy videos on your channel, which I still have not watched, but I did add them to my watch later. Uh, but yeah, if you guys go search up George A, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, you will find George playing it through on Tabletop Simulator, kind of explaining strategy and stuff. Uh, similar to how we did for Too Many Bones Tink. Uh, but that exists out there. Go watch it if you're looking at how to be better at the game, I think. But I haven't watched it, so I don't know for sure that's what it's about. You shall be gentle. <laughs> Thank you, George. Yeah, we're okay if we lose in this one, because uh, we're still new to the game, we're still discovering it and stuff, and we've only played this scenario, we only played it twice just to kind of learn the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like motorcycle. I'm going to keep motorcycle, I think. I don't think anyone's convincing me to switch. Yeah, sorry, anyways. The oh, next... it's not a strategy video, it's just a playthrough. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I'm sure you discuss some strategy as you play. Yeah, don't you normally, yeah. like, you, you're, you're good you're, at explaining, you're... like, why you're choosing what and why you're doing things. Yeah, yeah, that's strategy, yeah. that's strategy. Yeah, next thing is to pick your starting possessions. So okay, whatever. It's fine. So, yeah, yeah. What I'm going to take motorcycle. I'm going to take Becky. So I start with, while you're doing that, and you get some money, I start with the Miss of Relay spell incantation. You may test lore in place of observation as part of an evade action. The monster evade modifier still applies. Okay, so I get that automatically, plus I get $2, and then I can choose from either Astral Travel or uh, Magician's Cane. So, Magician's Cane is an item curio. You get plus two lore uh, while casting a spell. Okay, so that's okay. Oh, it and also sorry, absorbs it also, that's what I was going to say, it's one-handed. Also, it absorbs two health, two sanity, which is good. And... Astral Travel, which is spell incantation, instead of normal move action, you may test lore. You move a number of spaces equal to your test result plus two. So this can let me get across the board faster, which is good. Uh, this just lets me roll a few extra die when casting a spell. Um, currently, I start with one spell in play, so my focus limit would be one. If I take Astral Travel, that lets me focus have a, fo sorry, have a focus limit of two. I think I like the move moving across the board potential. Okay. I think I'm going to try that one. I have tried both, so let's try that, yeah. I get $2. Did you get your money? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, starting possession, starting space. Each player place their investigation on. So the starting space in this one is in the north side neighborhood at the train station. Every neighborhood is built up of three locations, uh, and every location has some symbols on it. Here, maybe I can show you guys an example. 
So the board is modular. It's different based on the scenario setup. Uh, for there's four scenarios in the base box. And on the back of the, the, the scenario sheet, it'll tell you like how you're setting it up. Tell you some starting things and some rules which we'll go over. Um, but here is one neighborhood. They are two-sided. So I guess there's a different East Town that we could see later. Is it called East Town on the other side too? Well, there's East Town with an arrow oh, and East I Town see. with a circle. Oh. So I, I don't know what's different. I don't really care to know right now. Um, but uh, River Town, for example, there's a graveyard. And this tells you based on you doing encounters in the graveyard, they more than likely will ask you for a strength test or willpower test and could lead to you getting money or remnants, which are basically like monster parts or evidence and that kind of stuff. Uh, the general store, money for items or guns or whatever, uh, I, uh, weapons. And then here you have uh, lore and willpower could get you spells or items most likely at the Black Cave. So that's how, kind of how it works. So we're going to try to remember that as we go. Uh, there are streets that connect the boards. They are a space also. Uh, and there are different types of streets. So there's like residential bridges and whatever. And based on those, uh, you can see different encounters based on what type of street you're on that's connecting uh, these different neighborhoods. Yeah, that's that's what's going on in the board. Whoops, what did I just do? <laughs> I like looked at it. I know, what? That doesn't look right. All right, there we go. Uh, so yeah, each of these decks ties to a neighborhood. So you'll see that as we go. It, it'll make more sense as we play, but uh, yeah, you'll see, you'll see. Okay, and then final preparations. Resolve the final steps uh, to complete setup. Which okay. is sponsor includes spread doom and final scenario setup. Oh, so I think we do this first. Sponsor includes. Yes. Okay, so I have to shuffle this quickly, right? Yes. Yeah. Shuffle the event deck, and then uh, based on the front cards. Yeah, and I'm not looking. How at many it. clues do we spawn? Those in the book, right? Sorry, I'm just not. Looking yeah, at it. whatever. Just uh, it's fine. Three. Three. Okay. North side. Okay, so Mel's going to explain what's happening here and not just go through it quickly, right? Right. Yeah, I was just going to do all three and then, and then shuffle them in. But... Just show them the first okay, one. So explain take, what you're doing. You, take, uh, you put one clue on north side in the center. You take the top two cards of the deck, and you're going to shuffle this one into those So cards. here, here. Before you do that, oh, I just want to show... We're not going to read the <laughs> card, uh, but if you notice, one card is different than the other. Which one doesn't belong? <laughs> Uh, so one is a clue. These are how we find clues, and there's different little uh, things happening on them based on the location, okay? So based on the location that you can hang out here when we get to the encounter phase, because uh, the game goes action phase where we do a couple actions each. Then we go to the monster phase where the monsters will ready, activate, kill us, make us go crazy, all that stuff. Normal Arkham File stuff. Uh, then the encounter phase where you'll draw and resolve an encounter card. That's what these are down here, encounter cards. And you shuffle in events in the top three, and that's how you get clues. When you're presented with those, you could just get clues, or you might have to pass tests to get the clues. Um, but putting a clue on the board here reminds us that there is a possibility that there's at least one clue, or there is only one clue, uh, in the deck near the top, hopefully. Um, and then there's the mythos phase at the end where we'll draw from the not-included bag or cup uh, different tokens that will do different things, which we'll explain later. You can shuffle that one if yeah, you yeah. want. Okay, then our next one is going to go into the Merchant District. So we're going to take that and shuffle in with the top two. Looks like another one in the Merchant District. Okay. Those down. And then, yes, another one in the Merchant District. Oh, look at Merchant Yeah, so District. another one in the Merchant District, which is interesting because one, two. Mel's going to take the top two cards, which one of those might not be the clue she just shuffled in. So it could be the now fourth card down, right? Yeah. So uh, it's really cool. But that could make it more difficult, right? Just based on some shuffling. Uh, it might, we might see there's lots of clues here, but it might take a long time to get them or we may never get them because if they're in we, the three, we, yeah, bottom. we can't hang out there for four turns or, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, or based on more of them getting shuffled in, we'll see. Okay. Then we're going to spawn, uh, uh, spread doom. Oh, so we probably should have put doom first, right? Oh no. Spread doom. It's from the bottom of the deck okay. anyway, right? So we're going to take the bottom card of. No, no. There's doom that's actually, uh, starts on the board first. There's something, I don't know when this finalize. So there's the mythos bag, which we set up already with these clues. I don't know when this was supposed to happen. Not yet. I think it's in the final scenario setup. Resolve the indicated but finalized setup here. instruction. Yeah, that's last. So mythos cup, we already did because you said that was a thing already. Yeah. And it tells us what, what we're adding in. You add in three blanks also. 
the monster deck when you explain that we built the monster deck which is different for each scenario from here um our starting space is here this is an ongoing thing we'll worry about after uh but all this there's some starting doom already on the board that was probably supposed to be done when we set up the tiles maybe um, oh you prepare know what? the board uh place the doom indicated yeah place the doom oh, and okay, monster okay. indicated i'm yeah, so sorry yeah so that. that's fine so at the Arkham Advertiser, we got one here at Independent Square. So this is some Starting Doom. Uh, East Town. Uh, the Black Cave. And the Merchant District at the Unvisited Isle. All has some Doom. And uh, I know this is where the robed figures start. I just don't know where it tells us to do such things. But Oh, in that same, sorry, I thought we did that already. The place oh, right Doom here. Tokens and Monster Cards is indicated. Yeah, right here, right here. Uh, so this one's going here at the Black Cave. Uh, and we'll take a look at enemies quickly. So enemies are not standees. They're not miniatures. They're not horrible miniatures with bases like in Mansion of Madness. They just went real simple with this one and used cards. So they're small little cards. We got a robed figure. We can see it's a monster, human cultist. It moves for two. Spawns at the unstable space when, it, when it's drawn out of the monster deck. It patrols, so it moves towards unstable space. Engage the highest. So this will, this will tell you it's movement rules. Uh, and then on the back is the exhausted side. This tells you, uh, and you can look at both sides anytime to know what's going on. Uh, but on the back, it tells you how much health, how much health the monster has. Uh, it tells you if they're going to reduce your strength test when you're attacking them, or if you're going to reduce your observation test when you're trying to evade them. And sometimes they'll have a reward or an extra ability on there in the text. This one just has some uh, flavor text. but uh, And also when it attacks you, it'll just deal the damage kind of like an Arkham or the card game. Uh, so this one's dealing just one damage when it attacks. Uh, and this one's going in Independent Square. Okay. So now to spread Doom, we're going to take the card from the back of the deck, and we're going to flip it over, and we're going to see where it's indicating that the Doom is going to go by the little Doom symbol right here. So it's going to go on La Bella Luna. La Bella Luna is here in downtown. And then this is going to be discarded. I'll adjust this so we can see everything in a second. Um... And then final scenario setup. Resolve the indicated finalized setup instructions on the scenario sheet. You'll be instructed to add one or more active cards to the codex. Read all the codex before beginning the game. Yes, okay. And then that's it. Okay. Yeah. So whatever the back okay. of this says. Okay, so finalized setup is add cards two and three to the codex and then create the anomaly deck using the temporal fissure card. Uh, so we have these, they're say temporal fissure. And this happens if you have an anomaly in your neighborhood, which you'll see later. I'm sure you'll see it later. <laughs> we hope to never see it, but I'm most likely we're going to see it many times. Uh, and based on the account of Doom tokens, there's a little Doom symbol. Based on that, you'll do a different uh, encounter. Shuffle those up quick. I'll just do a quick shuffle on these decks. Uh, oh, we can't. No. No. Nope. Uh, we did. I did already. We did already. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did already. But uh, we're going to be shuffling them anyway. Yeah. As we go, so. Um. And. Oh, the last thing on here to worry about uh, is for each cultist monster. So this is a reckoning symbol. It's one of the tokens in the bag that we're going to be drawing. Every time it's drawn, you'll do all the reckoning symbol effects in the game. And you can choose which order you resolve them in. For this one, for each cultist monster, place one doom in its space. So I see George putting a tip in the chat there. Cultists are easy to deal with, but don't ignore them. Uh, or they will punish you at the reckoning, which yeah. is what he's talking about right here. So they're going to spread doom like crazy if we leave them out on the board. Um, okay, uh, oh, two say. and three from the Codex, right? Yes. Okay, so the Codex again, uh, or it's the Archive, it goes into the Codex, which we'll do on your side there. Uh, so we'll look at card number two first. This is going to be like rules to the game, kind of moving you along. So it says anomalies. People walk with their heads down, shoulders hunched. With each new oddity, it becomes harder to pretend that nothing is wrong. But the vanishings, the strange lights, the sightings of inhuman creatures, they are not something that can be ignored. At least, not for long. So this one is a rule related to Doom, which is most likely going to cause us to lose the game if we, you know, if this gets out of control. So it says, when a space has three Doom, or a neighborhood has a total of five Doom, place an anomaly in that neighborhood, Mel. Vanna, could you please demo a Doom or a, a, a Anomaly token, what it is and where it goes? Ah. And you put it right in the center to cover any clue tokens or any... any and this, this symbolizes like yeah. things are getting out of control. 
And whenever there is one here, it says, if the additional doom would be placed in the neighborhood with an anomaly, place that doom on the scenario sheet instead. Oh, <gasps> that's a not good. And then it says, uh, if you would resolve an encounter in a neighborhood with an anomaly, you resolve an anomaly encounter instead, which is not going to help you find clues because the clues are in here. Yes. So that's a bad thing. Yes. Uh, when a neighborhood has zero doom, remove uh, the anomaly from that neighborhood. Yeah. So, so if, if this was cleared off. Yep. Then so it we says would be able to... if a single space has three or more doom or five or more doom in here, that shoots off an anomaly and then we got to put out that fire or we'll lose the game. Okay. Things are going bad at that point, I'm sure. Then we have deja vu. Okay. Uh, the day draw, uh, or sorry, the day dawns the color of hammered lead with a stillness and chill that settles over the gabbled roofs of Arkham and Lingers. As you go through your morning routine, you cannot shake the feeling of having done it before. The same breakfast, the same headlines in the newspaper, warning of disappearances and odd goings on, and a note in your handwriting reading, the Damon Sultan approaches, meet at the train station. And then there <laughs> is the clue, so this is kind of like the good thing we want to progress. This is like the ACT deck in Arkham LCG. All the stuff that has Doom symbols is like the agenda, is how I'm kind of understanding it. Uh, so the, the the top one says, when there are three or more clues on the scenario sheet, scenario sheet, okay, three or more clues on there, uh, and neither cards four or seven are in the codex, add four to the codex. Do not remove this card from the codex. And the Doom one says, when there are three or more Doom on the scenario sheet, flip this card. So we're not gonna look at the back, but I'm sure bad things will happen. Uh, so we got to be careful at how much doom is on here and how many clues are on there. And our actions on the turn, which relates to how we're going to get clues on there, uh, is a research test. So you test observation, and you can place clues that you've collected on your character sheet. You can then put them onto the uh, onto the snare sheet. So you can move in this game. Uh, we'll go over the actions quick here. You can move up to two spaces, spend up to $2 to move that many additional spaces. You can gather resources. You can focus, grabbing those focus tokens we talked about already. Ward to remove doom by testing lore we've already talked about. Attacking, you just use a strength test uh, to fight a monster. Deal damage based on the number of successes you rolled. You can do an evade test, uh, test observation. That'll disengage and exhaust monsters uh, from being engaged with you. And, and then you can perform an additional action like getting away. Uh, and then we got trade on here. You can trade any number of possessions with other investigators in your space. And some components have an action on them uh, that you'll see. It says while engaged with the monster, you can only focus, attack, or evade. And you can perform two actions generally on your turn, and you're never allowed to do the same action twice, which is annoying. Um, and a success on a die in this game is a five or a six. Those are generally successes, but of course you can mitigate dice in this game. You can reroll dice, change dice values, add numbers, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's all in here. Lots of dice mitigation, if you can find it in the <laughs> item deck. Depending on how the item deck shuffle is, you might be able to handle things better. Uh, but yeah, those are your player actions in the game. Uh, just to answer George's question, no, this is not a blind playthrough. We did practice because we wanted to play the game just to know that we were playing. Yeah, we're practice, just so. we, we've seen a couple different paths. We played it twice, George, to learn the game. We've never played any other scenarios, only no. this one. And both times we played, different things happened. Yep. And the cards came up different. Dice luck changed in one playthrough versus another. Uh, different choices were made. Different monsters came out. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's just different things happen. We don't really want to talk about it. Just not to spoil it about it. But we'll talk about it later at the end of the stream so people can, like, leave if they don't want to. Don't want to know anything else about what they saw in the playthrough. But again, before we start to flip these cards, if we go to flip one of these cards and you don't want spoilers, I recommend tuning away. Uh, once we get to the point where we're flipping these cards. Yeah. Because then it may lead to different paths of bit loss or victory or different objectives. Right now, we don't really know how to win the game, but in general, it says in the rule book, getting clues on the scenario sheet or just getting clues in general leads to victory, usually. Uh, and then doom spreading. Doom is like the, the death clock. Too much doom, you're death done. Death clock. Uh, we won't say if we won or lost either time. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about the end. Just for no spoilers. Yeah, we'll talk about the end. Yeah. And we'll just play through. But, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think we are ready to go. Mm-hmm. If you missed anything, let us know. But I think we're okay. 
Uh, so you can choose every round. Uh, I'm the lead investigator, so I have this little flashlight activation token that you flip to show that you've gone already. Uh, it just matters when it comes up on cards to tell you that, like, oh, the lead investigator will do this, or uh, when we have to do turn order, it starts with the lead investigator goes around the table. But in the action phase, we can choose, like in most Arkham games, uh, which person goes first, second, whatever. You can choose the order different every single round, um, which may matter, right? And we may not be the best with that, but we're learning. Uh, okay, so uh, what are what are we thinking here? What are we doing? I know my standard opening I've done before, which I don't know is good. Uh, I can move. Remember, I have the motorcycle, so I can move one, two, three. And I can engage this robed figure and just get rid of one of these cultists off the board. Hopefully, because it is only one health. It does not affect my strength dice rolling. And remember, I have good old Becky along with me for the ride, who gives me plus four to my already three strength. Uh, so good. So I could roll seven dice, and I just have to hit a five or six on one, which most of the times happens, but not all the time. Um, or I'm a hot, heavy believer of getting focus tokens early, because if we can increase our stats in, in certain things and rolling extra dice, as we know from Mansion of Madness, uh, if you can find items that benefit you from doing certain tests that you may see a lot of in a scenario, you don't know generally. But in this, we know we're going to see lots of lore. Uh, willpower feels like it happens a lot, mm -hmm. which is standard to s drive you nuts. Uh, and strength, if you're fighting a lot, in my case. In your case, you might be lore because you're doing spells and maybe removing doom. Um, so if we're to buff up those stats at the beginning of a game as early as possible, the amount of times you'll do that through the game, adding an extra die each time... That's a lot of extra dice and a lot of extra possibilities for successes to reduce the amount of actions you're spending in a game. So anytime you can buff that stuff, I feel like doing it early is better. The other cool part is uh, if you feel like this focus token is not really helping you uh, and giving you the extra dice stat and you're desperate, you can spend focus tokens to re-roll, uh, I think, a single die? Single die, yeah. A single die in a test, which I don't think is a very good thing. But if you're desperate... You know, it's game winning or losing scenario. Uh, you might want to spend a focus token to help you re-roll a die. And it can be on any test. It doesn't matter what the focus token is. So they have extra use too. Uh, I love cheese. We did miss you. I was starting to get worried. I was going to ask. You were gone her. for like a minute. I, 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 I was going to ask Mel to call the police to be worried. But uh, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're back. Did, did you go get a refill of cheese? Did you fill up your cheese bowl? Okay, but Sean has such a funny comment here. It says, hi, you two. Great to see you. You are my favorite husband slash wife, board game streamers, content creators with the first initials M and R from Canada. <laughs> I love Thanks, that. Sean. Thank you. Thanks for... Uh... <laughs> it's like when I tell my daughter, she's oh. like, our only child is like our favorite daughter or our favorite child, like shoulder like that. Oh, but... that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> with the person i need to now find out if there's other board game streaming husband and wife combos that have from an canada. m and an r from canada yeah because then we can know we're better than them yeah in your eyes then we can go troll them in their chat or their Sean comments says we're better yeah we're better than you we're, we're better than you oh my god you're a second rate m and r canadian streamers <laughs> me <laughs> uh all right okay uh, so yeah, I, I like I like thinking of those kind of strategies uh, of just going and fighting, but I also think of like getting a focus token. Are we going to draw a reckoning token on the first turn, which could lead to these guys dropping more tomb? I know, I so, don't know. so random. I don't know, but I only get two actions. It's very frustrating, just like I complain about Mage of Madness. So frustrating to only playing two player in a game to only have so many actions in a turn. It feels like you're you're handcuffed, but uh, I will just do that one. I'll go first if mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah, with yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it affects you in any way. The only thing is, there's no clues over here. So if I end my turn over there, I'm not getting any clues. Uh, and we could just allow them to move to us. They're moving towards the... So, like, uh, this guy moves to the highest influence. And same, that's you, because yeah. I only have two influence. So that's the problem. If I, like, go here to try to see if we can get some clues going, they could, you know, if you stay up here or something, they could come to you and get you before I can get them. Yeah. But again, one turn of not getting a clue is not the worst if we can the other thing i hate in this game is when enemies end up on street spaces <laughs> and i have to go fight them in a street space and then i'm stuck there doing a street encounter that turn um 
you know, if I kill them. At least right now they're in neighborhoods. So I possibly could see, uh, I could get an item from Independent Square. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. One, two, three. I will, for my second action, which is, uh, I think it's called attack. attack. Yep. Which you engage them as part of the attack. So I'm going to flip this guy over. I'm going to put it in engaged with me. And then I'm going to attack it where I will roll seven dice. And I just need to get one success on this guy. And I got one, two, three. So overkill. Uh, and then the cool part is, uh, because we can see what these guys are, they all have different backs and stuff. Uh, they actually go on the top of the deck. And you draw from the bottom, which is really clever. Mm -hmm. uh, so any deck where you can kind of see the other side, you may draw from the bottom of the top sometimes, uh, which is pretty cool. All right. What's well, next? Okay, so I'm going to go. Oh, yeah. I'm done, so I flip my token over. We may forget to do multiple times. Um, so my thought is I could move here to clear the doom, still being in this area with the clue, but I don't have any remnants that I can trade in for money. Um, I do want to focus. I'm thinking about focusing actually my willpower first. And if I stay at this train station, um, it uses influence or willpower and I could possibly get an item or an ally which would be good right off the bat so I could focus and just gain some money staying in this location to get a clue yeah yeah that's the thing and then uh yeah if that's what you want to do yeah yeah or come down to this location and then there's a better odds of includes yeah. but then you use a move action and but then this uses lore and willpower which i'm going to buff up to possibly get an items. item yeah, or remnants. let's get some items so let's maybe do that let's but getting an ally is cool too i know allies but cool influence too. and willpower you're... well influence i'm i'm gonna be on three on both yeah it's up to you I you don't... could focus stay here and put yourself up on one of these with a focus token. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. So I'm going to focus Go first. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah, focus whatever. first. I'm going to focus willpower, giving me three dice. Again, we don't know all the cards in here. I've seen, we, I think we've only seen like two, two. allies yeah, we've only seen in, in two. general. We don't know what's good, what's better. I just, we've seen some of the items and some of them feel more powerful as we talked about already that we're hoping to see, like Silver Key's great. Yeah, uh, want... Other World Codex, Pocket Watch, Lucky Cigarette Case, hopefully we see... Uh, these things are very powerful. Maybe Mel sees like a weapon that she can use to help yeah. her fight. I want an item really bad. Another thing that I forgot to mention earlier. Thank you, George, for reminding me. George is talking about street spaces being uh, a place you can do encounters in third edition. Uh, we've never played any Arkham Horror, the board game. Second, first, none of that stuff. We talked about it on a previous stream. Uh, this is our first experience with Arkham Horror, the board game. Playing third edition. Like, we've never played any other one. So we do not know if this has improvements or it's worse or how the second edition worked. No idea. No idea. We only have played, like I said, Mansion of Madness. We've played Arkham Horror Final Hour. We've played Elder Sign now. And we've played lots of Arkham Horror the card game. So we do not, that's where we're drawing our experiences and our like assumptions based on choices and strategy in this game are based on how those games have driven me mad and cause me to like drink and take lots of pills <laughs> uh so all of that is driven from those games so yeah we'll see okay well thank you for chatting and giving me time to survey the situation yes don't rush if i move here no this rush. enemy is going to move to me meaning <gasps> i cannot do an encounter so that is not happening i'm going to stay where i am which is the better option and i will just take Excellent. a dollar which will be useful later i believe okay i will end my turn there so we will go to the monster Flipping phase. Flipping a token. Oh, yeah. Come Sorry. On, man. I apologize. Stop cheating. Flip the token. No, sure. <laughs> uh, monster phase. All right. So we have this monster. We know he is ready. So first, we look at ready monsters. This guy's ready. He's on this side of the card. He is going to move two spaces towards the unstable space. Oh, he's going to the unstable space. Oh, and then he engages. Sorry. He engages the highest influence. Oh, unstable space is Labella Luna. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So Which then is fine. Oh, yeah, if you want to change what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I would have moved then. because I th Sorry, I thought he was moving two spaces to me. But if he's moving yeah, there, sorry. then yes, I, just, I will have moved. Sorry, I, just, I got rid of my I, I saw the engaged highest influence, thought he moved towards highest influence. But he actually moves towards the unstable space. No, that's just where he spawns at. Nope. He spawns... Look. Read the card. Oh, I see, I see. He spawns at the unstable space, but his patrol for movements has moved yeah, towards the unstable space. And he engages the highest influence yeah. person. So, okay. 
So I put my money back that I gained and I did move to end my turn in the unvisited aisle instead. And the unstable space is currently whatever is on the top of the discard pile where we kind of put the last doom or whatever usually or the last clue. Um, but if there is no discard pile, it, it is the starting space, which in our scenario is a train station. Bob says, it's okay, Rob. You don't have enough experience or years left to play a second edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I'm okay with moving forward. I just, yeah, I'm not going to go back and collect second edition. No, no. Although I've said that before about games. And, and then we've done it? Yeah. I wouldn't rule out anything. But, okay. yeah, I think we'll just focus no, we'll on... we'll stay with this one. We have enough Arkham Files games. Again, they're going to come out with more in the future and stuff. Yeah. So we'll always have some way to play. There'll be Arkham Horror 4th Edition in like 5 years and, you know, or 10 years. And we'll be playing that maybe. But I'm a sucker though. If I played it and I loved it, I'd probably be like, let's play. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then this one would be useless. So I don't know. I don't want to go back and learn another one. And then that maybe isn't as good quality or something. Yeah. But I like this one. So I think this it's is... It's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, so monster. So we did the monster phase. Encounter phase. Draw and resolve encounters matching your space. So this you do it in any order? Yep. I don't know if it matters here. We're kind of far apart. I don't think it would change anything, right? Nope. So if you just want to grab a downtown and read to me. Where are you? Independence Square. So it's recommended another player reads it to you because there may be choices. And since we haven't seen a lot of the cards, it's kind of fun. Because uh, I won't know what the possibility and outcomes are. Yeah. So we're going to read them to ourselves. We're not going to hold them up on camera because we don't want to see the like fail options or the succeed options if we fail or exceed. We don't want to see the opposite to kind of keep some stuff hidden uh, for future playthroughs. So yeah, go ahead. Good. I'm, not, I'm not reading from this far. The text is also small. Okay. A band of Romani nomads have settled in the square for a moment. You sing and dance while others offer jewelry and other trinkets for sale. You may buy one curio item from the display for half price, half price rounded up. Oh, no. And that's all. So then this goes to the bottom of the deck. So I only have two money. This I would love is six, so I don't, I'm one short. This is five, I'm one short. Um, and those are both curio. These are curio, but I don't care about casting spells. Unless I want to buy it so you can get it. No, I, I want the... I want this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one's good. So what I can do is choose not to buy anything. And then I can discard two cards out of here. I'll get rid of the painkillers. And if you don't care about the tome... No, because... Uh, no. Like, I want to dig and find the pocket watch or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, or something better, but... I'll leave this because this could be that good. That could be good. I would like that if yeah. I get an option to take it. So uh, these will go on the bottom. And then we'll draw two new ones. So we got Liquid Courage, standard in Arkham games, uh, which is a place you can put some sanity. It only costs it's cheap. Liquor is cheap in Arkham here. Liquor is cheap. It's only a dollar. Uh, and then we'll draw, ooh, a leather coat. A perfect place to store your flask of whiskey. For $3, a leather coat item common curio. You get plus one observation as part of an evade test. Which is also good for me because yeah, I have very low health. So that yep. gives me a little bit of health soak. Yep, that's not bad. Yeah, these are all good. I want them all. <laughs> all right. Well, I come away with nothing, I think. Is there anything else on the card? No. It was just that? Option yeah, it was to buy? you may buy. Okay, so you are in the merchant district at the unvisited aisle. So I'll draw the top card. Uh, and the section on the bottom for the unvisited aisle says... Seven robed figures stand in a loose circle around a fire and chant. Chaos leads us, and chaos takes us. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Yeah. You do your best to remain quiet and observe the whole ritual. Test willpower. All right. Well, luckily, I just buffed that up, so I get three die. Uh, I pass. All right. So it says, if you pass, they leave something behind when they're done. You gain one curio item. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I think I want this one to start, because it's the most expensive. All right. Well, let's me re-roll. Re-roll on a lore or observation test. Hold it up. Show them, yes. show them the silver key for those who join in late. So this is cost six normally, but I'm going to get this for free. Once per round, you may re-roll any number of die while resolving a lore or a 
Observation test. And now this on. card is discarded into the event deck. Uh, but if Mel failed to get a clue off of it, if there was some kind of test, uh, that would actually shuffle back in to the top three uh, to possibly get again later. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll get a new item to the row. What are we going to get today? Pocket watch. Pocket watch. <laughs> now I want to also see the shotgun. Uh, you get a three cost, 38 revolver, single-handed weapon. So you could have another single-handed gun and dual wield in this game to get extra to your strength test. Uh, it's a common weapon. You get plus two strength. It's part of an attack action. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. Else? Nope. That was that was encounter, right? Mythos phase. Uh, the worst part of the game, right here. Drawing drawing tokens from a bag. We all know is horrible. Uh, we draw two each. Even if you're dead on the turn, you still draw. Yeah. Uh, so the first one I drew is a super exciting one. Uh, it's called blank, and it does nothing. I did put them in coin capsules, just for those who are wondering what the hell is going on there. Uh, they're normally little cardboard tokens, I just put them inside coin capsules. And, oh, oh, this one's horrible. So this one basically, it makes some doom explode on, I forget what it's called. Gate burst. Gate burst. Yeah. Uh, so you take the top card of the event deck, place one doom token on each of the neighborhood spaces. So we're going to take the top one, which is the merchant district. We're going to put one doom token on each space and now that that neighborhood's at four doom if it gets a fifth doom an anomaly happens there yes. or a third doom in the unvisited aisle will cause an anomaly shuffle uh. the, shuffle the card uh into the discard pile and place it on the bottom so now we take these three shuffle them up and place them on the bottom which is bad for doom when we have to place doom yeah it'll be drawing from the bottom of the deck so this little holder here uh, reminds you that for clues, spawning, and gate bursts, you, you take the top card. But for spreading doom, you take the bottom card, which you shouldn't know what it is. But it's kind of like Pandemic, where we're shuffling up the discard pile when we see a gate burst. And it's kind of amplifying some of the no, same cards we might see over and over again. Uh, so now we know there's going to be more doom coming here the next time we spawn doom, which literally could, could be, be right you, now. Could be right now when you draw some tokens. Oh, there it is. There it there is. It There's is. the doom. So give me that. Oh, sorry. I'm going to put it over here. Okay, we'll so we're going to take the them. bottom card. So all the tokens come out of the bag, and they do not get put back in until you've drawn the last token out of the bag or cup. Not included. <laughs> <laughs> and this says we are going to put it doom on the TikTok club. So doom. we are going to put doom on the oh, TikTok no. club, which then First creates... turn of the game, we already have an anomaly. Yeah, luckily I'm there, though, so I can take care of that. This is garbage. And uh, I still got okay, we're going to quit. We're going to start reset. over. Yep, reshuffle everything. We're starting over. Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, the key Cam, is awesome, yeah. Cam is asking if we got our second wave of Tainted Grail. No, we didn't back it on Kickstarter, so there's no second wave. Uh, unless I find the game for cheap later or normal price at retail, uh, we'll play it. But... At this point, there's no plans to continue Tina Grail that I know of, um, but we'll see. Maybe we get it in the future and we continue on uh, with the story. But uh, right now, no plans. No plans. Oh, Doom again. I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay triple for like a Kickstarter version off of uh, eBay or something like that. Oh, or Doom. Come so on, Doom is gonna go on the Merchant District, but since there's an anomaly there and there's already five, this Doom gets placed on on our. So first scenario. turn of the game, we already have a Doom on the scenario sheet. Yeah. This is like the worst I've ever seen it right off the start. Yeah. This, this is, is crazy. Yeah. I mean, luckily I am there. Yes, but I mean, ew. Yeah, that's nuts. And I did take a reroll. So, so to thinking. get rid of this anomaly. Uh, we literally need to clear all the doom off this spot. That's a lot of actions of moving around, and we're only two people, so, yeah. like, that's a lot of turns. Yeah. Uh, and if you're wasting turns in this game, you are reducing the chances of winning. I don't think clearing doom is wasting turns. I feel like that's well, something you're not getting in the clues. game. But, uh, that right. means you're not getting clues to win the game. True. So there's that balance, right? True. Like all these Arkham games. Or any of the co-ops where you're putting out fires. This is basically just Cthulhu uh, Pandemic. Uh, on steroids is, is how I'm feeling about this game. It's all about putting out the fires, but also trying to progress, working together. It seems harder with less characters, but maybe it's not. It just feels that way. Um, same as Pandemic and stuff, I feel. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, we still could come back from this. I know. I'm just saying. This is the craziest first start. Yeah, this is the worst. It's only a third time we've ever played. But the fact we already have a Doom on the sheet, we're usually like an hour in sometimes. Yeah. I feel like we're before, putting out the fires very well. Before the first anomaly? 
no, maybe not that far, but you yeah, know, maybe what I mean? like forty-five minutes. Yeah, I feel like it's like it's it, we're usually pretty good at that. But yeah, but again, getting a gate burst first off, I mean, yeah, that, that hurt. But it. that does mean that does mean that the gate burst and the doom are out of the bag now. Yeah, so yeah, we'll have some easier turns. Yeah, we should we shouldn't see that for a while, obviously, uh, because there's still a bunch of tokens in the bag. Yeah, we take out doom efficiently. It's not that bad. Yeah, and I think we can possibly come back from that. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Cam. Oh, okay, that's cool. I uh, only have the Innsmouth expansion, and that one I recommend getting that one first. Is that the smaller boxed one? Is that for this? Yeah. I don't remember the names of them. I don't either. We were looking into them, but uh, I see Cam's recommending in the Innsmouth one first. I know there's a small one, then there's a bigger one, and then there's a new one that like, just came out. But uh, yeah, we'll look into that, uh, definitely. We still have to play more than the scenario in the base game. Oh, it's the big box one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Perfect. Thank you, Cam, for the tip. Uh, but we're going to try to play the scenarios in the base game first before getting expansions. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Depends on how many people are watching this. Hit that like button. Helps yeah. other people find this on YouTube. Let us know you like watching it as well. Yeah, yeah. Share the video with other people you think might be interested in watching Arkham Horror playthroughs uh, and watching some noobs horribly lose. We'll see. But... Uh, Knock on wood, we may not, we may not. As we know, I am really <laughs> optimistic when we play these games, even I know. the last it, second when I'm pulling something that we lose. Melville is positive and I'm like, no, it's, it's <laughs> everything's, the world's burning. The, well, we I, have that I balance. See, I see Cthulhu's foot coming through the dimensional gate already, like, just give up already. Just bow to the new gods and just give up and let's play something else. That's, <laughs> that's where I will get to at one point, you'll see. I'm super happy at the start, we're playing a board game, I'm all excited. But by the end of any Arkham Files game, I'm usually like, why? Why do I even, why do I even set this game up today? It's driving <laughs> me insane. But it's, it's meant to do that, and I love it. Not everyone, you know, your experience may vary. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's back around to our turn. We did our back. Okay. Yep. Uh, so this should have flipped after we did our encounters to show that we both have our turns left with our activation token. I mean, I could go first and see what happens in this space here. Yeah, you know what you're doing, just do that. So That's I'm fine. just going to... I'm probably just going to gonna fight this dude. Yeah, I'm just going to ward. Now I'm really wishing I took that plus three when I ward instead of the reroll, but maybe the reroll will help. So I'm going to ward in this space. I get to roll four dice. I do have technically two different ways to reroll. Uh, I got one, so we'll keep that. I will first use my main ability once per round while resolving a lore test. You may reroll any number of die. We're going to reroll all three of these. Question. Yeah, yeah. This is your first action? Yeah. What were you thinking for your second? Moving here. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, if you're thinking of a focus first, no. and, and, you know, I'll do that on the lore no, now I before you start rolling. No. Yeah, yeah. I want to make it. All right. I'm all right. Okay, so we have, we have nice. got it. So I get to remove both of these. And when you remove two or more, you also get a remnants token. So I will gain a remnants token. So that was action one, and I have used my main ability this round. And then I will use my second action, and I will just move to TikTok Club here for next round. Because you're looking for a good time? Yes, exactly. Uh, Daniel says, good to see that the Arkham theme is working well on you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. I don't sleep much anymore now that I started playing these games. But uh, other than that, everything's fine. It's having nightmares. <laughs> My doctor says I can stop wearing my white jacket uh, when I go to the padded room uh, for our weekly visits. So things are getting better. I'm getting more used to the games. Kim says you could house rule and yeah. do three actions per turn. We, in the game yeah, we can. Game. We did we talk do about that. Mansions of Madness. Yeah, we do that in Mansions of Madness now for playing uh, playing it on stream now. Just we, yeah. it, it just seems better at the two player instead of playing like a third or fourth character. Uh, still playing with two players. Uh, so I debate that for this game, but I, I think well, it's okay. We can still see how it goes, right? Yeah. We just started learning the game, so... Yeah. I'm okay with this game so far. If, like, we lose, that's fine. It, it's all good. I, I just have to accept that more, that it's, like, designed to be difficult, or var the variance is kind of high and stuff. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Mansion of Madness, on the other hand, I just always want to do more in that game. I want to see what you could discover in the app. I want to see, like, what it's hiding from us. You know, what the, where the story goes. For some reason, just the integrated app stuff and the sounds and the text and all that in the app, it just, for some reason, I, I just want to know more and I, I want to get good endings and stuff when we can or just not horribly die like super fast. But uh, yeah, that's why that game I, I think is better for that. But I feel like that game wasn't balanced well for two players. I just feel like in general, it's just not balanced well. You see lots of people discussing that online. I don't know if this game suffers from that same issue or not. Um, but yeah, 
Oh, I see. I was misreading my ability. Okay, so it's once per round while resolving a lore test, you may roll, re-roll one or all of your die. So then I would have had oh. to use this. I see, I see. Okay, so, so you this one, saved sorry. one, which is yeah, which legal. Can, yeah, but this one I can once per round, you may re-roll any number of your die. So then technically I just use this. Oh, I okay, see. So okay. if I got no successes, I could re-roll all of them. Or if, if you I got wanted... one and you want to see more, oh, you could just re-roll re -roll it all, it. which throws away that one you had already. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I misread. Yeah, that. I find in this game it's like re-rolling one die is more common. And if you find stuff that lets you roll all the dice or some of the dice, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. So I technically then use my silver key instead. Okay. But I have not used my... Okay. Okay. My turn. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. I'll just... I don't know. Like I could just let this guy move to me, but then that means if he engages me, he hits me. And it'll He's also... He's moving to the river docks now. It it'll also prevent me from doing a counter. Yeah, so I'm just going to take him out, so maybe we can prevent... Oh, right here. Yeah. So yeah, I'll just do a boring old move here, and then I will engage this guy. I'll do the whole seven dice. He doesn't reduce any. And, yeah, see? I, ro I rolled this many dice, and I only hit one. Like, come on, but man. That's all you needed. All I needed, so it was you meant got to be. It. Hopefully when I fight a monster needs... Four damage, I roll more than one success would be nice. Yeah, you but... gotta save those big rolls. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh okay, okay. on my turn. Monster phase, there is no monsters. Okay. Encounter. Do you want to do yours first? Sure. So you're at downtown La Bella Luna, right? Yeah. The Clover Club beneath La Bella Luna is in the best place sorry, is the best place to gamble away all your hard earned cash. Uh pass line bet for one of the friends here, says the coupier. Roll them. Roll to die. Oh, Whoa. not yet. Oh. This is just like, there's, yeah. Oh, now it says, roll them. Okay, now. Roll to die. On a 7 or 11, you double your bet. You gain $5. On a 2 or 3 or a 12, oh, three. you lose your bet and you tip the coupier. Coupier? You discard coupier. $3. Coupier? I don't is know. That what, I'm I don't not know. sure. I don't know. Coupier? I don't know. How, no. Good movie, by the way. Uh, uh, you discard $3. Oh, that's annoying. So I'm I just lost all my money there? Yeah. Yeah. Roll to die on a 7 to 11. You double your bet. You gain $5. On a 2 or 3 or a 12, you lose You lose your bet and you tip. You discard $3. Yeah, there's no option. Like, you just do okay. it. Okay. Sure. That was a... Uh, that is terrible. That was garbage. That's terrible. Okay. That was garbage. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, mine. Okay. Uh, TikTok club. TikTok club. Oh, no. Anomaly. Anomaly. And normally, I have two doom. doom in my space. There are slender figures dancing down the street, contorted into po impossible poses and trailing colors. Somewhere, someone is playing the flute. Do a willpower test, minus one. Okay, so I'm rolling two. I got a six. Yes, I pass. If you pass, you see the figures for what they truly are and banish them from your mind. You remove two doom from your space and gain one remnant. Yes. Okay, that was exactly what I was hoping would happen, which is why I wanted to move there. Okay. Coupier. Okay. Coupier. I never. I never. What does that even mean? I guess it's a. It's like uh, the dealer at the casino. Like oh, a. I'm not familiar. Like a fancy dealer. Oh, yeah. a fancy dealer. Okay, I've never yeah, heard of cool, that. There's before. a cool movie, Coupier, uh, which has I forget the actor's name, but I, I like that actor a lot, and. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's from a while ago, but... Mm, okay. Yeah, he's like the life of him being like a fancy dealer uh, oh. at a casino. It's like a private casino or something like that, but... I'm not yeah. a gambler. Okay. Okay. Uh, mythos. Mythos, yay. More Doom. Oh, more Doom. Okay. More Doom. More Doom. So downtown at La Bella Luna. Oh. And we get the uh, reckoning. Reckoning. This one's called. So each cultist places one doom. Luckily, you there just got no cultist. cultist. So that's Yay. good. Oh, because that would make this become an anomaly if it I would've. left that guy there. Yeah. Or no, well, he, he would have moved. moved. He would have moved first. He would have been down here though. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, and then, then it, one, two. Yeah, and it would have put one more here. So it was good. Oh my god! Yeah, he would have yeah. put another one on the sheet. Yeah. And what's the bad number we're trying to avoid right now? Three. Three. Yeah. Monster. Uh, 
uh oh, killed a couple, but uh, they went and notified the high priest. He's going to spawn at the most doom. Oh. And this guy's a lurker, which means he doesn't move. He doesn't even have a movement value. He'll just place a doom in his space. So he is, like, really annoying. He costs, he's two to damage. He reduces you trying to fight him by one die, and if you're trying to evade him by one. But after you defeat him, you gain a spell if you defeat him as part of an attack. Most doom is with you. Oh, so convenient. Hello. Oh, and now the he's lurker engaged. does he engage? What, what, uh, uh, no, no, no. I don't think they engage. Right? I don't think the lurker engages. Uh, is lurker lurker? Uh, four, four, nine, lurker. Uh, monsters, monsters with lurker activations do not usually move. It doesn't say. Okay, okay, it doesn't say. So I can't remember what the one. That... Yeah, it doesn't engage. It's in the FAQ, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think he just stays on this spot. Oh, he doesn't say that. Then. Yeah, I think to engage him, I actually have to do an attack action to get him off the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he stays he there, stays right? There. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Okay. Oh, another monster. Awesome. What the hell, Mel? Sorry. Uh, Swift Biaki. It'd be an Arkham game without one. Uh, he moves for three. He spawned at the most doom. He's a hunter. He moves towards and engages the lowest observation. I have two. I have three. So he's coming to me. But uh, he is going to spawn with you as well, most doom. And then he He'll will engage. engage. Whoa. He's oh, no. A reward. After you defeat this monster as part of an attack action, you may disengage all monsters and move up to three spaces. He could give me a remnant, too. Uh, that sucks. All right, our turn again. Oh, well, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you go first. You, All go. Right. you already know. Let me just attack this guy for seven dice. Uh, I could focus first. But I don't know, like, would I have focus strength? That seems kind of silly. Or do you try to kill him and then ward to try to get rid of one? Because this might cause yeah, another anomaly. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I think I have to do that. I think I have to do that. All right, let's see if I can fight him and kill him. If I don't defeat him, then I... If you don't defeat him, maybe I'll try. Yeah. You need three? Yeah. Only two. Okay. 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 Uh, now I'm sitting here like an idiot, and, uh, all I can do is either, uh, I can evade him, I can't attack him again, and, or I could focus. Yep, this was, uh, oh, we have a new subscriber, Francisco Jefferson, thank you so much thank for you. subscribing. Why, why, why was that, we didn't hear that. Speaker was off. <laughs> Thank you, Cam, for also letting us know. Yes, thank you. Thank you. you. Yeah, I would have saw when we looked up in the chat again, I think, but. Thank you. I see there's two other people that voted on our uh, Forgotten Age, looked through some decks, made some votes. Thank you all so much for doing that. Again, the link is down in the description if you'd like to vote on the decks we play with in our upcoming Forgotten Age Arkham Horror, the card game. Uh, blind campaign playthrough. The other option that I... So I'm going to, for my second action, I think just focus, right? I'm going to take a lore. Yeah, see, if I focus first, I would have had an extra die if I did it on strength. And... Another new subscriber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I and don't know. You are in the chat, so thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing. I don't know how to say the name. I'm so sorry, but thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Uh, so, I think, yeah, so if I did the strength first, something I could have done was have an extra die for strength if I really wanted to kill this guy, and then I also could have tossed that to re-roll one die, but I don't think I would do that, but so either way, I got an extra focus. Go ahead. So what I could potentially try to do is if I moved here with you, 
I could engage this guy so he doesn't place a doom and I can try to fight him. Or like a You could, yeah. Because then he's also or, or, not or you can ward if you think that's better. Which I could all oh this is standing up. But then yeah. you yeah. That's the thing, like he's gonna drop a doom which causes anomaly. But if you clear two ward yeah. uh, oh we're not gonna see doom out of here. I think all three how many doom are in the bag? Can you check the back of the sheet? Oh yeah I, I wanna say it's only two. Three. Three. We've already seen all three Doom. Oh, okay. I think, yeah. Yeah, we've seen all three Doom. There's still, I think, a, another turn worth of tokens in there, so we don't have to shuffle these back in yet. But, uh... Oh, you come from Greece. Okay. Yeah, sorry, we don't know how to say the name. I, yeah, I don't want to I, I try to pronounce it, but welcome, welcome. That's amazing. Ah. Yeah, he's a lurker. He's not elusive. Do they have elusive in this game? Uh, I don't know. Because George says, um, I think George thinks that he does ha he does engage you. But hold on, uh, I remember seeing there's... something about it in FAQ. No, no, I read it today, but I can't remember the three. We yeah, didn't. There's Hunter, Patrol, and Lurker. What's the one that, like, follows you around the board? There's one that just follows you. Hunter. Hunter follows, like, the lowest oh, or highest. maybe it was Hunter. Patrol moves towards a location, yeah. and then Lurkers do not move. Instead, they cause other negative effects to occur. Oh. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that does in maybe that does engage you. Monster's a lurker, but not elusive. You're on a space that engages you. Okay, that changes a lot. Yeah, lurker just doesn't move. But there is one that follows you and doesn't prevent you from doing actions. Is that hunter? Because that one doesn't engage you. I'm going to look at the monsters. There is one that's, um... Like, there's more than just three keywords, I think. Yeah, elusive. Okay, so elusive yeah, is separate. Yeah, th there is an elusive and a lurker. Yeah, look up elusive. That's the one we're getting confused with. Okay. Oh. 42.5. Maybe that's the word. Yes, a, mo uh, a ready monster with elusive does not engage an investigator in its space unless an effect causes it to okay. do so. So, yes, yeah, so, so that let's one... try to correct this. Uh, so, this guy would come in, he would have engaged me first. Well, they both, yeah. Then this guy drew, he would have engaged me. So, I'd have been starting my turn with two of these guys engaged with me. Yeah. I don't know. I, I probably would have fought this guy first, I think. You can just rewind your turn if you no, want. No, I will just say I fought this guy, because he, he would be more likely to kill, right? I want to kill one. Yeah. Why would I keep two engaged with me? Unless I, you worry about this one doing... No, yeah, but you're no. right, you're right. I, I'll just go with this. We'll say I just rolled the same thing. I just fought this guy first. I wanted to fight this guy, but then we drew the second monster. It was like, oh, this guy's here. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I fight this guy. This guy gets killed. And then, as a reward... Uh, I gain one spell. This guy will go on top. Spell. Flesh Ward. So, uh, it's a single-handed spell. Once per round, if you or another investigator or an ally on any space would suffer damage, you may test lore. Prevent damage equal to your test result. Uh, but when you cast a spell in this game, you have to take a sanity unless you throw away a remnant token. So, yeah. I got some flesh word, but we could trade that. I mean, I could give that yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, That'll let me focus more. Okay. And then. And then you focus. I guess, yeah, I'll just focus. Yeah, I'll just do the same thing. I, I don't okay. know. Unless okay. I should be trying to, like, disengage this guy. But then the evade is only. I only rolled two dice. Eh. Eh. All right. Are you okay with the hit? Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Okay, so then if that's the case, then I will move to the river docks 
And I will just attempt to ward this one so we can get rid of this anomaly token. Three, four. Whoops. Oh, you got one. <laughs> roll right out of my hand. Uh, See, okay, so now I will one. use my ability to reroll all of my dice. <laughs> I just need one. And now I got, I got two this time. You thing, got three. I, oh, I got three, but I only need one. So <laughs> we got it. That means this goes away, Yay. which now means I can potentially get a clue Yay. on my turn. Okay. Um, done. Oh, yeah, I moved in. I warded. Yeah. Okay. And my main ability has been used. Okay. Uh, monsters. This guy just hits me for a damage and a horror, which I'll put on Becky. Encounter. Yours first? Sure, whatever. I'm at Labella Luna still. Didn't work out good for me last time. And now I have no money, which I'm sure this card's going to offer me something amazing for money that I don't have. Okay. In the VIP area of the... Oh, no, no. I have a monster. Oh! No, no, no. I have a monster. You have a monster. Right, right, yes, right. Yes, yes. Okay, I, I do not. I don't get an encounter because I have a monster. Right, okay. So you... River Docks. Yes, yes. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, you were in where? River, River Docks. Docks. The stranger waits for you at the appointed hour. The amber lights of the pier reveal his disfigured features. The thing that did this to me, he says, I hear you might have killed it. You may spend one remnant to prove to him that he has been avenged. Uh, yes, I will spend one remnant. Okay, if you do, he pays you what he can. You gain $3. Oh, okay, so I'm at five. I'll return two. Which is okay. fitting remnant money. Yeah, I wanted the remnant item. Item, yeah, yeah. but that's okay. Now I have money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need three clues. And we have currently one. Yeah, right now we're trying to get three clues. Three clues are what we're looking for on the card, and three doom is what we're not looking for on the card. Yeah. On this card here. Okay. Uh, mythos, here you go. Uh, headline. So this we're going to draw from the headline deck, which does not refill or get shuffled. A full moon linked to aberrant behavior. This month, double full moons especially bad. No scientific explanation available by Minnie Klein, staff writer, Arkham Mass. Headline, rumor. Add this card to the codex and discard all other rumor headlines. It has a reckoning effect where each investigator will test lore. Each investigator who fails suffers two horror. Then any investigator may spend one clue to discard this card. So this will just be here as like an ongoing thing when we draw that reckoning thing. So this will fire and this will fire if we see the reckoning token again. That was only one. That was one. Ah, oh, blank, de blank, blank. Clue token. All right. So we are going to draw the top card. We are going to put a clue in East Town up here. And then we'll shuffle this in the top two cards with the top two cards. Uh, and throw it on the deck. And now East Town is a possibility, eh? Second clue, yes. Yay. Okay. So we are also going to put another clue, or a clue downtown. downtown. Downtown, okay. And there's still two more in here, so that's good. So if I uh, can kill the moss or engage with me, and then maybe ward, I can still stay there and possibly get a clue. Mm -hmm. But you could also maybe go there to ward, and you can hang out in downtown while I... Mm -hmm. Go do something else with my three move that I don't seem to be using very often. Uh, okay. True. Okay. But again, uh, it might not be the top card. It might be three down. So even if I stay there and then I don't see a clue, I don't know. But I don't like being at La Bella Luna, that's for sure. I want to go to Independence Square. All right. Yeah, that was not a bad, that was not a bad turn. Okay. Well, because we saw all the crap the first one. Yeah, yeah. And now I think it's empty, right? No, there's two more. Oh, there's two more tokens? Yeah. Which, Did if you I can... replace the clue? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Can we see it? Yeah, we got one in East Town, one in Downtown now. Which I think, if my deduction is correct, there's a blank and a headline. Yay! That's what I think is happening. And then we shuffle these back in. For and my turn, yeah. could see whatever. Yeah. In the center. The center? What's the center? Like the center of the neighborhood? I don't think we've got one in Rivertown yet. Nope. But all the other ones have a clue. These yeah, downtown screens. and east town were the two. Yeah, downtown has a clue right here. East town has a clue right here. Yeah, I put the clue while he shuffled. 
Yeah, yeah. Should be good. Yeah, we should be okay. It just sucks that they're not duplicating. Like, we're not seeing them pile up at the same place, which I find, again, with the variability and the randomness of the game, sometimes you get a nice start where you get, like, two clues on two different locations, uh, so four clues total, or three of them even sometimes on the same location. Obviously, then it becomes a hot spot. But right now, they're very spread out, and that's a little annoying, but at least there's something everywhere, kind of. So if you kind of stay everywhere but here, you have a chance of getting a clue. Mm -hmm. It's something. Yep. It's something. Uh, okay, so now we're good for our turns? Yep, it's our turn. Hmm. Maybe can you might be able to help me with this. Maybe. We'll see. Should I just go first and yeah, see what happens? Yeah, you can go first and see what happens, because I can move All there. Right, so I'm going to fight this swift Bayake. Oh, yeah, it gives me free move, right? Yeah. Mm. Maybe kill him. I have a question. So you're only allowed to do the move action once per turn. I assume this is not you using up a move action if you were to do this reward. After you defeat this monster as part of an attack action, you may disengage all monsters and move up to three spaces. I feel like you could still move on that same turn. But again, I don't know how strict this game is with that. I don't know if like move is a move no matter where it comes from. But I'm curious what you guys think in the chat, uh, how you guys play this card. But I, I treat that based on all other FFG games we play, that that's a, a game forcing you to move is not a move action. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right, George, that's where I would go with it. Just making sure, just making sure. Because uh, I was curious. I was like, I, I don't know how it is. I feel like I read it in the rules reference that it works that way. Yeah, because it's like a reward. I know, so, I know. But yeah. It's like very strict like about not letting you do the same action twice, even if like something else gives you a move, unless it says additionally. True. Yeah. All right, so I'm rolling seven dice. Yes, yeah, seven dice, attacking the Swift Biake. You oh, got him. Buddy. You got him. Yes. Yes, I like that. Boo! All right, uh, so after I defeat this monster as part of an attack action, you may disengage all monsters and move up to three spaces. You get a remnant on there, too. Oh, and I, I get a remnant. Yes, yeah. give me that gooey remnant. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> all right, so if I move up to three spaces, I feel like I should. Yeah, because I could go there and take care of that, potentially. It's all, all, the only problem is, like, we don't know where the next monsters are going to be. So yeah. it's like, I, or where the next threat problem is going to be. Uh, what's in the discard pile right now? Colors. Green. Green is the thing, eh? Yeah. So, like, I could go just down here and swap with you. Oh, I should look at where we can get more yeah, items. Yeah, I was going to say, look at what you... money. Yeah, look at what you want. Is there a remnant for items? Remnant for money. Remnant for remnant. possible money and items. Yeah. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, Any recommendations in the chat where I should move to? It. Just for trying to, like, beef myself up, get some more things? Yeah, I, it's like here or here. I have no here. money. I only have a remnant now. This is remnants for money. This is remnants for money or item. The river docks, eh? Money, where you are. Oh, yeah, you can earn money here, but he lost his money, lost money at the gambling. He shouldn't have gambled. But I feel like I should choice. use the move, but. Should use the move, I feel like. Just, it's a free move. I, I don't know. Is there just a better spot that I can reach? That's all. Or I just hang out at La Bella Luna still? Yeah, he lost his money there, yep. That's, I'm, I'm that's like, funny. I'm sure that you don't lose money on a lot of the cards. I'm sure that was just my bad luck on the first card, but. You can't lose more, right? Oh, that's true. <laughs> but I'm trying to gain. I want to gain. I want, How much I want... did you lose? Three bucks? Yeah, but I only had two. Oh. So, like, it drained me. A lot. One, two, three. I think I'm going to go up here to the Arkham Advertiser where maybe. Or, where was I? Here? Mm hmm. No, I think I'm going to go to the River Docks. And if you want to trade with me or anything now, we could. Um, the only problem, there's no um, Doom here right now, but I have a feeling there will be soon. Like by the next turn, I feel like there'll be some Doom down here. Mm -hmm. It might be at the River Docks, maybe not. We can see the discard pile where the River Docks and TikTok Club are the two Doom locations on here if they go, go to the bottom of the deck, but again. But here I could trade a remnant for an item or money. I know. Which I want, I, I, if I can get a straight up item, it would be amazing. I know. Okay. Yeah, I'll just that? go there. Uh, and then, I'm thinking of literally just replace, like swapping I, with I you. I have an action still. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I just fought. That was part of the reward. So, um, 
I could just focus again, I think. Yeah. Or I could trade if you... Well, I mean, what would we trade right now? You'd give me the, the flesh ward? Yeah, I don't really care about doing spells. But you don't need it, like, I right now. I don't need it's it not, right now. Yeah. So I'll just... I could I'll give just... you some money. Oh. Like, if you want to split some money, I can give you the money and even the remnant. Because I'm going to go here and potentially... No, it's okay. I'll, I'll just go here. I'll, just stay, I'll focus for a willpower. Okay. All right. So then I will switch with you. I guess we'll just swap. I'll do one, two, and I'll pay one more to move there. So four. Four. And then I'll do a ward action here. Four, die. And I got two. Boom. So and you get a I remnant. Get a remnant as well. Nice. Okay, that's good. That right, is me done. Monsters, yep. nothing, nothing, right? Nope. Encounters? Yep. Uh, you first? Want, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the river docks. The Japanese merchant vessel Samaritan Meru uh, has been, mar been marooned by the dock. The foreigners are willing to pay top dollar for any unforeseen findings. You may spend one remnant to sell what you have. Yes. Okay. Spend a remnant. Uh, if you do... They show you what they have collected so far. Gain three dollars and one clue from your neighborhood. So oh wow! Uh, okay, three and a clue from a neighborhood. Uh, so a reminder there uh, in the chat about using your spell for movement. Yes, would, I can. Would that have been better in that situation? Well, I don't want to take the. I don't want to take the. Um... But remember, you can spend a remnant instead I know, of taking I it. I know, but I only had one at the time. I like to spend them if I have at least... Because I like to keep one just in case. In case something comes up to spend Yeah, it, right? exactly, exactly. Okay, okay. So that was my theory on yeah. that. And I don't want to take the sanity loss yet. I feel like we're still... There early. you go. There's but, your mind. That's why, that's why yes. Nell did what she did. Yes. Perfect, though. But nice. Uh, thank you for bringing thank that up. Thank you, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And you also mentioned that I could go to the general store and buy the item. I could, but there's no clue tokens. And I'm hoping well, yeah. that maybe I can just try to get it by doing other things. But we'll see. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. That was encounter. Now nope, drawn. Mine. Oh, sorry. La Bella Luna. La Bella Luna. Uh, where are you? La Bella Luna downtown. Yep. Okay. The storefront is boarded up. You ask a passerby what happened. You've been out of town. It's been like that since the Sheldon gang shot up the place a few months ago. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Oh yeah. You search the premises. Test observation. Ooh, my observation is only two. Oh no. But you could. I got it. Okay, you got it. But the crazy part in this game, okay, there is an option. Keep this in mind and remind us if it's super desperate. You could spend a focus token on any skill test or reroll one die. You also can spend a clue token. I don't remember if it's to reroll one it's die one. I... or all of your die. I don't care because I feel like you should never really do that. No, I also did have just the... just have an abundance of them. Yeah, I did have the reroll on observation, but we didn't need it in this case, so that's good. But yeah, you can spend clues for rerolls, which I think is like... That's a trap. Yeah. That's a trap. Yeah. But maybe if you're playing with like a lot of players and someone's just like gathering clues like crazy, maybe they're just spending them and stuff. I, I don't know. I feel I like know. if you spend a clue, you should just automatically succeed. Right? Because yes. Because it's so hard to get them. Agreed. Yeah. Which but it's like you just get to roll one die. Roll. No, it's not. Definitely no. not. Okay, I passed. Uh, if you pass, you find some cash. Gain three bucks. Oh yeah. Money bags. Money here. I'm gonna keep them as one so that. And now Actually, the no. uh, the bad place is Independence Square. But it also does add another colored card in the bottom that we shuffle back in when yeah. we see that thing again. Which is good. Okay. Now we draw from the... Now we draw from here. Oh, I flip this. There's only two tokens left, so I'm going to draw two, one at a time, and resolve them. Uh, another headline. Ugh. Asylum Overflowing. New patients describe sense of dread, hallucinations, doctors releasing some non-violent patients early. By Rex Murphy, staff writer, Arkham Mass. Headline, you suffer one horror for each doom in your space. Ha -ha! Oh, nice. Ha -ha! Take that, headline. Where did the other one go? Right here. Oh, yeah, it's in play. And I think <laughs> that's blank if my... Yeah. Yeah, it's blank. All okay, right. so now I'm going to pass the bag to Mel after putting all the horrible and some slightly good tokens in. And we take it like a tall sugar. Okay. Headline, please. Oh, no. Headline. And when this deck headline deck runs out, 
when every time we go to draw a headline after that, we put a doom on the scenario sheet. So this is kind of like a timer to the game too, I think. Uh, police, do your jobs. Opinion, Arca more dangerous now than ever. Top cop should reform, force, or step aside. By Doyle Jeffries, Editor-in-Chief, Arca Mass. Headline, for each clue in your neighborhood, you suffer one damage or one horror. None, I just got it. <laughs> yes. Take that yes. headline deck. We showed you. Clue. Yes, All spotting right. a clue. So we are going to put a clue in East Town. East Town and down. East Town, yeah, here. All right. Okay. Sean Flores is here. I'm waiting for you guys to play this one. So glad you are. Thank you guys. No, thank you for being thank here and you. watching it. You don't have to thank us for playing it. Yeah. Uh, love how you guys play and learn along the way. It helps me big time. And that's that, awesome. We love hearing that. Yes, love that's awesome. That. The whole idea, again, I say it all the time, the channel started as a way to show that even a dummy like me who wasn't really into games, you can learn these games that seem more complex that are like 3, 3.5, 4, 4 and above uh, complexity on BGG. Anyone can learn these games and, and figure them out. And sometimes it just takes someone else showing you visually because uh, that's how I learn mainly is visually. So just playing along, you can have some fun, entertainment, but also if somebody is learning and it helps someone else figure out a rule they might have been playing wrong, I feel like that's worth it. That's yeah. like the whole reason I like doing these videos in the first place. It's obviously meshed and formed into what we are now. But yeah, it started out, that was the reason to show off games that I thought were cool and could be approachable and weren't hard to figure out once you uh, spend the time to learn them. All right. All right, uh, that's that. It's our turn again. Yay. I think I'm just going this way to the double clue. Oh, Velma's Diner, you don't yeah. need to heal. I so, don't need to heal, but I could go... So you could, oh, nothing gives police you items station, Yes, police station could give you oh, items for okay. influence or observation. Uh, in general, but it could be other things, right? This is just the majority of things that are kind of focused on yeah, that. Yeah, but I probably would still go to Velma's Diner just so I can potentially ward that away just for later. Maybe focus? I would focus instead of warding at that point. Because, okay. yeah... Um, I would just probably go to, uh, up here, mm -hmm. try to get money or night. An I have three money now, so I could go to the curiosity shop. Oh yeah, maybe you get to buy something. Which could allow me to buy something, maybe gives me an item. Yeah. This oh, is also oh. good if you can test influence or yeah. willpower. I might go here just maybe get an ally or something. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you go first. Uh... Yeah, let me uh, gain one money as an action, gain resources. Feels weird. I don't think I should be doing that, but uh, then I'll move one, two to go to the train station. And that's it. Done. Feels like such a lame turn, but uh, okay. Got a little bit of breather, I guess. Trying to get a clue, trying to get a clue. Or I could try to put this on the scenario sheet. I could have done that test instead. Kevin, thank you for thank subscribing you, to the channel. Thank you for the support. Yes. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Instead of gaining one money, which I think is like the worst action in the game, I feel very bad if that's happening. Because the game kind of throws money at you if you go to the right places. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you can't based on what's happening in the game. Uh, so instead, I'll just move there. And then I'll do the research action, which I roll three for observation. It was off another action, too. And I'm going to try to put this one clue onto the scenario sheet. Yes, and I got, got it. it. Perfect. Sometimes I like to wait till I have more clues I know. before I do that. But then sometimes you don't roll great or you don't have a high stat and you're just struggling to get them on there and you're wasting turns. So, like, I feel like now is a good time just to do an action like that to get one on there. Yeah. So we have one on the scenario sheet. So the other option is I could then move to the police station and I can try. Now my die is only two, but I do have a reroll. Oh, they're recommending maybe you go to the curio shop to buy the curios. Because uh, it's more likely you can buy one of those for cash there. Maybe you get a discount. Um, I could use my ability then to move there. But I like what you're doing But I clues. was thinking about going, yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking about going there. I like the idea of clues. Right now I think we're doing okay. So I think I'm going to try. I'll, I can come back maybe. So one, two, we're going to move to the police station. I'm going to try to research. I only do roll two die, but I do have a reroll. And I get one. Uh, I can reroll any number. Mine as well. Just reroll this one. Are you doing the same thing I just did? Trying to put research up? Yeah. Because oh. if we can get three. <gasps> we do. We do. Nice. We do. Okay. I was worried only rolling two die. But okay. So that's I don't know that. if it's good to do this so fast. But 
Whatever. Let's uh, see what happens. I, I don't think we've ever done it this fast before. When the scenario has three or more clues on the scenario sheet and neither four or seven are in the codex, add four to the codex. So we're grabbing card number four. We're card. grabbing card number four from the codex. It says, parts of the mystery become clear. The note from yourself. The sense of deja vu. They're all because of time has become unstuck. Effect may not be following cause properly right now. But you're certain that this phenomenon is a result of an arcane ritual performed by the cult you've been tracking in the city. You'll have to find the site of the ritual as well as the epicenter of the temporal disturbance if you're to have any hope of setting things right. Armed with your new knowledge, you set out again into the city to try to ignore it when the flowers fold into buds and raindrops fly upward into the sky. Take five markers, one blue, one red, and three white, and randomize them face down. So there's a bunch of generic tokens in the game. I'm assuming they're used different in different scenarios. Okay, so we got red, blue, and three white. I'm going to Okay, do you, this. you mix them up. I'll look away. So I don't know what's where. Okay, there you okay. go. You can mix them up if and you want to. And then it says, uh, sure. I'll mix them a little bit too. Uh, and then place one in each face down. Arkham Advertiser. Uh, the Black Cave. Independent Square. Uh, the Unvisited Isle, we'll just leave that one there, I guess. And then Velma's Diner. Flip this card. Profane Ritual. You are not certain what the cult's ritual's intended effect was, but it's clearly linked to the odd flow of time in and around Arkham. You'll have to discover the ritual site to learn more. Now we have a new action available, so we can spend one of our actions on the turn to do this action once per round, uh, per investigator, I think. Which is reveal a marker at your location and resolve the effect below based on the color. When you reveal a white marker, you find nothing of interest. Discard that marker. When you reveal the blue, add card 6 to the codex. Do not remove this card from the codex. And when you reveal the red marker, if the barrier is destroyed, add card 7 to the codex face down. Otherwise, add the card to the codex face up. If both blue and red markers have been revealed, remove all other markers from the board and return this card to the archive. Okay. So that's now a new available action we can do on our turn. Look at tokens. Okay. Look at tokens. Yes. Flip, flip the mystery tokens. So now we're, this has officially become a, a zombicide scenario where we're looking for blue and red tokens. Uh, you gotta open are, the door. <laughs> that are hidden amongst, and then we gotta open the door and we win. I don't know, but anyways. So yeah. <laughs> okay. But that's the end of my turn because I moved and I researched. Okay. Awesome. And you already went. Monster. Monsters. Nothing. Still none. Okay. Encounter. Encounters. You want to go first? Sure. I don't know. Train station. Yep, I'm at the train station in Northside. Bill Washington finishes loading his truck and pulls away, but some luggage falls off on off from the back. Goodies. Uh, you move to claim it for yourself. Test influence. Oh, I only have two influence. But you I got pass. it. If you pass, uh, if you pass, your act is convincing, and no one questions who the blags belong to. You gain the abandoned luggage. Which is from. Oh, that one. I stole his loot. And if you fail, I stole his loot. That. So, abandoned luggage. Oh, it's the first card out of the alphabetized special case or uh, special cards. Hopefully, this is good, not bad. Let's see what abandoned luggage is. Never seen this before. Item, common. When you gain this card from the deck, place the top two cards of the item deck face down under this card. Oh! oh you don't know what you got. Action. Test observation minus one. If you pass, you gain those items and discard this card. I love it. That's fun, but annoying. I love it. Fun but annoying. Because it's your you don't, know, you don't know what's inside. <laughs> I it know. could be you garbage. You get garbage. It could be garbage. But you picked up a bag. You didn't so know. Top two cards of the deck. Come on, pocket watch. <laughs> Come on. Hope he put his pocket watch <laughs> in his luggage. Hopefully. Oh, well, that's awesome. That is so cool. Yeah, it's cool because a lot of these we haven't seen. All right. So. I like the way they're they're <laughs> twisting up the loot for me and making it making it. <laughs> you gotta work for it. Random and difficult and <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's neat. I like that. That's All right. Thematic win right there. And if you can do mine, East Town Place Police Station. East Town and Down? Yep. Uh, police Station. This is where the police station should be, but all that's here now is the wreckage of an old red brick building. Test observation. Okay, observation is two. And hello, Matt. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I passed. All right. It says, if you pass, you find the remains of, of the evidence room and discover the building collapsed in 1954. You gain one common item. Okay. Common, common, common. Common curio is a leather coat. Uh, common weapon is a revolver, or liquid courage is common. 
Uh, or you can not take those and start drawing from here to grab a common item. The first one you draw, you get. And then we shuffle whatever you drew, put it on the bottom of the deck. I mean, the leather coat, if I need a common item, is not terrible because it does give me plus three health. But I could just take my chance. Does anyone know the pocket watch's stats? Like, or the traits? I want to know. But I don't want to look now that we've seen stuff leave the deck. I can't. I can't mm -hmm. look. But I'm curious. Is it common? Is it curio? Is it both? Like, I, I don't remember because that could matter, right? Based on digging and drawing and... Well, anyways. I'm looking at this. There's two options that I think I'll go with. Either the leather coat for additional health or I take the revolver so that if I do have to fight, I can two. roll two extra dice. So I can roll four die. If I'm in the situation where an enemy just drops yeah, down to my you space. Might have, there will be cultists showing up yeah. spreading around the board. Maybe I will just take the revolver just as backup, just giving myself some extra dice. Okay. Yeah. So we don't need to... A rabbit's foot is the replacement item to the to the row here. Common curio. Once per round, you may reroll one die while resolving a test. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Rerolls are good. Matt says, I think the pocket watch lets you tell time. Oh, thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. Thanks, Captain Obvious. And George... It may not, though, if the batteries are dead. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> uh, George says, honestly, don't remember, but I think the pocket watch is common curio. Okay. Okay, so either way. We either would... way, we would probably get it. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm not afraid of digging in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be super scared when it's like, look for a curio, and it's and then not. You, like, discard and then, it? Yeah, you're like, oh. it's like the first one off the deck. I'd be then so you're sad. And you to get to the bottom again? Yeah. Yeah. And okay, you wouldn't no. be able to get there, I don't no. think. There anyways. was some good options there. I'll just take my chances with that. Okay. Uh, that was mine, right? Is that it for them? No, it's not it. Oh. So you gain one common item. Yes. And one clue from your neighborhood. Oh, yay! <laughs> All right, so this goes to the discard pile, and it's another place where Doom and stuff could go. So that will go on the bottom of the deck eventually when we see the next gate burst. Oh, yeah, which is uh, possibly coming now. So it's good that we find clues to fill up that deck so it's not all just coming back here. That is true. And we're diluting. And we're not doing we're diluting. Bane 3 over yeah. and over again. We're diluting. What's that called again in, in Pandemic? The When a bad thing? Epidemic? Escalation? Escalation. I don't know. Whatever. When you shuffle the discard pile and put it back on the top. And, yeah, it's like escalation, I yeah. think. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Matt says, hi Kate, I heard a rumor that you're awesome. Matt's are you white? How did you know that? Matt's been watching on two two times speed probably. And, uh, maybe maybe it's up. in the Discord. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe somebody clipped it. it and first, like... <laughs> it's posted on Kate's social media, all of her social media accounts. There's a now a clip, uh, which is like it's it's a looping, like looping video that she's posted all over the internet now. She, yeah, is it like she tagged? sent it to her friends. She, she has it tagged it to, in her bio. She's yep, and she sent it to her parents. Everybody who's doubted her her whole life. Now she <laughs> sent it to them, and then she's like, "Eat this." Send it to your kids. Her if kids, you have. yeah, her kids who complain about stuff. She's like, yeah. "Hey, I'm awesome." And yeah. then she pushes like you know a little button that just like plays it on some Alexas or <laughs> or Google. Careful, you might turn people's things on. Alexa. No, don't Alexa. do that. Alexa. <laughs> Order Arkham Horror Third Edition <laughs> and the Deluxe Rule Book. Oh no! With two day prime shipping. <laughs> you have to say like confirm or something. I don't confirm. Know. I don't know. How, I don't. We don't have ones. I don't. <laughs> oh no! Uh, I hope we didn't turn any of them on. <gasps> Eats joined the Too Many Bones call. Oh yeah, you didn't see that. No. I think you you just bought it last week, right? Excellent. Yes. Yes. Welcome to the dark that. side, Kate. So now I don't feel as bad. So you got oh, yeah, me. setting up my first game. You're yeah, one. Yeah. You're one that one of the people that got us in, deeper into the Arkham Horror, Arkham Files, Arkham LCG, all that stuff. You were definitely one of the, the you know, the cultists. One of the advocates. You were definitely one of the cultists brainwashing us into playing this stuff. Yeah. So glad to see that uh, our our love of for too many bones on the channel is definitely uh, definitely rubbed off on you. That's yeah. good. Yeah. You said you're setting up your first game. Let us know how it goes. All right. Okay. Tokens. Clue! clue! Yay! So we are going to put a clue in Rivertown. Yay! Finally, that's the first clue there, I think. Okay. Anyway, and then... A blankety blank. Yay! Okay. Oh, a reckoning. So the reckoning says cultists are going to drop a doom. There is no, none. No cultists. Each investigator test willpower. So I test four. You can give me four. Yeah. Four test die. Three. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, for each investigator who fails, suffer two horror. Then any investigator may spend one clue to discard this card. All right. I pass. I'll put one on Becky and one on my card. My first one. Okay. And no call this for a doom, so that's good. Monster. No. 
No, Kate is extra awesome because of the pineapple pizza, uh, being being part of our cult. And he also <laughs> says, "Thanks, Rob. Now I have a copy of this game ordered from Amazon." <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, Cynthia. I'm sorry. Uh, are we keeping the rumor? That was going to be my next question. I could send a clue to get rid of it. Should we? I mean, it isn't the best. But again, I mean, there's still quite a bit of clues so, on the board. So here's, here's what happened. The first time you played, that, that scared the crap out of me. This is the first reckoning we saw on a headline, a rumor card. And right away, I didn't know any better. I think we spent a clue. Maybe I did. Got yep. rid of a clue. Not even knowing how valuable clues are in the game. Uh, and got rid of that. Literally, the next headline token drew a new rumor that said, replace all rumors on the board with this rumor. And I was like, that was going to disappear soon anyway. Why? Why did I do that? But so, again, it's dependent. We don't know how know. many replace we them. May, we may have no rumors coming up yeah. in the headline deck. We don't know. I mean, I could. We have I, the three that we need My willpower here. is not bad. That's the first time I think I've ever failed on that one when I've had four willpower for it. That was just unlucky. I could re-roll one die, but like, I don't want to do that. No, if you put it, if you're fine anyways. But I'm thinking I could spend one to get rid of it and then we just don't worry about it. But then, like, clues for winning the game. Like, we don't know right now how many clues we need. Uh, and we might be sitting there later wishing you never spent that clue. I, I don't know. This okay, is, maybe like, I'm not sure. You're right, you're right. And then, did you draw... And we only have one, two, three clues even possible. And in worst case scenario, these could all be, like, the third card down in the deck. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Maybe not the East Town one, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it is the third one down. Um, but, yeah, so we may not see any clues anytime soon. Who knows? And then will you draw a monster? A monster. Unless you already did. No, you didn't. no, I did not. It is an abyssal servant. Ugh. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, yeah. This guy is a night gaunt. Two movements. Spawn at the street near his prey. His prey is for his hunter is moved toward and engage and investigate with the most clues. Oh, that's me. Which is you. I should have spent it. <laughs> should have spent it. But then we it. could just hide and we choose to move wherever. Yeah, we then could we get your remnant. He's four health. Oh. Minus one to your strength test against him. Minus two if you try to evade him. After you fail to evade this monster, you disengage other monsters, and both you and it move one space towards the unstable space. He does two sanity, one health damage. Uh, yeah, he's annoying. Yeah, he's tough. Uh, so um, where is he spawning okay. nearest prey? So I'm prey, prey, but if we put it here, potentially you can get him. One, two, three, and if you spend... I, I can get him. Might not be able to defeat him. I am running low on horror. I only have four left, but sure. But then we can do the same. I need to get an item that soaks up horror. Maybe the liquid courage I should try to get or something. Oh, sorry. It's just standing. I don't know. Because already um... my horror is getting out of control. I can't put any more on Becky or I'm going to lose my ability to defeat monsters at all. Yeah, but if we do the same situation that we were thinking about before where you go in, try to fight him. If you miss, then I'll come oh, in yeah, and take yeah, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Okay. Sorry, what was he? Two or... and one. Yeah, sorry. But his strength is minus one. Yeah, so, so I would you... roll three die. Oh, oh yeah, because you because I have now. the gun now. Uh, yeah, three die. Okay. Yeah. Maybe do a hit. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it. it... <laughs> or I run away from him. He moves for two. I could run to like uh, here. Yeah, he only moves two at a time, but. Yeah. Ideally, we want to get him to appear on a space so, like, you can go in and fight him, and we're still on a space that does a clue possible encounter. Mm -hmm. but we all we should start flipping some of these tokens. Yeah, maybe. so I could go here and flip. He won't get me. Is that all the tokens for the turn? Did yeah. it right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's our turn now? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, sure. I could do that. I could just move here. He won't get One, me. One, two, three, four for a dollar. But if you don't want to, then he he would move one, two. He'd be here. You could do something else on your turn, and then we maybe talk, think about it next turn. But hopefully, no other monsters come out that are yeah, worse and land on us. And not sure what to do with this guy. Or I try first, and you come and take him after. But again, I wanted to take the damage if we don't kill him. So in that case, you'd have to go first. Uh, I don't know. do whatever, whatever you want. I'm not sure. I, I yeah, I'll probably go after him. If you're going to go after him, but then I also, you go first. Like, um, I'm running at him passing tokens that we might want to flip before leaving those spots because then moving back to them is like wasted of turns. So like, either way, I have to do a move action to get to a token. 
Also, if I just get a clue somehow, I could become his prey. You know what I mean? By I next could also turn. do a research action and maybe put it on there. Yeah. And yeah, yeah would... that, that would work. But I also want to flip this real bad. If I move here, he can't get me. So maybe I just do that. Yep. One, two. And I want to do the action to flip this token. Okay. Oh, it's blue. Okay, what's the blue so do? So for blue, when you reveal a blue marker, add card six to the codex. Do not remove this card from the codex. Six is the ritual site. And it says, the ground is marked with twisted and overlapping circles of wax and chalk. Skulls, wet, red corpses, and fetishes adorn stone slabs, the walls, and the ground all around. Clearly, this was a site of some mystical ritual, and judging from the prodigious quantities of blood involved, its aim was not benevolent. Two robed figures draw carved, curved knives and advance towards you. You reclassify the location from past to active ritual site. The space with the blue marker is the ritual site. Reveal cards from the bottom of the monster deck until you reveal two cultist monsters. Yeah, I didn't want to find that one. Uh, so we get a uh, an occultist ritualist monster. He spawns in the nearest leader, but we ignore that. Oh. Uh, he's elusive and he's a lurker. So he's just going to sit there placing doom on the space and you have to engage him. He will not automatically engage you. He has one damage, doesn't affect you if you fight him. He actually gives you an extra dice if you want to evade him, but he's not the type you want to evade anyway. No, but that's good. He's not going to engage with me right now, which is good. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Oops. Okay, and then... Whoa. Oh, another one. Okay, that's actually good. But the these guys thing. spread doom. They're, yeah, but... They're, and they spread doom if we get a reckoning, too. I they're, know. They're, like, going to really speed things up. We're going to get an anomaly there, but... Okay, so two occultist lurker guys. Then you take the ones that we drew, we shuffle these, uh, whatever, and put them on the top. I was just worried that these monsters were going to engage me and do hit me on my turn, or in the monster phase. But yep, but they're not going to stop you from getting a uh, encounter card. Yeah. Then it says, uh, spawn them at the ritual site, put the rest on top of the deck in a random order, which I just did. Now we have a new action uh, regarding clues. You may remove five clues from the scenario to stop the ritual. If you do, remove the blue marker and flip this card. Perform this action only at the ritual site. Okay. Now we know our objective, I guess, is stopping the ritual by at this site. Uh, this where you have to do it, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. at this site, someone has to be here. And then spending this action to remove five clues from here. But we only have three. Yeah, I have so one we... that I can get on yeah, there eventually. Yeah, so but... now, oh, you might get one this turn, maybe. Well, I don't think so, because they're going to do in the monster phase, they're going to place Doom here. Oh. Unless you can come and take care of one of them. Yeah, maybe. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I could. Then it'll save. Then, yep. we, then one of us potentially will get this clue. Potentially. Potentially, because that's two be, encounters there. It might there. be a few cards down. Yeah. Okay. Are you done? Is that your turn? I don't uh, know. What's yes, happening. I moved and I flipped. Yes, so that is my turn done. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Uh, man, I really want to play with my luggage, but uh, or try to try to wiggle the locks on it. <laughs> oh, George is saying, "Wait a moment." Uh oh. Hold up. The blue one, the one that starts flipped, or no? It said they all were face down. Reveal right. marker location. In, uh... Where's the one that sets it up? This one. Let's read. So here was the setup I did. Take five markers, one blue, one red, and three white, and randomize them face down. Place each one face down on these locations. Flip the card. So yeah, yeah. they're all face down. There's none face up. Maybe that's a different scenario, George. Yeah. Thanks for spoiling us that one of them's going to have a blue token flipped mm -hmm. up. <laughs> yeah, and then when you reveal the blue marker, add card kidding. six to codex. Do not remove this card from the codex. If both the blue and the red markers have been revealed, uh, remove all other markers on from the board. So I feel like we still want to find the red. Yeah. But I still think, like, your idea of stopping a remnant possibly sounds logical. Um, yeah, just and if it... we're both here, we get to see two cards That's what from I, yeah. here. That's what I'm saying. Ah, then you have better to... odds of getting that clue. So should I just go first? Yeah, I've already gone. Yeah, I've already yeah, gone. Sorry. One, two, three with uh, my motorcycle. I'll spend one to move an additional space. And then I'm going to engage one of these guys with an attack action. And that attack action is going to hit for th uh, seven dice. Seven dice. You do it. Yeah. One, nice. two, three, four. Oh, man. Where is that one? I'm fighting where's the big bigger... baddie? Yeah, where's the big guy? Uh, and yeah. 
You get nothing for. That's yeah. Well, I stopped doing. Yeah, you is, stopped doing, which is, which is huge. one of the best things in the game. Good. Yeah, no that's doom. huge. I'll take it. That is huge. Okay, uh, flip my token and encounters. Uh, no monsters. Monsters. So he's gonna play oh, yeah, Doom yeah. in our space, which is still fine. Hopefully we. Oh, did we already see the reckoning token? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're so good. He's not gonna dump Doom for just being on the board. Yeah. So now we're in encounter phase, right? Uh, yes. So go ahead. Where are we at? I don't uh, know if it matters who does one first. River but... Town. I don't know. We're at the Black Cave. Yeah, which could be lore and or willpower could possibly get a spell and or items. Okay. Ooh, curio items. I'm feeling. Sprouts of rock surrounding surrounding the passageway like a toothy maw. You steal your steal yourself to enter. Willpower test. Four dice. Four dice. On willpower. Yes, you got, got it. it. Two pass. If you pass, you discover the wax and chalk markings that suggest a ritual being held here and find something that was left behind. You gain one curio item. No, uh, no, curio item, though. <laughs> curio, oh, I could get the tome, and we could trade it. Oh, because we are together now. It is five costs. Like, getting this is pretty hot, right? I do want that. It's part of a ward action. Do we care about warding right now? I don't know. Is there any... it. You have it under control with your rerolls so far. Yeah, I do. You're right, you're right. Is I could any... just have it just in case. I don't know. True, if you want a ward. Or uh, the Curio of the Tattered Cloak, non-epic mm -hmm. monsters. Is this guy, this guy's not epic. Uh, oh, he didn't move. Sorry. Oh, yeah, we gotta move that guy. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Unless you want to move the other side. Depends on the way we think we're going to move next. Do we want him in the way? We're blocking? Or do we... No. Okay. Uh, Non-epic monsters ignore you while activating and do not engage you unless you attack or damage them. Hmm. I mean, I could take that and it allows me to move right through him. Yes. We can try to just keep outrunning him. But we need to be here to put the clues on... So if I do get that clue on my encounter card... We need to be there. Yeah, George, I'm thinking of taking the ward one just because, like, I can ward now. Like, it makes it more possible for me because I'll be rolling six dice for warding. And if we're going to still take some time in the scenario, it makes sense, right? Yeah, it does. It does. So then we have balance. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. And then we'll replace it with an occult scripture. Which is a curio oh. tome. You get plus two observations as part of a research action. That's good if we saw that earlier for getting clues on the sheet. We still need two more though, so yeah. it does help for that. It's curio, not okay. common. Well, so that's maybe good. if we get another maybe I'll get. you might yeah, right now you yeah. might get the option. Yeah. Uh River Town, and you are in the Black Cave also. Mm -hmm. All right. You follow the sound of footsteps into the cavern, then hear footsteps behind you. Test willpower. Okay, willpower is three. And I do have a question after this, actually, for the chat. Oh, I fail. Triple threes. Huh. This is willpower, so if you don't have a reroll ability for that, other than spending that mm. token to reroll only one. Which would be a 50-50. But I really... No, it's not 50-50. Well, yeah. It's 33% chance true, true, of succeeding. True, true, because it's only rising success. But I really want that clue. I'm going to do it because I really want to try for that clue if this is it. Yes! Yes! Okay, so this is why I didn't yes. ask the question yet. Uh, but it says you pass. So it says if you pass, you duck into a shadow and watch yourself pass by. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Whether you pass or not, there's something written here on the wall. You may become delayed to gain one spell. Uh, no. Delayed is exhausting your character. And then that means in the next phase, you have to spend an action to stand up. Uh, so basically you're spending an action to get a spell. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, so on these cards, we've been playing it, so when the other player draws one of these, they don't tell the other player it's a clue one. Yeah. I don't know, I, I couldn't find a rule on that. It's just the rules about describing reading these to yourself so they don't see the text. But I'm curious, like, how do you guys play it, or if anyone knows what the kind of, like, recommendation is? I think officially you've got to do whatever the hell you want, but, uh, should I have been letting Mel know that this was a clue one, so she treats this test a little more seriously i don't know 
But then again, with you not telling me, it's that decision of do I spend that do I spend that for a re-roll? How important is it, right? Because I don't know. I was assuming that potentially there's a clue there. So I wanted to potentially get it or get an item. But, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, That's you got the clue. Area. Discard it. Uh, Powell says, are you interested in the Witcher Old World board game? A few days ago, the Kickstarter campaign was launched. Yeah, I saw yeah, that it saw, launched. Yeah. Uh, I am interested in the game, but I was just like very shocked by the sticker price. Yeah. Uh, for like the version with like barely any minis in it is already like over a hundred dollars Canadian or basically a, yeah, it's like, it's like another Arkham Horror slash Runebound kind of game. Uh, it looks interesting. I do want to play it at some point in the future. I just don't know if I want to back it on Kickstarter. Uh, cause also the miniatures version is almost $200 Canadian plus shipping. That's a lot for a game that looks so basic. Like, that game doesn't look advanced at all. It looks very, like, it looks very, like, light to medium weight. And there's no campaign in it or anything. Yeah, it's no campaign. Scenario. Competitive. The co-op doesn't look anything to write home about. It looks like an afterthought. So, yeah. The competitive nature of it, we and already... the solo part, right? That you can't really yeah. solo? Yeah, it's a little crazy for what's in the box, even with all stretch goals and stuff. The amount of times that game would hit the table... I wouldn't want to pay full price for that. I'd rather get something cheaper from retail later, if that's a possibility. Just the high price on Kickstarter plus the, the shipping costs. And I don't care about all the extra fluff in the game. Uh, but we already have Runebound, which it just looks like another style Runebound. We have Euthia coming. Uh, we have Mage Knight. We have so many like games that could be treated as competitive adventure games. We have Hexplore It. We have all these games. It definitely looks like it could be Upper Alley. It just doesn't look very deep and interesting. Mm -hmm. It looks very light and kind of like play it twice. And you're kind of like, oh, that was cool and fun. Next. Yeah, and the static board is something yeah. too. They should have done something where you could randomize the board a little bit and, and, and change it, it, it up. It basically has the same system of yeah. these uh, decks actually in this game, uh, which I'm sure Powell is why you brought it up. Is this <laughs> this is exactly the same mechanism that they use in their game? Yeah. Uh, they took it right from Arkham Horror. It definitely feels like Arkham Horror, kind of like co-op possibility mixed with Runebound, is how I kind of see it. Oh, Elaine keeps it hidden. Okay. Yeah, the, I the think clues? it's more suspenseful, especially for us playing on stream. It's more suspenseful to have oh, yeah. it hidden, and we don't know. The other game I compare this to is Dead of Winter. Oh yeah, I that's a co-op-y kind yeah, of, this, it's, yeah, there's but no like, trader that's mechanic why I, and stuff. That's why this game I compare it to, not the Witcher yeah. one, but um, yeah, because you're kind of uh, yeah. deducing where you should go based on what they have, yep. and items and stuff, yeah. Yeah, but, I, wa I watch all the Witcher playthrough uh, videos, like I watch how to play it, I watched uh, a couple months ago, I watched all the rules videos they posted to show how like combat works and stuff, and yeah, it just seemed like too light, and, and it's like, it's kind of like the whole problem that, um, what was the other game that was like super expensive and overproduced that was a super light game? Dawn Shade. Mm. Dawn Shade looked like it was going to be a big, you know, complex, deep, rich game. And then when we got it, it was like, and saw the price on Kickstarter yeah. for how light the game was. The gameplay is not deep at all. Uh, it's just too much. Like, if I want a lighter game like that, there's better options and like... That are cheaper. I expected the non-mini version to be like 80 or less dollars Canadian, so like more in the 60 to $70 range, because I always relate it to like Scythe. Scythe, I always am impressed by the quality of components, the amount of miniatures, the amount of tokens and all that stuff in that game, uh, customized, like, you know, it's like unique stuff in that game. None of it's like generic at all. Like it has a dual layer cardboard. And when I saw Witcher has dual layer cardboard, has nice quality components, I'm sure, in the final copy. The art is beautiful and all that stuff. Uh, and the minis. I'm just assuming, since they're paying for the Witcher IP, they're obviously that that's going to increase the cost of the game because they obviously didn't get the license for nothing. So the fact that they're paying for that IP, you are going to pay for that IP being on the game and pay more for that. So do I care about the Witcher IP? Yeah, I love it. I think the Witcher IP is great. Um, but I was expecting more of a adventure board game that was more deep rich more gamery mm -hmm. uh but instead they kind of went for like the you know the more lighter tv show audience versus the book audience is how i feel about that yeah. which is fine <laughs> but again i could went, but... i could play it and i could be blown away and think it's great but i already have youthia i played youthia recently and youthia is coming 
And I look at Uthia, and I feel like it's a very similar. They seem to be doing kind of the same idea, except for Uthia has got a board that generates kind of like Mage Knight that's different every time you play, yeah. and stuff like that. And you know, the encounters and the enemies and stuff could all be different. What you're finding in the shops changes, and it has all that in 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 um, in uh, Witcher. It is more streamlined, though. You could say like it's a more streamlined game. The Witcher is, and for those who just want a simple game to teach their friends and they play competitive Witcher. It's it's for you. It's just the cost, I feel, doesn't match the game complexity to me. I also think that they've made comments that it's better with more people. Right? Yeah, so which, more three or four players, which is, this is... Pandemic times, it's like, eh, yeah, is, yeah. That, is that what you're looking for? Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, the competitive being tacked on and the solo being a tacked on afterthought kind of just scares me away a little bit. Well, it also eliminates people, right? Yeah, from just scares me away a little yeah. bit. But I could be wrong. I could be proven wrong. It's just not something I care to yeah. aggressively spend my money on, to be honest. There's my thoughts. Yes. So we did not back it yet. If no. We don't know if we are. We might still we back might it. Still, but... We might give in. There's still time. We may Something may change our mind. Who knows? But uh, right now, based on looking at it like two days ago, that's where I was feeling. Yeah. But I mean, the Kickstarter is doing well, so people are backing it. But yeah. So. But yeah, if I could have got it for like less than $100 with shipping... Without minis, I don't care about the mini add-on stuff. Uh, the regular version with just tokens or standees or whatever, I would have just gotten that. Yeah. No, I would have been all in. Yeah. But the idea that it's like over $100 plus shipping, eh. That's true. All right. All Where right. Are you are doing Mythos. I can flip this because we both did encounters already. Okay. Uh, monster. monster. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Uh, we got a robed figure. So he's spawning in the unstable space, which is which is the black cave where we are. No way, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. So he'll spawn here. It says patrol. Move toward the unstable space. Engage with the highest, um, highest uh, influence. I have three. So I think he engages you. Okay. Right. Yeah. I don't think we choose in this spot. I think he just goes after his prey. Yep. But I could be wrong. But pretty sure that's how that works. Okay, he's just a one. Hopefully I can kill this guy with my weapon. Yeah, we're just getting surrounded by the monsters. They're getting out of control now. Yep. And headlines. All right. Uh, banned books. Uh, banned died? Banded? About? Oh. Underground, reading circles, trade copies of forbidden text, libraries, schools, threatened. What about the First Amendment by A. Wong, Associated Press? Headline, for each clue you have, you suffer one horror unless you discard that clue. Oh, lucky you drew that one. I have no clues. You have no clues. I, know, I never have a clue. These headlines are working out perfectly. I never have a clue. Uh, Elaine says he backed Witcher and then unbacked for all those reasons. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I was like a for sure back until I saw the campaign launch and saw the price yeah. and saw you got. And then I saw the stretch goals revealed and I realized what they had done. They did the classic, you know, marketing trick strategy of they already planned all the stretch goals, knew what was probably going to be in the box based on an estimated millions of dollars on Kickstarter. Then they priced it based on all those extra cards and art and miniatures and then started with that price. And that's the price. So you're not really getting extra for the stretch goals. You're paying for those stretch goals, whether they unlocked or not, it is was already baked into the price. So when I got the sticker shock, I realized right away, and then I saw the stretch goals, I went, okay, this is that type of Kickstarter campaign where they already planned it and you're paying for those stretch goals up front. There's no, there's no deal here. Mm -hmm. You're paying for everything that was planned and designed and revealed, whether it's unlocked or not. So that's the other thing that kind of puts a bad taste in my mouth a little bit. But I know it's needed. I know some people love that. And also the fact that it's hotness it's it's hitting millions of dollars on kickstarter uh i'm not fooled by that because i realize many millions of those dollars are just based on people who want witcher miniatures that's it yeah so a lot of people are buying that game just based on having miniatures that are witcher that they can paint use in other games put on their shelf so even though the game may be meh or the game could be good the game could be great the game could be horrible it doesn't matter. It's still going to do a couple million dollars minimum because it has Witcher licensed miniatures in the box. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Don't don't get fooled by the oh my god, 
It's gone up to so many millions. Everyone's going to own this game. I have to own it too. Oh my God. No, a lot of people are going to put it on the shelf, pull the minis out, never play it. That's just how it's going to work. Or they'll play it once, realize the game's meh, and sell it for the miniatures, you know? True. So just keep that in mind. Don't, don't be fooled by the hype. Keep, yeah. keep in mind all that stuff's involved there. <laughs> Elaine bought the first book instead. Hope for a good nice, reading. Nice, nice. Yeah, just buy it if it comes out to retail later, <laughs> after you're really into The Witcher. Do the books follow the show? I know we haven't read oh, the, the books. The video game is spawned right from the books. The show tries to emulate the books. Yeah, so, so it'll be pretty like accurate. the same as kind of like Game of Thrones yeah. if you follow the book. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It might pull from different books and stuff. I did look into oh, it. Okay. There's a recommended order, but you can read them all kind of different. Yeah. Originally in Pol Polish, I think. They're Polish books, but they've all been translated. Okay. Uh, Billy's also saying that you can engage because of your ability if you want to engage this monster instead oh, yeah. of me. So then I can potentially get these clues on. It's up to you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Thank that's why I told you. Remind Billy. me of this Billy. I was Billy forget. was on it. He Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Billy, you're amazing. Okay. Thank you. I don't think I've pulled any tokens yet. So. Uh, there's an even number over here. New sub is Janet. Thank you, Janet. Welcome. Janet Barrett, thank you for subscribing. Thank you. Welcome, New welcome. Today. We appreciate it. Yes, yes. Nothing. Woo. Blank. All right. All right. Come on, another blank. I don't know how many we've already pulled. Yes. Yes. Double yes. blanks. Smell shoe blanks. All right. I called it. All right. Uh, our turn. I could go first and see what happens here. I could, here's it. Oh, you have a. a, a no, name. go ahead. I yeah, let me I try. Know what's going on. I just want to open my luggage. That's all I care about right now. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, hmm. I'm going to put this in doom. Okay, I think we don't go for the all-in play here. I think we go for the more possibility that we have to move, have another turn, right? So I could try to research for my first action, and then my second action I could try to ward. Because next turn these guys are coming in, or this guy is already going to place a doom. This guy is going to be coming in. Move toward and engage, investigate with most clues. So I just hope we don't get killed by monsters. I mean, you have lots of health and sand. You haven't taken any damage. Yeah, I can, I'm just going to, like, I can take damage, no problem. It's just this guy with that the guy, double sanity. I can sanity. take that guy. I can take that guy. I know, that's it. But then how are we killing him? Like, we got to really focus on him. But I, I don't know. Because the other... Anyways. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's fine what you're talking about. Unless, unless you just try to put clues on, then you try to kill this guy. I could do that as well. Yeah. Because he only has one health, right? So, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking that it could focus, but if I focus, I'm putting all my eggs and getting these two clues on. If I, but if I miss and we still have to go another turn, then doom, and then we have issues. So maybe I just try. Then I try to kill this guy. So what we could do next turn is if this guy engages you, he's going to hit you. That's fine. But, but I can, uh, you can fight him next or I can fight him next too. Maybe we can take him out next turn. Yeah. And then we're kind of, yeah. And then, yeah, I think so. Because we want to stay at the ritual site. So that we can do that action of moving the clues off. So if you do get that, I might do on my turn the action of moving that if I can kill this guy. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. All right. But I might just focus on monsters right now. That's fine. We'll see. That works. Okay. So I'm doing an observation test to see if we can get the two clues on here. And I do have a reroll. We'll see. Also my ward. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. I got none. I may reroll any number of, of die while doing an observation. Oh, you're only rolling two dice for all this? Yeah. That's what I was saying. <laughs> Oh, I got Not none. Even a thing. Okay, no. I got none. It's gonna take forever. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I should. Well, the mm. other thing is, then we can potentially trade later, but we'll see. Then I'll engage. Oh I'll attack yeah, this monster. Take a while. I get to roll four die, and I'm looking for one. That's what I'm saying. But if we clear the monsters out, then we can actually try trading and this and that, like back Maybe. and forth stuff. I got it. Okay, Yay. so he is dead. So that's good. Uh, that is me done. All right, so I'm going to start by attacking this robed figure uh, with seven dice. And we got him with three hits. Nice. Boom. Okay. Uh, now, here's where I don't know. I could ward. I literally roll six dice to try to ward two tokens. Which would also give you a remnant, which is not bad, potentially. Because we are going to have an explode happen. The yeah. only place that that uh, eight burst would screw us is if it happened at Rivertown. What's the top card? River. Oh, oh. Is it Northside? Northside. So it probably is going to happen up here. 
But again, we could draw clues first before that, yeah. which draws that card, and then see the second one. Yeah. So this is the only one right now that's a threat from gate bursting. But again, we could see doom first, then a gate burst at the same place. Yeah. Who even knows? Yeah, I think I think you're I think so you're I'm warding thinking of warding. Good. Yeah. Or I could try to open my luggage. Which might be something. But the open my luggage, I'm only rolling two dice. I do have tokens to throw away for rerolls. My first gut says ward. I know. Just in case. Warding seems like a smarter thing, but I, I would be so sad if the luggage is like something. an extra, extra action, action per or turn or yeah. somewhere to put horror and damage. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll ward. Okay. Six dice. I'll ward. And what are we, we on here? We're on a place for lore and willpower. Possibly getting spells and items. Okay. Uh, uh, you got so I got Yachty three successes. Nice. Uh, I'll take a remnant token. Get rid of that doom. Uh, remnant token. Okay. okay. Done. Okay. Monster. So he's going to move in here. He's going to engage the person with the most clues, which is me. Yeah. He's going to hit me for one health and two damage or two sanity, which is fine. Okay. Right. Uh, encounter. I do not get an encounter. Only you do. So River Town and the uh, Black Sorry. Cave. Black Cave. Okay. An elaborate mosaic made of shells, glass, and tiles depicts profane images of toad-like monstrosities. You may become delayed to painstakingly remove the pictures piece by piece. A delayed. It must be something amazing, but it could be a me. trick. I only need one action really to fight next turn, but I am worried about like trading clues, getting them on the sheet. I could be the action that moves these off. This could screw us, but I'm going to do it. I, okay. I don't know. Uh, I'll go delayed. It better be freaking... It's not a clue, though, which uh, might be dumb. It's okay. probably just giving me an item. Go ahead. If you do, you feel oppressive sense of foul foulness that was once presented the cave has been... Once presented in the cave has been reduced. You become blessed. Oh. Okay. So Blessed is a condition card. We've seen these kind of things from Mansion of Madness. Uh, there's Blessed in the game. There's Cursed in the game. There's having a dark pact. Uh, so this says, while resolving tests, four, fives, and sixes count as successes. Which, After you fail, discard this card. If you would become Cursed, discard this card instead. Which, that's good when you're trying to fight a guy that has four damage. Yeah. Right? You get Because you see as long as you one hit. Yeah, yeah. true. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's great. It's great, but we'll see what happens Hopefully, here. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Okay, so I've, I didn't get an encounter so far. Four tokens good. left. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, doom. Doom. Bottom so of the deck. We are going to place a doom at La Bella Luna. Okay. More doom. More doom. We are going to place doom at. So that sucks. I think the gate burst is still coming, right? Oh, is it? Which yeah. changes unvisited aisle. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to be bad. Here you go. Yep. Yep, there's the gate burst. Okay, gate burst. Which is going to north side, which is fine. It's not going to... Which is going to north side, so we'll problem. shuffle that in. North side is going to get one, two, three. It's one away, but that's fine. And then we're going to shuffle all of these up. Whenever you do a gate burst, you shuffle the discard pile, and then you put it on the bottom of the deck. So it could lead to more doom happening at those places. Can you just draw this last one for me, too, while you're... Yep, yep. I just don't want to... And the last one's more doom. Okay. Just... Which... Oh, yeah, you're going to draw it in a sec. This. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to put all these tokens back in the bag, since it's empty. And we'll worry about that later. Okay, so Doom is going to go in the Merchant District in TikTok Club. Okay. All right, so this is actually good. We didn't get monsters or anything. All right. Uh, do you want me to go first to maybe oh, yeah, defeat that guy time. to open up what you can do on a Sure, turn? sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's helpful. All right. Especially with your Bless. So first I'll do an action to stand up. And then I'm going to attack this guy, which involves me engaging him. Uh, he reduces my die count, so I'm only rolling six. Six die. Yes, six okay. dice. This is not good. Uh, but you get four, fives, and sixes. I know. So that's but better. I still, we'll see. Uh, if I do, I get really lucky. But uh, oh. So I hit him only for three. Which... Unless you want to reroll something. I mean, I don't know. Focus tokens. I mean, I do have this ward thing. Yeah, I'll spend uh, a lore focus to reroll one die. 
Yes. All right. Yes. We got them. Yes, that makes so it so worth it. four successes. And boom. We'll probably get something good too, right, from him? I didn't nope, actually. Oh, nothing. A remnant. remnant. Just a remnant. And him out of our hair. So. But I All didn't right. take any sanity loss. So that's good. All right. So my first action, then I'm going to focus my observation so I can get one extra die. We can see if we can get these on. So now I'm rolling three die, and I do have a reload. Uh, okay, yeah, that's yeah? fine. Yeah, is that bad? No, are you allowed to? Yeah, you only have one focus, yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking that you then don't have an action to move them off, but again, I think this is better because you may never get them on. Yeah. Or rolling two dice all the time. Yeah. Did not, but we will re-roll. I need to be blessed. One, I got one. All right, we're getting there, slow and steady. Okay. Done. That sucks. Yep. Okay. Monster phasers, none. Okay. Uh, Black Cave. Rivertown. Rivertown. Black Cave. That clue didn't show up here yet. The blackness around you is watching and listening. Either test willpower to steal your mind and stare down the darkness or spend one remnant uh, to appease it. <laughs> I'll spend the remnant. Okay. I don't like to rely on the dice. If you pass or spend one remnant, the darkness flows into your mind. You gain one spell. Oh, I guess that makes sense. I was hoping for like a cool item. <laughs> uh, what do we get? We got a find gate spell ritual. You got to take two sanity to fire this one off. Test lore. If you pass, move to a space of your choice with one or more doom. Oh, I mean, that's helpful, though. If wow, you want to just like jump power. across the board. Yeah, that could be powerful, especially if you have a place... Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, you have a remnant token to spend and stuff. Yeah, that is helpful. Mm, one sec. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Dry, tickle, throat, coughing, bit. Okay, I think we're good. I don't want to hack in your ears anymore. All right. All right, my encounter. Uh, your encounter? Mm -hmm. River Town. Yep, Black Cave. Yeah. You hide in the shadows and watch the robed figures encant their strange ritual. You gain one spell. You gained with a... Part of an attack action, you may test lore minus one. Add your test result to the test result of the attack action. And it's one hand, so technically you could use mm -hmm. it with the gun on cool. the same attack. Cool. Uh, the magic seems to throw through you. Test your willpower. All right, my willpower is only two. Which is not... But I got it. All right, it says, if you pass, you resist the effects and ward the area. You remove one doom from any space in your neighborhood. Oh, there is no doom. In our neighborhood. Ooh. Okay, that's fine. This will go on the bottom of the deck. You need to sponsor a cough switch. From... <laughs> Rob has a potential for Broadway. We are singing. No, no, no singing. No, no singing. singing. He can no, do no. voices great. I, I, I... I like to have higher viewer counts, so <laughs> we'll keep the singing out of it. And just act silly on the stream. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do the silly, the sarcastic jokes and stuff, but uh, I don't know about singing. I feel like we might reduce our audience. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to hear that. Yeah, no, no. No one wants to hear that. <clears throat> no. uh, mythos. Mythos. And I think we just put everything back in the bag, right? Yep. Nothing but fun coming out of here. Let's see. All right. Uh, this is the reckoning. Okay, so there's no cultists to place doom on the location, but we're gonna each test willpower. Uh, so I roll four dice. Two is because this kill you. Mm. 
Oh, you passed. I pass. Okay. I roll two, and I also pass. Nice. Okay, we're good. We could spend a clue to get rid of it, but we need this clue to put here, which luckily yeah. we didn't do before. Yeah, yeah. well. Or else we would still yeah. need one more clue. I know, it's like we're not seeing many clues. Hopefully I draw one right here. And it goes, and on it goes river down. No, I found Doom, of course. All right, we found Doom, which is going to go downtown in La Bella Luna. Popular place for Doom. Okay. Hmm. Clue. There we go. There we go. Clue is going to go in north side. North side. North side. Okay. So north side is where the clues are at right now. And two of them there. One in East Town. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Ricola. <laughs> I got another clue. <laughs> We are going to put clues. another clue in the Merchant District. Not Rivertown, though. No. You need to put them in Rivertown. And that's my... But that's okay, because we don't have any monsters in our space, which is good. Yeah, we that's true. We can get doom in our space. We can just try to no get this. No gate bursts. I expected to happen right after drawing that tomb. Okay, so what we could do here is I could try first. Yes. If I miss, we trade and you try. You sure? Or if I get it on there, then sure. you spend the action. I'm not going to say no to that. All right. So I still can do three. And if I have an extra action, I try to play with the locks on my luggage. Exactly. Exactly. And hope they don't fail and lose my bless because of that. Okay. Oh, yeah. You probably will succeed. Uh, no. Oh, my God. I can't Come on, do Mel. it. Mel. What the heck? Using the silver just, key. Good thing Mel got the silver key. She seems to roll like ones and twos on her first roll every time. Got one. I got one. I got one. But right. I have no more actions to uh, do the action to. What did you use your first one? Oh, I, oh yeah. That was only my first action. You're right. The first uh, action was to just pass on an action? Yeah. You may, There's no uh, option to pass. You may remove five clues from the scenario to stop the ritual. If you sure, do, remove do the blue marker and flip this card. Perform this action only at the ritual. Okay, so remove the blue marker. Flip this card. Oh, I'll give that to you. Okay, flipping the card. Spend these five. Barrier destroyed. It says you break the last of the ritual circles and feel the magic of the place flare brightly and burn away. There's nothing left of the cult ritual but rotting meat and broken paraphernalia. But as you watch, bot flies and a land on the meat and wriggle into their maggot selves, then climb back into their eggs. Time is not amended and the danger is not passed. Grabbing hold of one of the surviving cultists, you extract some meaning from their mad ravings. This ritual was not the source of the disaster. It was only meant to keep you away from the place where Azathoth was summoned. The barriers destroyed. Do not remove this card from the codex. Sorry, was I supposed to spend? The five? You may remove five clues from the scenario. Just stop. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was just making sure. So that stays face up, letting us know the barrier has been destroyed, which was mentioned before. Oh, yeah. When we find the red. Uh, when you reveal the red marker, if the barrier is destroyed, add card seven to the codex face down. Oh, okay. 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 So now we got to find the Yeah, red we still one. have to find the token. Oh, I thought that was over. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That's the first time we've seen that, actually. Yeah. So that's new to us. We have not seen this, yeah. uh, this path yet. So that's kind of cool. This is our third play, and we've seen different things each time, which mm -hmm. is, tells you a lot. It's pretty good for this little card archive system they got here. Okay, so my turn. Yeah. Oops, which I should have uh, flipped this over. You're done. I am done. Yes, yes, yes. So now, should probably move and flip tokens. Yeah. But I also have some abandoned luggage I'd love to look in. But I, I mean, at this point, you that can't. could be a waste of a turn. I might fail and lose my curse, though. That'd be so bad. But you're likely going to succeed, right? It, it's better. I'm, I'm rolling two dice. And you have a one re-roll. You could try. What if it's good? Yeah, and then I could trade with you if it's something amazing that you could use or I could use. I'm looking for something that soaks up horror and damage would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll try this action on the abandoned luggage. I'm going to test okay. uh, observation minus one. Unless I want to take a focus on observation first. And... Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'll take a focus on observation first. I really don't want to lose the blessed. I think focusing is great. I think Maybe not as much later in the game, but this could help us if we need to put more clues on the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if I get some. Uh, okay, so focus. Now I'm gonna try this action on here. Please be worth it. This is, I'm doing this for entertainment. Normally in the game, I probably would never do this if I was just playing myself, trying to win. But let's have some fun with it. So let's see what's let's see what's hiding under door number one. How many die do you get? Uh, yeah, I'm taking way too many. Uh, I want to roll that many dice. I want to roll that many dice. Uh, but I get three. Okay, you can get so four. So it's four minus one. You can get four on one. I just need a four. 
But if I fail, I could lose my blessed condition. You're not going to fail. I know it. You got it. Boom. So we open the abandoned luggage. When you gain this card, put two cards face down, test action, and discard this card. So this will be discarded. Oh, this goes back to this deck. Okay. And we flip them over. What do we get today? For a whole turn wasted. A magnifying glass. You get plus one as part of a research action on observation. That would have been helpful. Why not? Yep. Where were you before? Mm -hmm. uh, and then a token of faith. Common Curio. After this item suffers one or more horror, you recover one sanity. Oh, yes! that's helpful. This is exactly what I wanted. That is helpful. Exactly. Something like this. Like that. It can soak. It can soak up to three horror. That's what I need. I just need anything I could do that. Yeah, that's helpful. I think helpful. mainly allies have that kind of stuff. I think items is kind of rare, maybe. Yeah, but we there's do like see one specific items. Yeah, we do see one yeah, here. Yeah, I don't have any. I mean, Becky's an item. It does it. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that was probably I got lucky there. I don't know. Yeah, that's but. good. That's good. Hey, it's a job. Uh, are we winning? I don't know. I don't know. We're not sure. It's the kind of game you don't know it's, it's until Arkham you... Files game. You never know if you're winning. Even when you're done playing, you feel like you won. You're not sure if you won. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, no. Was that two actions? Or... No, that was yes, only one. That was... No, no, oh, I focused. focused. Yeah, I focused so I didn't want to lose Bless. Uh, okay. Done. Um, monsters, monsters, there is nothing. none. Encounters. Yep. Black Cave is again. Okay. You find a waterlogged journal that must belong to Sheldon's gang. It appears to be written in some sort of code. Test lore. Only a two. Oh, this is bad. I don't want to test lore. Uh, that's that's good. I could lose Bless right here. No! Oh! Yep. You have a reroll, technically, if you care. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, so I don't know what, what it does. It's not going to be a clue. It might just give me a damn spell, but I'm about to lose Blast. Is it worth getting rid of this? That sucks. After all that, it's like, uh, I wouldn't have bothered with this. I'm just rolling one die. Yeah, I'll spend an observation, and I'll re-roll this one. Come on, four, five, or six. And it's a one. Bye, Blessed. Bye. Okay, uh, that was way too much spent for that. If you pass. If you fail, you're sure it's meant to lead you, but where? Yeah, that sucks. I didn't read the pass, so I don't know if that it's good or not. <laughs> yeah, oh well. All right, maybe uh, yeah. that sucks. Sorry. Feel some inefficient plays were made there for sure. Wait, I mean, you couldn't, you didn't know that was going to happen. I know, but. All right, wait, do you want to hold? Yep. You trace your fingers along the pictographs on the cave wall. Test lore. Lore of four. Oops. I pass on all four. of them. <laughs> uh, if you pass, fragments of a secret history blossom like a garden in your brain. You gain one spell. Oh, this is increasing my uh, focus limit, if I can ever yes. focus. You found Intervene, which is a two-handed spell. Once per round, while another investigator is on, is, on any is on any spaces resolving a test, you may test lore minus one. Add your test result to the other investigator's test result. Oh, that would have been but you helpful. you lose two sanity. Ugh. I know, I need some I know. sanity soak for... You definitely have to go like the remnant token route. Like, oh, I do have two remnants, too, so I technically yeah. could do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep that in mind. Yep. Okay, uh, drawn from the bag. Oh, yeah. Blank. Nothing. Yes, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's Double good. nothings. Double nothings. Now I'm going to get... Gapers. Yeah. Yeah, gapers. <laughs> Called it. Uh-oh. Uh, so north side... Which, oh, oh, this, this is, is bad. This is bad. the worst case scenario. So yeah, we used to turn playing with the luggage, and now we're letting tokens get out of control. Okay, so we would put down, let's oh, put it so here, bad. which now puts, oops, which now puts five tokens. So that's yeah. an anomaly. And then these two tokens that would have been placed now go here. And now... Question. What? It wouldn't have mattered. Well, three in one space might be... Oh, that's fine. Yeah, because you still need to clear all of them anyway. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Uh, this is going to get shuffled in in one second, but there is something that says when there's three or more doom on the scenario, flip this card. Bad, bad, bad. Strange things are happening all over Arkham. People from distant past walk down the streets wondering at, wandering at the unusual buildings. Wondering? Okay. Uh, events happen out of order. The dates on editions of the Arkham advertisers seem to be chosen at random. 
Robed figures dart in and out of shadows, and, to your dismay, you think that you are being followed. Reveal cards from the bottom of the monster deck until you reveal a cultist monster. Spawn it in the street nearest the leader and put the rest on top of the deck in random order. There's one. more, there's more. Oh, there's more. Of course there's more. So I'm looking to reveal a cultist. Boom, we found a hooded stalker. One of the street Sounds space fitting. nearest the leader. Yep, whatever. Uh, and then it says add f a card five to the codex, return this card to the archive. Time unstuck. Through all the odd occurrences, a sense of rising dread fills the air. The people, the ones from the proper time, scurry from door to door, unwilling to be out under the gunmetal sky. Window shades are drawn, and businesses close early. As fluid as time is, you seem to be running out of it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So now we got some other things happening here. Uh, when there are three or more clues on this narrow sheet, so it's the same as before, add neither, add neither cards 4 or 7. Oh, and neither cards 4 or 7 in the codex. Add card four, which we already, we already have, have four, right? Yeah, yeah, we already have four. Okay. And then we have, when there are seven or more Doom on the snare sheet, add cards eight and nine to the codex and return this card to the archive. So we Ooh. need to find the red token quickly. We have three yeah. out of seven. Or we need and to this stop is a, this. I think I'm going to go this way on yeah. my turn. Okay. Yeah. That, but I still got to pull one more. Yeah, we need to find the red, red ritual thing, right? Monster. Uh, we found a knee, uh, Keening Hound. Keening Hound. Spawn at most Doom. Hunter, move directly and engage the most remnants. Oh, this guy's going to be deadly. He will deadly. just jump on What's you. What's his, um, on the bottom? Or turn it around? Yeah, four. four. <gasps> oh, this guy's a big I dude. Uh, four health, minus one to attacking, minus two to evading. He hits for two damage. One sanity. That's a bad dude. Uh, most Doom. I mean, we can say it's here. He's just going to jump wherever, unless I'm just going to run in and start fighting him. I really want to flip some tokens, though, but... I mean, I could... I could potentially fight him using my spell Maybe and my revolver. Maybe. Because he's four, right? It's, it's hard to do that. I don't have blessed anymore. Yeah, so. but with my revolver, I get the plus two die. And then with my wither spell, I can also test lore and add some more... Three more dice. Three more dice. Oh, I can roll seven. But we can put this anywhere that there's two Doom right now. We can put them here, we can put them here, we can put them here. But I have to spend one remnant. Oh, it is only one. Okay, okay. Going after him. He's going to just jump to you most Actually, likely. Actually, I can spend one remnant on my turn, which then we can choose who he goes to. But we don't, we don't want him to just attack in the two and one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm debating keeping him closer, and I just go after him on the next turn and take yeah. him and start fighting him at La Bella Luna. But I was hoping we could just go start flipping tokens and find the red one. Yeah. Because right now, that's the thing we need to do, right? Find the red gate is really the yeah, yeah, positive yeah. thing we're trying to do. Yep. Before all the doom gets out of control, so obviously if we can get some doom off the board is also great. Mm. Yeah, I'm going this way. I'm going to use my astral travel to try to move as far as I can that way. Depending on the results, I'm hoping to get to here. Yeah, we can just have him come and jump on. Where are you trying to go? Which way? It doesn't matter. It's both the same to get to this space as five spaces. I'm going to use my Astral Travel. Oh, you're going to try to do five jump in one turn? Yeah, with my Astral Not Travel. Not stop by and, like, go to one of these? Well, I worry or... about this, just I putting know. more I, doom. Okay, okay. I don't know. Move one, two, three. Fuck. Yeah, let me, um... Which spot are you trying to go to? Me, I'm trying to go to here. But so you might only get to like, oh, it's the same or no? Four. Uh, one, four. two, three, four. So most likely you can get to there based on what happens. Yeah, so this, this card that I'm going to do is instead of normal move action, you may test lore. You may move any number of spaces equal to the test result plus two. So if you roll none, you're only moving two spaces. So it's Which a risk. then is here. 
but you have money, lots of it, yeah. you could just guarantee that you're here yeah. and then not do that. True. And then I just worry about that next turn. But you do have re-rolls and stuff. Okay. But then I spend a remnant and then we decide who is the most remnants. Unless I get one from. So I'll put him here than... to keep him out of your way then if you're going to go. I don't sure. know if one way is shorter, but. Uh, no, it's both five together. Two, three, four. One, two, four, five. But in that case, you go. Up. One, two. Yeah. Oh. So this way is the longer way. Oh. So if what you're just trying to get on this neighborhood. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So the, the shortest way is technically that way to get into the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Unless I did something wrong there. No, no, I think you're All really right. good. Anything else? What's happening? That was just That's, tokens. That was the tokens. It's our turn. Okay. Do you want to go first and fight him and see what happens? I don't know if I want to go at him. Oh, okay. I, I kind of You just, want him to come at us? I don't know. If I go at him, uh, he's probably going to be engaged with me. I don't get to see uh, an encounter card, which, I mean, at this point, I don't even know if we need more clues. Maybe no, but the only problem is I would like to see an encounter or an anomaly card here because sometimes that helps yeah, us get rid of tokens. I mean, I could... I could go that way, too, and we can really go after that, but then I'm worried that maybe the red is here. Maybe the red is here. I know, I know, here. I know. Like, if you're up in this neighborhood, yeah, you possibly could see that. You're not going to do it right now, though. If I get five, I could. No, but you're going to try to ward away some doom, no? Mm. Or you just let the encounter possibly Possibly, but it depends on where we put this guy. Because I would use one remnant, so, but again, if he engages you, are you able to... I mean, I can the... take damage. I have seven. That's fine. I can put the... The sanity on this, Which and then I remove one. Okay, so, so it's not the worst case. Yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just letting him come to me, but then there's also this guy. Who's just going to put a doom? No. Oh. He moves toward the and engages the lowest, um, and he'll go shortest path. Which, if you're up here, we technically can make him go this way. Which he'd be in the street. Right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. No, oh, yeah, he goes this way, time. actually. Okay, okay. That's fine. That's bad. I can't go this way. I now can't go this way if he's here. I can only go here if I want to flip a token. But if you can potentially flip this token and I can potentially flip this token, based on die rolls, obviously, I, it's not for sure I can. Maybe. Yeah, I'm just going to move here and flip this token on okay, my turn. you go ahead. I think. Because maybe that'll depend what, what this yeah. does All right. if it's red. We'll go here. White, get it out of here. Okay. So it's either here, here, or here. Okay. So I'm going to perform this spell. Um, normally you have to take the sanity that's on it, but I will spend one remnant. I cancel that. Uh, and instead of my normal move action, I may test lore of four. Uh, one. But I can reroll all of them, or I can reroll any number. I will reroll any number. These three. Oh, man. See? I knew this would happen. So that's still a four. That's what I was saying. You have the money. Just do the for sure. Yeah, but I was Don't hoping for two. I know, two. but you seemed okay with it. You got your other ability, no? I could, yeah, I could reroll this one. Plus, like, I could just reroll totally all again, which... I would just probably reroll all your dice. Yeah, let's reroll all the dice. Yeah, I wouldn't have done... I don't know. But, yeah. There I got go. it. Now I got it. So moves. now I have five. Five. So oh, plus two? It's plus two. Hmm. So One, two, two plus two three, is... Four. Oh. Two plus two is a... four. Oh, I see, I see. I needed one more. I see. One, two, yeah, that's why three, not... four. You're Sorry. like very like, I thought I could I'm going to get five. No problem. I'm like, no, you're not. You're <laughs> that I could do it. You're probably three. That's okay. That's I was okay. right. Uh, then you nothing. had to waste two reroll abilities just to move four when you could have just spent two money. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay uh okay <laughs> that was my first action okay so then i will ward i guess yes which now you have no rerolls for your warding and now i might get the remnant that's uh, fine that's fine yeah let's just try uh i got two yeah so. and you get a remnant and i get a remnant so now this guy will jump on me remnant. okay well you have nowhere to put damage uh-oh yeah oh no i have nowhere to put damage uh -oh. but he's only gonna do two uh that puts you two away from death though one more attack from him and you're dead Right, that is that. So, monsters? Yep. 
Boom. He's engaged with you. Okay, so... This guy's going to move lowest strength, we said. One, two. Okay, this guy's going to hit me for two. I already have one, so that's three and one. I have nowhere to place that, so we're going to three and three. Out of five and seven. Okay. Uh oh All right. Encounters. So you don't get one. I don't get one, and you get one. Uh, it could be a clue. The unvisited aisle. Okay. Could get me an item. Give me something good. Like a pocket watch? Okay, ready? Go ahead. In the middle of the oppressive dark woods, you come across a clearing and a circle of slime white birch trees. You, you rest briefly. Test willpower. Four. Got it. Got it. One success. Uh, if you pass, you are filled with an unexplicable sense of peace. You become blessed. I'm sure I'll lose it on the very next card. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I want to be blessed. Why can't I be blessed? <laughs> All right. Here you uh, go. Doom. Uh, doom. Oh, man. Uh, bottom card. Bottom card is the TikTok Club. Okay. And... Monster. Ugh. Big. What's this guy? Eyeless Watcher. Night Gaunt. Spawn at the unstable space. TikTok Club. TikTok Club. Hunter, move towards and engage the lowest influence, which is me. And you could get a remnant. It's three health. Is Watcher. This monster does not restrict your actions or encounters. It moves with you. Flies on your back. A doom. North side at the train station, which that we goes cannot on the card. put that there, so that'll go there. No! One more. A headline, please. Uh, church leaders, blessed city. Catholic, Protestant, Greek, Jewish faith leaders, unite. Response to Sightings of Demons, Satanic Rites by Amelia Baxter. Headline, test willpower and resolve this effect based on your test result. All right, so I get two die. Uh, one pass. So one result says you become blessed. Oh. And then spawn one monster in your space. Oh. Yeah, you need three plus to just become straight blessed. Oh, I couldn't even roll that. Zero, one. you'll just spawn a monster in your space. All right, so I'm so blessed. So you're blessed. That's helpful. And we'll spawn a monster in your space. Which is a hooded stalker. Is this the elusive one? No. Nope. All right, so where's my monsters? Right here. Oh, problems. problems yep. Problems. Big problems. All right. All right. Silver. Okay. So, uh, do I just come to you and, like, fight a monster? Is that, like, what I should be doing? I mean, if you can, that'd be helpful. The kneeling hound, maybe? Because he's going to kill you if he hits you. Yeah. So I don't think I can kill him by myself, but maybe. I think we both need to fight him. But maybe we get lucky. All right. So I don't want you to die. So Thank one, you. two. Yeah, you need to get an item that can soak damage. I know. Big time. I know. Like a leather coat you I passed know. on earlier. But I passed on it for the key. So I'm going to attack this kneeling hound. So I'll engage him. So now you won't die from him, but you still could get hit by this guy plus other things. I think I can kill this guy. Uh, so I'm going to attack this guy for only six dice. Okay, six dice. I have blessed. Yep. You got it. Oh. So I hit him for three. Oh, no. Yeah, this is like how know, it works. I know, I <laughs> know. Uh. Yeah, so three damage. Okay. Yeah. That's my turn. Are you okay to possibly get it by him one time? Yeah, that's just okay. what we gotta do. It's fine. I All got right. lots of health still, seven, and I have a place to put the sanity. We already said I'm okay to be hit by him one time. Yeah, okay. So At then least maybe two. Maybe I'll two just, is even good. I'll just attack this guy in my space. I get plus two, so I get four. I am blessed, so four, fives, and sixes are all hits. I only need to hit for one. I don't think I need to do this as well. Like we need to draw anomalies here. That's the thing. Yeah. But 
I'm not going to get to draw one either. Okay, I kill him. Oh, that's no rewards? Uh, nope. No, not on that guy. No remnants, no. Nope. Okay. So then for my second action, I will just move here. Hopefully get... Okay. Uh, right. Finito. Okay, done. Monster. So this guy is moving one, two. Okay. What about this guy? Oh, I didn't see this guy. Sorry. Uh, he's also going to move two. One. Okay. And then this guy is going to attack me, like we said. I'll take two damage. And then I'll put one sanity on Token of Faith, which will remove one from mine. And... Oh. Is also, you do not get an encounter because you have a monster, so just me. But hopefully, anomaly with two. You exchange magical attacks with a robed figure as a screaming vortex siphons up the world around you. Test lore. Okay, lore is four. I have not used my rerolls yet. Uh, I'm blessed, so I pass. If you pass, you force the cultist through the vortex and watch it fade. You remove one doom from your space. I know. Uh, Blank. Yes. Headline. Oh, this headlines kill me. Unexplained sightings near river. Strange lights, sights, just swamp gas, say authorities. <coughs> By A.P. Jessup, Staff Raider Arkham Mass. Headline, you suffer one damage for each doom <clears throat> in your space. None. That's good. That's good. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. <clears throat> okay. Then you will refill for me. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Putting all the tokens back in. Oh. I don't even want to jinx it, so I'm not going to say anything about what I don't want to happen here. Monster? Yeah, it's a little overwhelming. I know. Uh, robed figures are back around again. On an unstable space. Which is train station, which is where you are. Killing me, man. Killing me. Headline. Oh, this could be bad news for me. Uh, mysticism, malfeasance, occultism, craze, sweeps, Arkham, police warn most mediums, frauds, R uh, Beecher, boast magic, very real. Headline, test, willpower, minus one. So I get one. Ooh. I pass, because I'm blessed. All right, it says if you fail, place one doom in your space, but you didn't. Okay, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Whew. Okay, uh, and then it's our turn. Oh, these guys are a huge problem here. Yeah. It's great. Oh, they only hit for one sanity or one damage. So I'm, I know, I know. They're not the worst case. Yeah. Um, so... I could... Uh, do I go first and flip in case, in case this is the red one? I know on my turn all I'm doing is going to fight the Keening Nee... Nee... Uh, Hound, sorry. And then focusing, I guess. That's all I really can do. So I'll just do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, six dice. I pass. I kill him. I get a remnant. And then I'll just focus. Let's go for lore. Where am I? Influence or willpower is the thing. Oh. Let's go influence. Maybe I'll get an ally out of it. Oh, I'm not going to see an no, encounter anyway. No. And it'll be anomaly anyways. Oh, yeah. Well, Lord is then. All right. Lord is. Okay. Done. Okay. First action. I will flip this token. Red. Oh, it's red. Oh, yes, nice. it's red. Okay, perfect. So what does that mean? Uh, oh, where's this God. one? Uh, is that bad? Is that good? When you reveal the red marker, if the barrier is destroyed, which it is, uh, add card seven to the codex face down. I don't think we've ever seen this add before the card either. No, I don't think we have. What is it? Face down? Face down. So I'm assuming this is face up. So this is face down? Yeah, because yeah. the number in the top yeah. face up. <clears throat> distortions epicenter. The reason for the temporal distortions is now clear. The enormous mass of the blind idiot god Azathoth is pulling through or pulling the threads of space and time out of order even in advance of his arrival. Because Azathoth will appear in the future, space and time are warped 
uh, are warping the present, and the Daemon Sultan's arrival is nigh. You need to reverse the cult ritual that summoned Azathoth in order to ward the Outer God away. You can only do it where it all began, at the epicenter. The space with the red marker is the epicenter. And now we have an action. Uh, you may remove three clues from the scenario to erect a protective ward over Arkham. If you do, read the back of card five. <sighs> Perform this action only at the epicenter. Okay, so we don't have any clues. And we don't remove any cards, so we can just put over this one. It's fine. Cause, yeah, because this one's just flavor text. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any clues, uh, and we don't have any clues on the scenario, so that's wonderful. So, so now yeah. we need to get three clues, and, 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 the and we only, only clues, have two options. We have one here, one here, and there's some here, but this is uh, an anomaly. Yeah, there's two under there, so okay. So we're not really looking good for the clues. Uh, we're very far away from winning, Okay. it looks like. Well, but we're still in it. So my second yeah. action... Oh, these go away, right? Didn't it say something about removing? Oh, yes, yes. I think. Yes. Uh, uh, on the one that's if frozen. both the red and blue markers have been revealed, remove all other markers from the board and return this card to the archive. Okay, oh, sweet. good. That gives more space. Okay, return this to the archive. Number four. Okay, so now I think... I still, I still have one action because I did that first, so I can ward here. The four. And I got it. So we will remove this one. And that is my turn. Okay. Okay. Uh, counters. counters. I don't get one. And I get an anomaly, but I have zero at my space. Through a shimmering gateway, you see a timeline just like yours, but without the hardships you now face. You attempt to seal the gate. Test lore. Test lore. Lore of four. Lore of four. I pass. If you pass, you remove one Doom from any space in your neighborhood. Yes, so that removes this one, and now we have none, so that can remove the Anomaly. Okay, okay, this is better. Nice. But this is a problem here. I know, I'm standing right there. They're going to bump into me first. Oh, did we forget to do Monster? Oh, we didn't. Yes, we, yes, did. we did. I'm so sorry. So these monsters, let's see. Uh, the Hooded Stalker engages me, hits me for one. Yep, and then Eyeless Watcher, Spawn Hunter, move toward and engage the lowest influence. So I, I'm in his way, so mm -hmm. he's going to hit me. And he'll hit me for one sanity, which I will just put on the token of faith. Or no, I put it on myself. So then the next oh, one I put yeah, on the token yeah, yeah. of faith. It can heal you. Ooh, yeah. I like this. Okay. I like this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Now I'm regretting yeah. not taking those handcuffs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I haven't used the motorcycle that much. Yeah. So I think I want to try this scenario one time with taking, I should have done it right now on our third try. Take the, take the, uh, handcuffs, but I think it would have been better for this one based on what's happening now. Okay. Uh, what's now? Drawing these? Yes. Yes. Um, and Elena has a question. I've been gone, uh, I was gone for 30 minutes. Look what happens. Question. Where did you get those token things? Which I assume you're talking about the coin capsules. They're just coin capsules. You can Google it. Uh, somebody I'm sure on Board Game Geeks put the actual measurements you need. They're the same measurements of the ones we use for Arkham Horror LCG. Uh, a lot of people use them for Fantasy Flight games because of tokens, drawing them out of the bag or using tokens over and over again. They wear down. They're known to do that. Uh, our Game of Thrones 2nd Edition board game tokens are all like worn out. They're getting worn out the more we play. Uh, I wish I knew about these before. Uh, but I don't remember the measurements. There's a couple different measurements that work. Um, but yeah, they're just coin capsules. They protect coins that you collect. So you can search... Coin capsules, Arkham Horror. I'm sure you'll find people telling the measurements and where to buy them, and uh, but you can find them on eBay and Amazon and stuff like that. Uh, that's where, I think we got them on Amazon. I think. I think we did. Uh, but yeah, they're pretty cheap. You can have tons of them in a box. Uh, clue. Clue. Okay, clue is gonna go in East Town. Here. East Town. I'll let you shuffle that yeah, while yeah. I draw East Town two. down. So now there is two clues on East Town, which is very good. Hopefully. They're both being shuffled in the top here, and they're like the top two cards. Doom. Okay, we don't have anomaly, so this is better now. So how much doom do we need on this scenario sheet? Three? Seven. Uh, I mean, uh, clues, clues, clues. Oh, clues. We need three. Oh, no. Yeah, we need three. Oh, so uh, downtown away. at La Bella Luna, which is going to then cause oh, an anomaly my here. God. Okay. Throw one more. Nothing. Okay. I mean, I could just go there on my turn. I know it's not super efficient, but we don't want to put, keep building up clues here. When there's seven Doom on here, we have a problem. I know, but we also want to get clues, and there is nothing going on here. 
I know, I know. So it's like, I, I'm not going to be able to get clues from here. I, I don't have monsters for turns. Oh, turns, yeah, I got to help turns, you too, so. I think. Because you're going to, okay. We could just stay there and try to aggressively get clues. Yeah, because maybe I just help you and I take one of the weak monsters or something and fight him. But again, that's still a turn where one of us doesn't even see a card. It's like... I know. Yeah, but at least we get rid of potentially two monsters. If you can kill one and I can kill one. Mm -hmm. You go first and see what happens with yours. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so... I guess I'll just fight... Wanna fight the robed figure, I guess. Uh, for seven. Um, boom. He's dead. I really wish you could do <clears throat> two attacks in a turn. Like, this is the kind of thing that frustrates me when, like, you know, you just get overwhelmed by something in the game, like Doom or Monsters. The fact you can't just waste a whole turn, waste a whole turn doing that, just the same action over and over again, mm -hmm. trying to deal with the problem. Yeah. That's where I find this game gets out of control, because you can't do that. It stops you, which feels very restrictive. That's all one thing I dislike about the game, but I understand it's part of the design. Yeah. I have one other action. You can evade. Yeah. Oh, but you're doing minus two for evade. Yeah, minus two, because it's the worst one, yeah. So minus two, I'm literally rolling one die. Mm. And I have to have and a success. it's a 50-50, because you're blessed And blasting yeah, out. I could lose my blast doing that. I could just focus something different. I could just gain a dollar. No, I can't because this guy's with me. Mm -hmm. But literally, they could lock me out of doing anything on my turn, like wasting a full action also. That feels very bad. I don't know what else there is. I'm, not, I'm only allowed to focus, attack, or evade. I mean, you could just try to evade. It's 50-50 because you're blessed. I don't know. But then I could lose blessed. I know. I'm I know. like... Sure, I'll try it. But then you get an extra action if you do. Yeah, true. Uh, no, because I need two successes. Oh, right. To like, I, to evade. I only evade one monster per success, right? Yeah. But yeah. If, if you evade... Test, uh, test observation to disengage and exhaust monsters equal to your test result. If you evade all, perform one additional action. If you can evade one, I'll take the other one that's engaged with you, so then potentially I can kill it, and both of us have no monsters in our space, and we can get some. But the next one, they'll just engage with the monster ah. phase if they're both not dead. Oh no, it won't, because it, it's exhausted, right? Right, it's not going to hit you. Uh, it's, oh, it will, it will engage yeah, it with you. Yeah, it flips over and engages, right? Yeah, yeah, so one of us will yeah, 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 just Yeah, I don't know what to do here. Very annoying. Um, I don't know why I would try to disengage if, like... Other than it won't attack, and they only do one each. <sighs> then, yeah, you don't have to. I think I'll just focus, and I'll take a strength, and I'll replace the lore with strength. And just get ready to fight a three health guy. And possibly more bad guys that are going to come and engage with me before then. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my turn. I'm done. Flip my token. Oh, I didn't even flip my token. I know, I didn't either. <laughs> okay, I will move to you. And I can engage the uh, one that is one health. Yeah, no. And, or sorry, I tax. So that yeah, engages yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I roll four die because I have two plus two with my revolver. And I'm blessed, so I need to roll four, four five, or six. I got him. Oh, oh I nice. just got him. Yeah. Okay. Boom. That's my turn. All right. Monsters. This guy's going to hit me for one sanity. I'll put it on token of faith. It will remove one from me. Okay. And no other monsters? Nope. All right. Uh, encounters. Uh, you just, just get me. one. And it is a north side? Yeah, at the train station. Train station. I got your message, says a stranger, and came as soon as I could. You gain one ally. Oh, like it. You found Gabriel Carrillo. Carrillo? Ally, he's a teacher. You may perform one additional action during your turn. Oh. Whoa. Okay, Mel's now dating around and found someone else besides Leo DeLuca <laughs> to spend her time with. Uh, so she's found another gentleman caller here to help her out on her turn. Yes. I didn't know this guy was I didn't in the know game. that either. Or I would have been trying to farm allies too. Uh, so he can also take two damage and one uh, sanity to help you stay alive, maybe. Okay, that is amazing. That is amazing. But there's more! Oh, there's more. There's more. Uh, <clears throat> you chat with your new friend to learn more. Test influence. 
Oh, my influence is three. Four, fives, or six are passes. I got it. All right. Good thing you did. Because if you pass, you recognize the handwriting on the note as your own, dated in the future. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Yes. Burr, 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 burr. Okay. Love it. Okay. That felt good. Go. Over. Nothing. Yes. Uh, gate burst. I think you already did it. Oh. Reckoning. Oh man. Uh, each cultist monster is that a cultist? No cultist. Okay, and then we have to test uh, willpower. Um, oh, I forgot about this one. Four Step dice. Two uh, wow. You're black. Oh, black. Thank you. Holy. All right, so no horror for me. I'm not going to spend a clue to remove it because I don't have one. Oh, I got okay. it. I almost okay. back. <laughs> I, I got it too, so that's fine. And I don't. I have a clue, but now knowing that we need the three clues, I'm it's not. Crazy that rumor is still here. I know. We should have probably got. Did we not got... see another one to get rid of it? No, we didn't. Wow, weird. Okay, monster, of course. Yep, this is so annoying. Uh, robed figure spawn at the unstable space, which is curiosity shop. And he's going to. Move he's already there. there. He's engaged. The... I think he just stays there. Or he'll, oh, he'll oh, he's to patrol. The... Yeah, he'll only move to the like the unstable space, whatever it is. Move towards the unstable space and engage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. But That's remember, fine. he drops doom when we draw that red token, which... Oh, there is a gate burst in there. Yep. Oh, there is. Uh, River Town. Okay, we're fine with this. For now. For now. It shuffle all the discard. All of... Discard, put it at the bottom. And... And that is going to be our turn again. Okay, so on this turn... Uh, we still need to get clues. We need to put them on the sheet, and we need to be at the red spot to move them. Yeah. Or spend them to flip a card. And we got to stop Doom from getting here, which right now this is the next place where Doom will automatically go on the sheet. Yeah. You so, can go there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm gonna leave this guy. I'm not gonna worry about him. Even though he can drop Doom on the board, hopefully he just makes it to us. Oh, I have this guy still. Yes. So let me just. Oh go. yeah, you go first because you forgot that guy. Yeah, because I may need help. We'll see. But uh. All right, so he's not reducing my die count, so I'm going to roll seven with my Becky item here. Okay. And I hit on fours or above. Whoops. Fours or above. Let me fight the Eyeless Watcher. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah. No, that's done. Perfect. I get a remnant. And he's gone. And now, I'm getting an anomaly. Um, Card over here could be great. But we uh, need the clues as well. So I think, do you focus oh, on somewhere yeah. with clues? Hold on. Let me think. One, two, three. Oh, I can't get all the way over here. Oh, that's too bad. But that would be nice. I could go down here. Yeah. I just don't want him just engaging me right away. And then I'm not drawing a thing. Right now, the unstable space is the train station. So he's moving here. But we're both not going to be there because there's no cards. I don't think we'll draw the reckoning on the next turn yet. So no, he won't drop stuff is. yet. So let me go. No, we're one. But if we're trying to stop us from losing, I know we need clues. Yeah, we need clues. So let me go one, two, three. I'll go to the TikTok club, which could help me clean up some damage and sanity loss mm -hmm. or money. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Or make me lose all my money. Who <laughs> knows? Who knows what's going down at the TikTok club? I know, right? All right, done. Flip. Okay, I will move one, two, and I will spend one dollar to move to La Bella Luna, which has been an issue the whole game. And then I will ward for yes, four. Yes. Anything that can help me with this? Any spells or anything? Gabriel as part of attack. DeLuca. Once per round. Mel's phone book is overloaded. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot to get an extra action. Yes. Does that change anything you want to do? Yes, I will focus. Yeah. So I will focus before I left, leave. Doesn't matter. You do it right now before you roll. Yeah. And then, okay, I forgot. Yeah. What do you take? A lore? I took a lore so I can Ooh, roll more dice. Five dice. All right. One, two, three. Got them all. Got them all. And you get a remnant. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, which Gabriel. Which can help you with spells and yes. stuff. Yes. And then now that I have zero, hopefully that gets rid of that one. Okay. Done? Uh, done. Yes. All right. Uh, monsters. Where is the unstable space? The train station. Train station. Starting space. Because right? we don't have any discards, yeah. so it's our starting space. So he just goes there. Done. Okay. Encounters. Oh, we both get one. Yeah. Let's do yours Sweet first. Deal. TikTok club. Yep. Uh, okay. Slim, well dressed, dainty Donahue takes a takes a personal and somewhat unsettling interest in you. 
Ooh. Make sure my friend only gets the good stuff, Pat, he says to the bartender. You, you may spend $1 for you or an ally to recover two health and two sanity. You or an ally? Yes, you or an ally. Now, could I do some sanity from one? Oh, I don't have an ally. No, it's either you. Yeah, it's you. Yeah, so I'll spend one to heal two. Two health or two sanity. Yeah, I'll do two health. Okay, this is going Okay. okay. And my turn in Labelle. Oh, no. Anomaly. Sorry. Up there. Anomaly. And I have zero in my space. All right. You commandeer a dark robe and join the chanting, uh, join a chanting column of cultists in an effort to sabotage a ritual. Test lore. Test lore. A five. Yeah. And I'm still blessed because I haven't failed yet. And I pass. Holy. Okay. Uh, if you pass, you steal their supplies and flee. You remove one doom from any space in your neighborhood. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to have in. Perfect, Ooh. perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, I put the doom in there. I'm getting too excited. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'm going to move that way on my turn. Now we uh, drop in the bag. Yes. <laughs> doom. doom. Okay. Doom is going to go in north side at the curiosity shop. Doom. It's going to go in Rivertown at the Graveyard. Okay. Two and now tokens the, left. Now the Graveyard is where the monster wants to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, two tokens left here. Headline, please. Oh. Still not a rumor. Magician vanishes rabbit and self. A uh, full manhunt for the magnificent Manfred underway. Seven white doves also missing. Foul play suspected. Headline, you disengage all monsters and move to the unstable space. Oh, graveyard. Okay. The monsters are not exhausted. They I... engage another investigator in their space. Okay, I didn't have any monsters. And a clue. And then I'll give that to you to refill. So the clue is going to go in Rivertown, which is where I am. Oh, this I'm Oops. assuming should be a... What's the problem? Well, this was like this here. I assume it's a doom that got flipped over from dice roll. I don't know. I don't think there was a clue there at all. I don't think so. I yeah, don't think so. I could have bumped it when I'm rolling dice. No, yeah, I don't think so. Problem. No room for a dice tray in this game. <laughs> okay. Look how much crap is on the board. Holy crap. Just yeah. looking at it. But it's so fun, though. So much junk. All right. All right. Uh, uh, okay, flip this over. And it's our turn. One clue. Better odds. Oh, problems. Stay there. Yeah, it's one more token on this neighborhood and it's off. Yeah, why don't I go first? Let me first. I can have four focus tokens. So let me focus willpower. Because I have four spells. Okay. Let me then ward for five. Got it. Uh, two. I got all of them. You gain a remnant token. I gain a remnant token. Thank you. And then I will move. Oh, uh, yes. One. So you two. could possibly get items for influence and observation here. You could spend money to gain sanity back or money to gain health back. Yeah, I'll spend one and I'll move <laughs> to the health. You're right. I should go and get health back because I'm going to die soon. Velma's diner. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully I pass that. Go ahead. Uh, That's oh, me. My then. turn. Right? Or uh, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just went first. Yeah, okay. Um, I didn't even ask him. Just did it. It's all good. Uh, I'm thinking of just wording here. And just moving maybe to... Oh. This guy is go going towards the graveyard. Yeah, so he will just move like one, two, it'll be here. I don't want to engage with them. I no. want to get a clue. Mm -hmm. um, so I could, or I could just move over to here if I think something's better over here, but I don't want to go here. Yeah, let's just ward first. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to test. Lore is two, five, five dice. Four is their higher hit. Uh, so I got it, and I gain a remnant. Okay, now, based on that, where is good for stuff? Uh, 
I got remnants coming out of all places, so I'm gonna go to the river docks. Maybe be able to trade some remnants for an item or a weapon or something. Yeah, true. Or get some. Or money. maybe use that to help us get the clue. Yeah, true, true. Maybe true, true. Um, so that is that. And before we continue, I just need to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. back okay all right we did our turns now what monster monster so he's going towards a graveyard oh what oh yeah he passes by me right one two yeah because he doesn't want to go down yeah, this yeah. Way. sorry that is for sure where he's going yeah okay yeah the unstable space yeah i just realized i'm like wait i'm only two away from him oh no did i go to the wrong place okay so that's good Thanks, i think what he was here right no he's here yeah one two three yeah, yeah. four Definitely five one two three four five six yeah, yeah definitely yeah, sure. really. okay all right uh, encounters uh do you? yours first okay. here velma's diner, velma's diner. all right uh the dinner is warm and cozy as you remember you may spend one dollar for you or an ally to recover three health yes 100 percent. so go to four <laughs> And I will recover three. And that's not all. It feels like this place never changes. Test observation. Okay, observation is three. I got it. Okay. Uh, 
If you pass, even the newspaper is the same one from last week and the week before that. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Yes, we need one more. So right. now the uh, unstable space is Hibbs Roadhouse. Okay. And then you are at the Merchant District at the River Docks? Yep, yep. Mm. I collect strange stories and objects, says one of the oddly dressed sailors. You got anything like that for trade? You may spend one remnant yes. to add to its collection. Yes? Sure. Okay. That's why I went there to spend these damn remnants. <laughs> okay. What else am I using them for? If you do, he shares knowledge of his offerings. You gain one common item and one clue from your neighborhood. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. So a clue for sure. Yeah. And you get common one common item. item. And then this gets... So I got the leather added. coat here for health. If you think monstrous, it's going to be pro still be a problem. Uh, the common rabbit's foot. Once per round, you may re-roll one die while resolving tests. It only costs two. But there's also liquid courage for sanity. I mean, re-rolling is not bad for getting yeah. the clues onto here. For everything. For everything, yeah. But it's only two. I could dig in the deck and maybe find something better. Could be just another, like a weapon I don't need. So I'm going to go with the rabbit's foot. I think. But I may regret that. I think liquid courage could be good too. But maybe I'll have less problem with sanity if I'm actually rolling better. <laughs> so I'm going to take the rabbit's foot. Better not be the pocket watch on the top and it's common. <laughs> I will lose my mind. Oh, it's an elder's oh, dart. Man. Look at four. this. I uh, maybe wish I took that, but it is. Oh, it's not even common. Magical curio oh. once per round. If two or more horror would be dealt to this card, prevent one of that horror. That's a good okay. protection card. If one of us wants to grab that. Okay. Um, that was both of our encounters, right? So mythos. Uh, yes. Oh, and this guy, sorry, is now going to the TikTok club because we got the other encounter. Well, uh, that may change by the it time change, you go yeah. into that. Based on us drawing cards yeah, right now. Right. Oh, oh gate burst. North side, which I think is okay. Yep, no, just barely. One, two, three. Uh, and then this is going to shuffle these back yep. in, actually. And you need a doom. Every card you draw from the bottom there is going to be, hopefully it's not a north side card that you just shuffled in. <gasps> Please don't be north side. Okay. It is Rivertown yeah. at the graveyard. Okay. okay. Now you draw two out of there. No, I draw two. Don't draw two other Doom, please. That would be great. No, I want to draw the blank. Don't draw monsters. Also be nice. Oh, Reckoning. Okay, so each cultist drops a Doom in a space. Yep, so he drops one. And then we test Willpower. I test four. I test three. I pass. You got it. I you also pass. pass. Beautiful. I hey. lost the bless yet. That's good. Yep, that's good. Monster. No. Uh, uh, sorry. The high priest is back again. Whoops. I think we've rounded the deck, right? Oh, more, yeah. Of course we did. Yeah, we've already seen other robed figures and stuff. I think. Uh, so spawn at most doom and lurker. Place one doom in its space. Oh. Most doom uh, could be here. I could just ignore this guy and go that way and just one, two. I could put him here and then I just go up there. So then possibly I get a clue if I defeat him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that. Then... <clears throat> Man, I'm talking too much today. My throat. <laughs> Your water, yeah. Huh. <clears throat> get a cough candy maybe maybe it'll help um yes you could do that then you could go move and then fight him yeah that's my plan and then maybe i'm on a spot where i could get a clue at the end of the turn not that we need clues right no we need to we... get the clues onto here and then we can oh. as the action remove three clues from the scenario so we need to get the clues on here first but you yeah i'm gonna try for my two. Oh, okay but again, but then someone has to be in the red space to even do that action. I'm gonna come. I think, sorry, I have the cups. I think I'm gonna come back across this way as an action to move, getting closer to this. Because if we can't yeah, get our yeah. three on there, we can do the action. Whoever has an action. Yes, yeah, so we don't need more clues right now. We don't need more clues now. We just need to worry about monsters and doom. But that guy's the, the closest to getting a remnant. Yeah. So I probably should just fight him. Okay. Uh. So it's us. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just do that, I guess. One, two, three. I'll engage this guy. Whoops. I'll engage. I got it. 
Yeah, okay. So engage that guy. I'm gonna roll minus one. Six dice. I uh, just need two successes, four or higher. Oh wow! One, two, three, four. You got it. <sighs> Overkill. All right. Oh, do I get a reward or anything? <laughs> yes. After you feed this monster as part of attack action, gain one spell. <laughs> Alchemical process. That's gonna help us at all. Uh, action test lore. You gain one dollar for each success you roll. Oh, it's a oh, money making spell. That's not bad. So it's like magic, magical counterfeiting. <laughs> Great. Just what I need. Turn these beans into sure, money. Throw money. Can I buy clues in the game with money? <laughs> this is no. No, I can't. All right. Uh, okay. I am finished my turn. Okay. I am first going to research. I get to roll three die. And I am blessed. So fours and fours and five and I get two on there. Okay. Then I will move. One, two, three, four, Spend ch spending two, because I want to get to this unstable space. Um, I guess I could have actually, maybe I should I try my ability? I have remnant. So here, here's the thing. You could try your ability, or you could just stop one at the Arkham oh, Asylum, where try you to could heal. pay to remove sanity. Yeah, that might be better. Because yeah. you have three yeah, out of... Yeah. One, but do you two, have a place three. to soak now? Not uh, really. A little bit. He only has one. You have yeah, three so actions, I just, too. What else, yeah, I'm what going to focus one more time because I can have four. Oh, wow. So then I have lore, observation. Maybe I'll do a strength. So are the bigger monsters coming or do I need an influence? I'll do a strength. If you try your ability and can get over there and ward. Like, I know because uh, I would spell, have one more action. Yeah. That might be the way to go. Okay, you have rerolls on that, too? Yeah. That might be a, oh, this. This might be the better place for a stretch. If one, if it two, doesn't, three, four, five. So most likely you'll get five. a three by default, right? It's yeah. plus two plus whatever you roll. So let's say three is worst case scenario, sort of. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, At least I still gets you end here. there. Okay, I'll try because I have remnants. So I will do my spell instead of move uh, action. I may test lore. I'm also going to spend the remnants so I don't have to take the sanity. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm now rolling five die instead of only four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, that only gave me one. Yeah, see? This is like... Okay, I'll do my ability first to re-roll any... All one or, or all. one. I'm going to roll all. So you fours or higher, all successes. Did I only roll four? First time? Uh, I guess so. Because yeah. I only have... Hold on, let me just roll this because maybe I... Oh, now I would have had two, so... That still only moves you four. Oops, yeah, I know, but now I then instead will do my other ability. Rolling some? Rolling some. Yeah, two there more. we go. So, so I can, you move, can move six. Six spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> six? What did we say? It's up to you. But. Where do you want me to go? There's more doom in my space. Okay. You could get a remnant out of it. Yeah, it yeah. leaves us open for trading, possibly. Okay. But the only negative, I think, is you're not in the red space. If you, but you have three actions. So, so I could so, move. Yeah. Yeah. You're still like wide open. Yeah. Okay. So then my last action, I. Remove that original strength folk thing that I did. I rewound. Now I'm going to ward for four, five die. Uh, one, two, three. More than enough. And I get another. So this anomaly. just helps us not get another anomaly in that spot. Yeah. Maybe if we need more clues, it allows it more open that we get that clue possibly. Yep. All right. Okay, that's done. done. Yep. Okay. Uh, monsters. He's now going to the graveyard. Oh, one, that's two. the one. Yep. No, yeah, because okay. we shuffled him back. Okay. Okay, um, encounters. You want to do yours first? Sure, north side. Okay. You find your path blocked by several large crates. Just got back from the estate sale, calls the owner, Oliver Thomas. Go ahead and look through the boxes. I'm sure we've got what you're looking for available for purchase. You may buy any number of curio items from the display. Yeah, there's none that I can afford. I only have one money and... $3 curio item, $3 curio item, $5 curio item, $4 curio item. Does he take remnants for no. any kind of cost? No. So that's, so this says buy though, right? So because I'm not buying or choosing not to buy. Yeah, you may buy any number of curio yeah. items from the So display. what I can do is now discard two from here up to two. Then we see new stuff. Yeah. So I am going to... I don't think we're going to use the tattered cloak anytime soon. Not at this soon. point, no. I'll get rid of that. The leather cloak coat still could be helpful for you. Uh, but now I'm, yeah. 
But there is the Elder Sign Amulet I think you would take over that. Yeah, I would. And they're both Curio, but one's common if you're allowed to get a common item. Uh, I think I'll get rid of this one that's for a research action, the Occult Scripture. Yeah. Plus two for a research action for observation. But it's only me really doing it. I already have an item that helps me with that. We have focus tokens and stuff. So yeah. uh, I'll just put these on the bottom. And I'll put out fine clothes. An item common curio once per round. You may pay half price, round it up while buying an item. Does, <laughs> not, been... does not stack with other cost reduction. But that would have been nice if you would maybe yeah. buy something. And a 45 Thompson cost five. It's an item common weapon. You get plus five as part of an attack Ooh. action. Even better than Becky. Dang, that's Ooh, good. That's better than nice my one. revolver. That's a nice one. Because then I could just let Becky like take another sanity or something, go away, and then I could use that if I had it as a better attack anyway. Yep. Hmm, interesting. Okay, my turn. Maybe I'll get the clue, hopefully. Uh, curiosity shop at Northside. Northside Curiosity Shop. All right. Oliver Thomas seems distracted today. You may buy a number of curio items from the display. So you have common curio fine clothes for four, mm -hmm. which we know the rounded up half price thing. Uh, leather coat for three, common curio. You get plus one observation as a beta test. Could soak up up to three horror. The elder sign amulet, which once per round, if two or more horror would be dealt to this card, prevent one of it. It's two and four it could soak. And liquid courage is not a curio. So yeah, you have I'll, these three. I'll buy the amulet for yeah, four. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and that will get replaced with a first aid kit. Action. An investigator or ally in your space recovers one health. Oh. There is more. There is more. Uh, where were we? Curiosity shop. Uh, as Oliver packages and purchases, you watch the store's tortoises shell, tortoise shell cat walk up the stairs. Test observation. Okay, my observation is three, and I'm still blessed. Oh. I got it. You are blessed. All I'm right. Blessed. Uh, let's see. What's it do? Uh, if you pass, the cat ascends the stairs again a moment later. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Yes, we got them all. We just got to get them on there. And now the unstable space is the Arkham Advertiser. I'm back. Yeah. Okay. But the token's here, so we won't drop Doom anytime soon, which is nice. Okay. Oh, flip this. Oh. Blank. Yeah. And headline. <laughs> Ugh. Still not a rumor. Uh, dream expert found dead. Foul play suspected. Dr. Ephraim Zwenglinger, MD, PhD, dead at his home. Doctor strangled to death by his own hand. Headline, test willpower. Which is four for me. Got success. it, just... You suffer three horror. Prevent one horror for each success you rolled. Ooh. I mean, the once per round, re-rolling a die probably should do, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'll take one. Uh, one horror. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. You? Yep. Okay. Doom. Oh. Doom is going to go in the Merchant District in the TikTok Club. Clue. Yay. You're going to get a clue at north side. Okay. That's it. And it is our turn. Our turn. Uh, okay. So, uh, you or I. Who is better putting clues on this thing? Uh, I roll three. I roll four because I have a magnifying glass. So, okay. I should probably you go try. first. Yeah, see yeah, if yeah. I get on there. Yeah. Oh, and then we got to get to here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then if you get it on there, I can move and do that's it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Or should I be doing something different? That's good, because this will progress whatever we need to do. Okay. I will try to put a clue on there. Unless you just want to go see what happens first, but then I'm available in case it spawns monsters at the location. Oh, yeah. That's true. Then I'm I have able enough... to go, right? Yeah, because I have enough actions. If I can get it on there. Yeah, so there's like okay. two two thoughts of it is like... Yeah, because we don't know... But then it leaves here. you available with a bunch of actions if that happens. Although on my turn, I have impossible of putting a clue on, getting to this space, and advancing it. You can do that. And it leaves yeah, but, me fully open. Yeah. 
but I could. But you're right. It does yeah. give us more information. I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll go first. So I roll three, and Absolutely. I do have reroll possibilities for a lot. Yeah, like yeah. I can multiple Make rerolls. It and I'm blessed. So I just need one of these to be a success. And we got all successes. So, so clue on the put sheet, Put a clue right? on here. You're researching? That's my research action. Then I will move. Yep. And then as my third action granted by Gabriel, I will do which, one? which this one. You may remove three clues from the scenario sheet to erect a protective ward for over Arkham. Uh, if you do, read the back of this card. The back of the card is a strange barrier. A swirling storm flickers in the sky, twisting first one way, then the other, as time reverses course over and over again. This must be the epicenter of the temporal, temporal, deserves, temporal disturbances. As you approach, the air grows thicker and thicker until it is hard and unyielding as glass. An unseen force forbids you from the epicenter of the disturbance, and none of your usual counter magics or tricks erode it one iota. You'll have to find some other way past. The space with the red marker is the epicenter. For the time being, a magical barrier prevents you from entering the area. Each investigator must move one space away. What the heck is going on? Did we do this wrong? Maybe we did. Well, read, make sure I did this right. Hold on. So. No, okay. So we had it come in face down, right? Yeah. Because we destroyed the barrier. If you do read the back of the card. Oh, back of card five. Back oh, of card five. Sorry, 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 sorry. What are you doing to me here? Sorry. I'm like, it's telling us to. Yeah, I would, I'll stop. Sorry. So forget everything I just read. Uh, wind whips around as you shout your chant toward the heavens. The sky overhead tears open, revealing the unthinkable visage of the Daemon Sultan. Your mind falters, but then the ritual takes effect. The circle you have drawn in the street begins to glow, and beams light fire from the ground towards the sky. The light bends and weaves the rift close, forcing Azathoth back to the center of the chaos. In the following days, you struggle to comprehend the passage of time. You cannot quite remember how long a day should feel and your consciousness drifts between countless eternities in the blink of an eye. Still, life goes on. You eat breakfast while reading the headlines in the newspaper and see a familiar note in the margin in your own handwriting. Investigators win the game! Ah, yay! Mel almost like tanked it for us there, trying to get me to read the wrong cards. But she never says the right thing when she reads. Trying to screw us over. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, why am I reading this when we didn't have to read it before? It's weird. Um, but yeah, Kazumi, Kazumi caught it there. You're reading yeah. the wrong card. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we goofed up on that I just that got one. excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yay, good job. Yay, we did awesome. Okay. We, yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about, this is our third playthrough of this. We'll give a kind of our thoughts on the game. Uh, not like a, I guess kind of like a review, but you know, I don't want to keep it that Yeah, we don't strict. call it that. Yeah, we, we don't copy the playthrough review style that some other channels do, but even though we've been doing it this way for like 10 years, but hey, whatever. All right. Uh, so yeah, that was Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, published by Fantasy Play Games. Um, again, we never played any other Arkham Horror before playing this one. We've never played a 2nd Edition. We never played the 80s version. Uh, the only thing we play is like the card game, Mansion of the Madness, Elder Sign, Arkham Horror Final Hour. That's it, I think, from the Arkham Files series so far. And we know we've not played Eldritch Horror. Stay tuned. Um, but yeah, this game, uh, in our first two playthroughs, so spoilery, I guess, uh, if you don't want to know any other things but what you just saw in this playthrough, tune away now. Spoiler warning, I guess. Um... But in our first playthrough of this game, we did better than we just did. We, like, crushed it. Yeah. We just got lucky. We found the pocket watch, I think it is, is what I keep trying to find. I'm actually curious. Like, right from the beginning. Hold on. Did... Let's see if we find it. Shotgun's here. Whoa. Okay. Oh, yeah. I want to see what the shotgun is in this game, actually. So this, this is good. Also item, common, item, uh, common weapon, sorry. You get plus five as part of an attack action. Each six you roll as part of an attack action counts as two. Oh. That's so good. I, I've never seen that in this game. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, we've never seen that before. At our three playthroughs, never seen it. Not there. Nope. Nope. Okay, the lucky cigarette case we had very early last game, or the, the game we won. Uh, once per round, you may add one to the result of a dial resolving test. I had this like very early, paired with a pocket oh. watch. It is a common curio, so we can dig for it in, in all the cases that say look for a common or a curio item. Okay. 
You may perform one additional action during your turn. I had this right away. Like this was in the in the market with the lucky cigarette case, and I basically didn't even buy them. No. I didn't I didn't even go for money in the game. We just got given items, as you've seen. Yeah, you can, we don't really buy items. Yeah, because the game just gains you this, gains you that, right? If you go to the right places. So I got lucky and I paired these together right off the hop. I also had uh something else that let me like re-roll all my dice on a um on an attack. I don't know what that was. I don't know. Maybe it was something. Maybe it was an ally. I don't know what it was. But yeah. Man, that was the pocket watch was like five or six cards from the bottom. Mm -hmm. That sucks. You also had an ally that every time he killed a monster, he could remove a doom in his oh, face. Oh, yes. Which was huge. Yeah. Somehow everything I got just made this like perfect engine. Yeah. So I was, I had Becky. I had ways of rerolling on attacks. Uh, I had the plus one lucky cigarette case. And what, Mel and I traded too, though. Yeah, like, we did. I, I don't know if we traded to make all that happen. I don't think we did really. We did trade things, but I don't remember. I think I just traded away all the spells I had. Yeah. I but so. I was like gathering items like crazy. Everywhere I went, I was just getting lucky that I was trying to go fight monsters and take care of Doom. And it was always happening in places that I was gaining items. And I wasn't buying anything. I wasn't getting any money. So I had the lucky cigarette case. I had the pocket watch. I had some ally that you just said was uh, getting a Doom off the board for every monster I killed. Mm -hmm. So I was just going around and fighting the whole game and it was also removing Doom. So I was like getting two actions in one. Plus your additional action. Plus an additional action from the pocket watch. It yeah, felt it so broken and we just crushed it. Yeah. Like crushed the game. Uh, it was great. Then I realized the game was supposedly really hard. After that, I kind of looked up some rules to make sure we were playing it right. We were. Everything was fine that I could find. Uh, I was just thinking, like, maybe we got lucky on everything. I don't know. Uh, but we did make some inefficient plays at the end of it. But then the second time we played, I said, Mel, we need to play one more time before we stream. I just want to make sure we're playing it right. I want to see more things come up just to see if there's any weird instances or something. And to understand, like, maybe there is the difficulty to it. And we just got really lucky that first one. So we played the second time. And the game crushed our souls. Yeah. It, we saw no good items. I was drawing things that aren't good for me. Mel was drawing things that aren't good for her. Her character ended up dying. Yeah, we were we, failing ev almost every roll. We were putting out fires as best we can. The, it was just getting anomalies were all over the place really fast. It was getting not as fast as we saw that first one. Right, right. But it was just like... But constant. we had multiple. Yes. Like, we, I think we had three at one point. And I had an item that helped me ward. You had items mm -hmm. that, that helped you ward. We were getting rid of Doom, but it just felt like... It was getting rid of it in the wrong places, and then it was, it was, we just couldn't deal with all the doom and all the monsters. It got out of control really fast. We went even further on the negative. Man, we had, like, we doomed out. Like, yeah. it gets way beyond. Like, I think we were at the point of where, like, 13 doom or something was the, the, the killer. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it, it just kept going. Doom, doom. We couldn't stop it. We were just getting, like, unlucky. We were trying to prevent doom where we thought the bottom card would come. And then we would just, it would go somewhere else. And then it was on the sheet. And it was out of, it was crazy. Yeah. So I, we did hear that the first scenario, like, it's like an 80% win rate kind of thing. There is some randomness to it. You have to have luck on your side. You maybe want to pick certain characters. Maybe different player counts might, might help with certain combinations of investigators. But there is luck to it. Like, I didn't see the pocket watch. But look how crazy it got once you got that extra action. Yeah, and I didn't even know that was a thing. And I remember we were talking at the beginning about the train station and allies and stuff. Yep. Right from the beginning, we could have had him earlier had had we done that. But again, we didn't. We haven't looked through all of the cards in the decks to not spoil ourselves on that. Yeah. We have played a few times to practice, but and there is a lot, lot of things. A lot of seen. these cards. Maybe it was one of these yeah. that you had that let you roll. I don't know. I don't remember. I did have. Oh, yeah. I had this thing. I had this thing. I think right. Yes. Once per round, as part of an attack action, you may, ro may roll one or all of your dice. Yeah. I had this guy. He was crazy. Yeah, so then it gives you my ability, but for any of yeah. anyone, yeah. 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 So, so the good. fighter guy, I got that guy uh, out of nowhere. I don't even know how that happened. I think on a uh, card. But either way, Can't just remember. I got so lucky. Everything I got just like worked together with everything I was trying to do. It was like mm -hmm. perfect. But now here's a question. When that first anomaly went down turn one, did you think we were going to lose? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the, I knew when it hit hard there, if we stopped it, we were going to have breather for a while. Yeah, yeah. Because that obviously meant we saw a lot of the Doom tokens and we saw the the, the gate burst. Right, right. So right. then you have you possibly have going through the whole bag, kind of like Aeon's End with the uh, initiative deck. Yeah. When you get like the back to back at the start, you know, then we have a breather and that could even spill over into the reshuffle of the adventure deck. Right. Where he could come at the, uh, do the two cards at the end. Yeah. So it could true. give you like a really nice long breather, but I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Um, but also, what happened in our first game that we crushed it, uh, the monsters, we only were drawing weenie cultists for the longest time. Yeah. And then what also happened when it asked us to grab cultists, we would then draw all the big monsters, and then they get put on the top. And we'd spawn some cultists. So yeah, I think I we think... got, like, lucky. Like, we, on the one we lost, we saw all these big guys were, yeah, like... Yeah, they were, like, back-to-back, so they kept yeah. coming out one after another. But, yeah, and this time, even, we did skip a couple. So a couple got put on the top of the deck. Like these guys we didn't see. And they are another three health and a two plus health and elite guys in there. Yeah. Uh, we've never seen that elite guy come and play though, I don't think. No. Um, but I find that just the, based on what, how the enemies come out, where they appear, and if they, they flood you or they block you from going where you need to go, could be a huge thing. A big difference in the game. I don't know. Um, but yeah. And then the second time it was just like everything was going wrong. Um, but yes, Christopher, we are going to play this game again. Yes. 1,000%. Yes, I want to... Yep. Go ahead. Oops. I want to try the different scenarios and see how they change them up if they do. Because um, we haven't read into any further scenarios. Yeah, but I'm it's, definitely it's, excited. It's, it's, it, it's, the balance it maybe is not out of whack, but I think the balance of some characters at certain player counts and combinations, certain players are strong at the core mechanics of the game, right? Mm -hmm. You need to remove Doom by warding. So having high lore helps with that, or abilities that help with that, or items that help with that. And then monsters are all over the place. So you either need to be evading them like crazy, but fighting them and destroying them is even better, obviously. Mm -hmm. Same as Arkham Horror the card game. Those two things are so embedded into the core mechanics of the game, at least in this scenario. We don't know what the other scenarios are like, but based on the rules, it's even saying, generally you want to get clues on the sheet. So observation, researching, uh, you want to get Doom under control, that's, that's warding with lore. And dealing with monsters, which could be observation or it could be strength. So influence seems to be like the least deal. Like yeah, it's just it, some tests on the but board. But getting allies, that allies is how you get influence. Sometimes you're getting a clue could be your influence yeah. uh, test. You need to get that clue off a location you need at the right time. So I don't know. I, I don't know the balance is out of whack, but it's the variability. Like I said, lots of decks of randomly shuffled stuff, random draws. You have lots of dice rolling. You know, you have mitigation but it's on cards that are coming from random decks. And sometimes you get a chance to buy, you don't have the money. Sometimes you have all the money and you just don't draw an encounter card that gives you a chance to buy. Right. And sometimes the things you want to buy are just out of your cost range and stuff like that. So even though you see the awesome items, you may not even get a chance to get them. And the wrong investigator might get them, which means you're wasting turns getting together and trading and that kind of thing. And in a two player game, trying to get to the same space and trade, that's a lot of actions, a lot of turns, unless you just happen to be near each other, uh, which is tougher. So I think it adds a little bit of two-player challenges, the trading being harder in general to do, because mm -hmm. you want to spread out more to put out fires. But this feels very much like Cthu uh, not Cthulhu, uh, pandemic. pandemic. The pandemic general co-op classic style of random decks, random things happening. You do the best you can with the information you have, and there's a little bit of gambling there. Like, do I spend my turn doing this? Or that. This seems like the more urgent thing, but if we draw this, then this is the more urgent thing, but we don't know. So you just got to make guesses sometimes. So if you're not into the same style of game as Pandemic, putting out fires and lots of randomness that you just got to control the chaos and try your best. And sometimes it just, you make the wrong choices. You didn't know they were the wrong choices and randomness happens and it gets out of control. So there's lots of RNG. But that is makes part of the fun, the excitement. Uh, it makes you feel like you're against the odds. And when you pull out a victory, it feels extra sweet. Um, and it feels like it's, it goes good with the theme. I will say this. like The Arkham Files theme of feeling hopelessness, the uncertainty of not knowing what it is that's happening, and the confusion and the sanity and all that stuff. It makes sense you get frustrated and feel some things are not in your control like dice rolling and not getting the items you want and maybe your character's not doing what he needs to do because your things are just happening in the wrong way uh and monsters are appearing in your face whether you like it or not and you can't control that it, it, it goes good with the theme like the, i think it needs that randomness it needs that dice rolling 
It needs those card decks to do that. But if that kind of stuff turns you off, stay away from this game. It's like headlines are random, items are random, dice rolling's random, card draws of clue cards are random, where the doom goes is random, where the monsters come out are random, which monsters is like pulling tokens out of bag are random. Like this game, literally every random thing that could be in a board game, it's like they said, hmm, what if we took everything and put it all in the same game? Like drawing random cards, rolling random dice, pulling random stuff from a bag. What else is there? What else is there that could be random in a game like that? Well, where things land on the board, like is uh, where no, no land. dice rolling, card drawing, oh, okay, and, card drawing, and bag yeah. bag slash pool yep. drawing, whatever blind bag pulling. I don't know what else there is in board gaming, but it feels like they jammed all of those random variance building mechanics are just stuck all in the same game. So at least Arkham the card game, it's like. The random deck drawing and the bag pulling are there, but no dice rolling. Right. Okay, that's a positive you think, right? Uh, but yeah, so some games you can avoid all of that stuff, you know, or Gloomhaven on the on the other end, right? Only has the decks that are is like one random thing. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's all deck drawing, right? It's yeah. one randomized mechanic, no dice and no bag pulling. Uh, but this has it all, and if that kind of chaos drives you nuts, which it does me, and it's one of the things I try to stay away from games like this in general. But I'm giving in more that I realize other people at the table uh, <laughs> have fun with those kind of games with dice rolling, card drawing, the craziness happening. If it's making me be able to play more board games more often because my fellow board game players want to play games like this more often, I will just get frustrated in the corner, but I still have fun playing and I'm just glad to be playing games. And it's a very well done version of that, I think it's fine. Definitely. But I'll be honest, uh, after the first play, even though we crushed it, not a fan of the game. Second time playing it, Kind of liked it a little better, but still feels fiddly and frustrating. Learning the game, just understanding what all the decks were, where things were, what we're drawing, trying to remember the tokens, trying to look for certain items, all, all that stuff. It, it's a lot. Like, it's a lot on the table. The setup is is quite long of uh, shuffling all the decks. Thank you, for Lucky, for subscribing. Thank you. Welcome. Um, but yeah, a lot of setup. Uh, the setup's very long. Shuffling tons of decks, like I said, preparing the bag. Uh, choosing your character from a ton of characters in the game. There are yeah, a pile yeah. of them. I don't know how many there are. I don't know. Uh, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve characters to start with. And in this game, if you get eliminated, you just grab another character in the start of the next round, you set up that character and go. So there's no true player elimination, really. Um, so that's interesting. But yeah, lots of characters, uh, which is interesting. Solo, I, I, Janet, I've never played a solo. I don't even know. It, it, how many investigators do you play? I, I don't know the solo rules, if there are any. I don't think there was any solo rules specific. Yeah, you probably I, just play I, one. And... To be honest, I, I, I like that it has solo as an option. But again, uh, Mel loves this game. Uh, I know other players in our game group will have fun with this game and probably like it a lot. So I really don't have any desire to play it solo. Will I try it solo? Yes, I will, I will try it solo. But this is that type of game where like, I, I love the chaos, I love the working together. Uh, I want to play this a higher player count. It, that appeals to me more than playing it solo. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex says, I play with two solo. Do you have to though, Alex? Do you have to play with two minimum? Is it like Mansion of Madness where it's not like they didn't make it true solo? I don't know. I don't remember. Chris also says the setup is part of the fun. I agree. <laughs> I agree. This. Uh, yeah. Oh, you can play true solo. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyone have any thoughts on playing the solo? Alex, what are your thoughts on the solo? Uh, Janet wants to know uh, about playing the solo. If anyone in the chat has played this solo and has any comments for Janet asking in the chat, you know, let her know. Be honest. If there's negatives to it, positives, if it's a great solo game, if it's not. Like, uh, yeah, just any opinion. I want to hear your thoughts, too, for sure. So Jane is asking because she says, I have no Arkham games in my collection, nor LCG games. Just checking if it would be a good first entry. So, let's see here if we can get this. Oh, oh. looks like BGG has been fixed. Someone contacted their so ID. So on BGG, this is ranked 303 overall, which we couldn't see earlier because the it wasn't populating this. Uh, it's it's a seven seven point eight, which is pretty high, I think. Mm -hmm. and if it gets into eights, so that's it's pretty pretty good. It's a three point two eight weight, and, and some people think it's like uh, could be a medium heavy game. So I I don't know, Janet, if heavy games are your jam or not. 
Uh, but this seems to be one of the heavier ones. Well, when I would say that this is not a heavy game, but this, that might be taking into account the expansions, which we have not played. But I wouldn't say this is a heavy game like this. Would you? Uh, it's definitely not light. I don't think it's a medium weight game. I feel like it is more in the medium to medium heavy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would go more on the... Uh, it's not a four, definitely not. Yeah, maybe that's pretty accurate, like a, a low threes. Yeah. And and I uh, personally, personally, not playing this solo, and I've never played Mansion of Madness solo, but the idea that Mansion of Madness, you have to play with two characters minimum, and I feel like the game isn't balanced very well for two characters. Do you have to house rule it for extra actions, or you have to play a third character to balance out the game properly? Uh, and obviously they didn't design that game with solo in mind. Very horrible design for solo and lower player count characters, in my opinion. This game, though, seems like it was designed with it from ground up. So I would personally be more interested at play, getting this for a solo play, if that makes any difference. Yeah. Minus the only thing you don't have is the hidden information, which, I mean, is not the worst case if you know it's a clue and you can kind of, your eyes can kind of see what yeah, the benefit yeah. is because it's not a big text box. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. And the players, this is what I want to check too. I want to see. It is recommended solo. By 75 people recommended solo, recommended two player. But it's not recommended to play five or higher, really, it seems. Oh, because uh, maybe there's too much downtime between turns? Yeah, just wait. But, but it's only two actions on your turn and then come around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're like going through the Mythos bag every oh, round. Oh, yeah, the Mythos bag would yeah, be Yeah, when take you play with that many long. people, maybe it makes it harder. But you have more people yeah. doing things? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, we've only played this two-player, and I thought it was a lot of fun playing with just you. Yeah. I, I didn't feel like this needs more players. I think it would be... I could see where it'll escalate and be exciting with more players, but it's not needed. Like, it was just such yeah. a fun game, which is playing two players. I like Mansion of Madness better personally. Uh, it obviously is rated a lot higher. It's in, like, the top 100, I think, on BGG. Yeah. Was. Mansion Madness 2nd Edition is rated 34 overall. This is 300 and something, right? Yeah, 303. We have not played Elder Tour, though, which I see Mike's in the chat. Uh, for comparison, when playing Elder Tour, even though it's only two actions, it can take a long time with eight players. Uh, okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I that. guess. Okay, okay. Yeah, we haven't played Eldritch. We're going to play that in the future uh, on the channel. We do have it, obviously. That's where we got the extra dice from, if anyone <laughs> didn't know. Uh, but yeah, we got we got Eldritch. We haven't played it yet, but we will soon uh, and try that out so we maybe have a more educated decision. Look into Eldritch Horror, though, too, Janet. Um, but also, there's Arkham Horror, the card game, but maybe which I like that. Want... I like that better than this, I think. But they're close. You like Arkham, the card game better than this? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know where I would rank them. I think I'm just going to put like Arkham Files number one. <laughs> yeah. That's like a bucket of all their games because I just love them all. Yeah. I don't know. It's very tough. That's the problem. You do need to buy so much for the LCG. It can get priced yeah. and out of control. But you could just pay 35 40 bucks or less, $20 on a use sometimes. And you can find a core set of Arkham Horror LCG used on like Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji, Craigslist, whatever. Go look there first for an Arkham Horror core set. There are people that buy that core set, try the game, and don't like it. So do not do not ever pay full price for a core set of Arkham Horror LCG. You'll find lots of them out there, I believe. At least I did when I looked last time. Um, you might be able to try Arkham Horror LCG for like twenty to thirty dollars. And see if it's even for you. But I assume that would play well solo. A lot of people play that game solo. Um, and you get three scenarios. You get a few investigators to try. You can also play with friends. If you can find another person to play with. You can play two out of that box. Um, and see if the card game's for you. It does get a little complex. Obviously as you go. It, you could be you know hundreds if not thousands of dollars in. By, by getting all the expansions. And they keep coming. Because uh, even with this game. If you get hooked on this game. You're in. I don't remember how much this game was. But there are three expansions out now, and they're all in like the thirty to fifty dollars range. Um, so you can easily be in like over two hundred dollars plus, probably more, uh, getting this game and all of its expansions if you get hooked in. 
So, and then Eldritch Horror, I don't know. Uh, Lord Mike, Mike Rall, if I'm smeared. Lord Mirkal, Mirkal, I don't know how to say that ever, uh, but Mike in the chat uh, might know how many expansions there are for Eldritch Horror, uh, since I know he's a fan of the game. You have a number of the Eldritch expansions if you want to borrow some. <laughs> Let us play the base game first, Mike, before you start pushing on expansions. Oh, I know who it is, Mike. I know who it is. I know who you are. Oh, I know you. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yes. Uh, I don't know how many expansions are for that game or how deep you could get into the bank account on that one. Eight expansions for oh. Eldritch Horror. Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh. And now are they, yeah, are they high like, priced expansions or are they like $25 to $30 an expansion? Or are they in the big box expansion style of like $65? I think, Janet, you just have to look at, uh, if you're looking at one of these games, what appeals to you? Do you mind apps in your games? You know, and Manchester Madness is rated very high. Arkham Horror LCG is rated even higher, I believe. And But do you like deck building in advance to playing? Do you like the idea of expandable card games? Are you looking for more of a contained experience? Then maybe you want to stay away from Arkham Horror, the card game. Uh, there's also Elder Sign. Uh, yeah, which that we was played, fun. We played that recently on the channel. It's a good little dice chucking, not too complex. Still has a bit of the theme to it, not really too much, um, but it does have all the art and everything. Um, but there is Eldritch Horror, which is a cheaper entry if you just like dice rolling and dice placement. Yeah, there's a bunch. I, I don't know. But I don't know Eldritch. Eldritch, I just know, is more of a zoomed out version of this. That's on a world map. Uh, and there's dice rolling, card draw. I don't know what else there is, but it's supposedly just Arkham Horror, but around the world instead of like zoomed in on a a single city or town or in a mansion, you know, or that kind of stuff or mm -hmm. a museum like Elder Sign. Oh my God. Ah, uh, yes. Elder Sign also has a digital version that you can try that too to see if you like that. Yeah, we mentioned that on that stream too. Oh, so the four big ones are $50 MSRP each for Eldritch Horror, and then four of them are at 35 MSRP. So that's even worse than this game. Yeah. But this game could expand. We know Arkham Horror 2nd Edition had tons of expansions too. Um, so I'm sure this game will eventually get to a ton of expansions too. Uh, George is also saying that for uh, Eldritch Horror, it plays best with four to six. Uh, okay, we're going to try to two though. Oh, Janet is saying that she's retiring on the 11th and moving. Aww. Wants to settle in. I'm full-time gaming. <laughs> yes. Janet, that is amazing. So that all is these amazing. Game, all these games, congratulations, by the way. Yes, and congratulations. All, all these games are going to be fine for you because it's, a lot of them have fairly big rule books and pretty complex rule sets. Uh, and they take a while to set up and long playtime, most of them. So none of those are issues to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have the time, so... So it's just, what do you want to do? Do you want to build decks and play a card game? Do you want to play a dice-chucking Elder Sign game? Do you want to play a board game without an app? And, or do you want to, you know, have an app-driven board game in a mansion? Do you want to play Eldritch Horror, which is more on the world stage of Arkham Horror? Um, they all have expandability. You can all dive deeper in all of them. They all are so. I feel like almost all of them feel really good, self-contained. Oh, Janice says all of the above. Yeah, it's all of the above. Damn, I don't know where to start. To be honest, it's totally up to what interests you. And for, financially, and they're financially, all different price, yeah. price costs. Yeah. So. But for me personally, like obviously, I love LCGs, so I, I, a card game will attract me. But also, I think Mansion of Madness is my favorite still because the app-driven nature of you don't know what tile is next. You don't know what monsters will come out. You don't know what you even need to do. You don't know what the hell is going on. And the app takes care of all of that for you and keeps it all hidden. There's no accidentally reading the wrong spot on a card or flipping the wrong card or drawing the wrong card or any of that stuff. Uh, or knowing what tiles are coming next or looking at the campaign setup like Gloomhaven and you kind of know, oh, this is what's on the next tile. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. You don't see it in front of you. I love the app-driven nature of Mage of Madness. It's still, I think, my favorite Arkham game even though it drives me nuts and the balance at the lower player counts a little annoying. But ever since adding one extra action per player, instead of playing with a third character, yep. it feels so much good, so much better. But I do like playing that game at three plus players better. 
So Mage of Madness at three players is like my favorite Arkham experience so far. That's my thoughts. And Mel says I, anything with the Arkham word in the title <laughs> uh, or dice rolling in Cthulhu. Yeah, I love it all. Uh, oh, yeah, so the Cthulhu, Cthulhu Death, Death May, May Die. Die. We didn't mention yeah. that one either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all fun. I will play all of them in the drop of a hat. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I picked them up quickly, too, because a lot of them use a lot of the similar mechanics. Yeah. So it's easy to learn them. It, I, it does blow my mind how FFG was able to, like, use the same art, the same theme, the same IP <laughs> in so many different products. <laughs> yeah. And, yes, they all feel similar. But they all are different and they all fit a certain niche so if you like one style of game over another they they're all there but yeah it starts to get a little repetitive like yeah it's always bad things are happening you're very limited on actions it's very survival horror resident evil kind of feeling to it um uh, but again yeah. i like that i like i know, the I know. playing from behind and yeah. yeah i i yeah they're campy they're they're more they're they are hardcore they can be treated as hardcore games all of them are hardcore games, I feel like, a little bit. But they still can be played, like, fun and casual, too. I feel like we played this fun and casual, no? I don't know. I was pretty, like, efficiency on actions and items and digging in decks. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was still trying to game the game as much as possible. But yes, you could just relax with this game, have fun, roll some dice. Yeah, things might get out of control. It's just like Pandemic. Like, Pandemic can be played very fun and casual. It also can be played, like, very hardcore tournament style. <coughs> And so you can have both ways. But yeah, it's yeah. a very good middle ground. Yeah. And yeah, you're definitely playing from behind. It feels mm -hmm. like a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a, me a mechanism in games I love. <laughs> oh, yes. And Janet now will be available for more daytime streams, which Yay. I need to get back to. Uh, yes, I need to get back to that. Yes, I agree. I agree. Well, I agree. Janet's thinking, wait till the 11th. Oh, yeah. So I got to <laughs> wait till the 11th. No. Two but more yeah. weeks. You got two more weeks, yeah, Janet. Yeah. You can do it. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool, Jan. Uh, I'm happy for you. That's awesome. Yeah, that is so awesome. Uh, Elder Torah can spiral out of control for sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward. Not. Yeah. No, he's no, not. I'm not. I'm not. Not. I can't even finish the sentence. But yes, uh, we'll see. Yeah, but we'll all are awesome it. adventures. As yeah. That's exactly right. I as long as you're into the IP, too. right? Yeah. If you're not into this horror IP, Arkham Files slash Cthulhu Mythos slash HP Lovecraft, uh you know genre there's other games out there with all the other themes lots of great games out there you do not need to play these type of games i'm having fun and journeying through them to see what they're all about because i avoided these games for like the last like nine or ten years being in the hobby i avoided them up until like we got mansion madness like a couple years ago mm -hmm. that was like our first real like all right i'll try it because it, it looked really cool at the app driven game uh i could have yeah I, I was like i don't care what it is it's a dungeon crawler with an app driven app driven ai like system dungeon master whatever you want to call it i was in i, I don't care that i had this theme on it um but because of playing that game and you guys asking for the other games it led me into trying these other games and now i'm like really into it and i'm having a having a fun time that's good 95 percent of the time <laughs> uh bill says you're gonna try different characters too yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, we always do that so yeah. we'll, we'll probably lock ourselves out of these characters if we play two player again just to try different characters uh so we'll try a different mix see how it works yeah. I, I don't know if that'll cause problems or not we'll see but uh yeah there was another fighter i wanted to try he was like a gangster guy tommy muldoon or no not tommy muldoon that's what i'm playing uh there was some gangster fighting guy i forget who it was and you, when you died, you played like Maria yeah. Lambeau, uh, Marie Lambeau, but there was another but one. There was thinking. another, there was two that I was picking between, I can't remember who, but I was just looking for someone that was more lore focused, but maybe we've totally flipped on our heads where I play a character that's more fighty and you play more of a warder kind of character. Yeah. But. And then there's some like new characters that I don't think we've seen before, Calvin Wright and Daniela Reyes, which I know were added to like the Arkham Horror uh, mythos, which I think are very cool that they did that. Very cool. Uh, because anyone who knows H.P. Lovecraft, I don't think he would have, uh, had those type of characters in his, uh, books being heroes. Michael McGlenn. That's who it was. Michael McGlenn. He's mm. like a mobster. Yeah. This oh, he's guy. a high fight. But look at his observation. Uh, kind of scared me away from it. But he does have four on the strength. Yeah, so he's just a fighter. Also, your willpower is pretty good. Yeah, no, so... the willpower is lower. This is what stopped me from playing this guy. He has four versus, uh, five willpower. And you guys know... 
That sanity stat drives me nuts when I don't have a 7 or 8 in sanity. I feel like I okay. always lose because yeah. of that. Um, but in this game, the way you can soak it on items and allies uh, makes me not as worried. As long as I can find some of that. But yeah. Arkham Horror, our Elder Tour has like 55 characters in total. Oh, oh my God. goodness. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I can't stream a game with every single one. No. Yeah, I'm sorry. We can't play that no. much Elder Chore. No, I'm just <laughs> Oh, reviewers claim Sleeping Gods is a... Jonas is saying in the chat, Sleeping Gods is a step above all other Cthulhu games, but I'm not convinced. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't even say they're comparable. Yeah, those are apples but, yeah, and oranges. Yeah, they're different types of games. Yeah, that has like... Elder Gods kind of sleeping gods kind of like theme ish to it, but it's not. It's it's not a game where we felt like no you were struggling and you were gonna die all the time and everything is against you. Nope. No, that's nope. just like a more fun open world adventure game. That's like a sandbox. You could become a crazy powerful set of I don't know ship mates or whatever you are in that game. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I think it's apples and oranges as well. I, I, don't, I don't know, know who why, said that, but... Yeah, what reviewer is comparing Sleeping Gods to, like, an Arkham Horror game? Yeah, I feel, I feel like they're very, very different. That is... Yeah, I never would even put those even in the same category ever at all. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah, no. I'm trying to even think of one Arkham game we've played that's even... Even, come, even if I would think of relating those two. Yeah. So, yeah, and you're not convinced that doesn't exist. Jonas, uh, those comments no. are, are silly. Uh, those reviewers need to stop drinking on the reviews. Uh, or before or they, they have never actually played any of these games and just by, I don't know. I bet, I bet, I don't know. I feel like they're not hardcore gamers. I don't know. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, and, and reviewers have their own opinion, and maybe to them that's what it feels like. But, but why I would wouldn't you even say, compare I wouldn't it. even say they're comparable. I, I don't even know why you'd sit down and go, you know what? I'm going to get rid of all my Arkham games because this Sleeping Gods game is a better Arkham game. That sound, sentence sounds crazy to me. Like, yeah. they lost their sanity. Yeah. They, they have zero sanity left, and they failed. Yeah. They failed. They went insane. Yes. Uh, shots fired. <laughs> I don't know who it is. But... Yeah, we don't know who it is, so it's fine. Yeah, you may be misremembering. Okay, well, when you find out who it is, tell them Rob's Gaming Table says you're crazy <laughs> and you need to find something else to do because you're completely nuts. Yeah, or play at one of these games before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have, Definitely different. I have seen before in reviews where they compare, like, some game that's super light to, like, Mage Knight or Gloomhaven. Yes, I've, you know, really? I've shown you yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, but I think Where it's crazy. some people say, oh, this game is, is, you know, like Gloomhaven. It has, you know, exploring in it, but it's maybe a better version or, like, you know, they compare it to it. And it's like, no, 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 totally different worlds. Like, not even the same type of game, not a dungeon crawler, not an adventure game. Yeah. And they'll just compare them, and it's like, no, 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 no. Don't start telling people watching a review that they, if they're interested in Mage Knight, which is four point something complexity, or a Gloomhaven, you know, table hog, you know, tons of setup, big huge campaign, play it for years type game, and you're comparing some game that's, you know, fantasy themed and as deck building, you know, don't compare that to those games, because you may have some more casual people that the game you're showing them might appeal to them, but then they might start looking into Mage Knight and stuff thinking that they're okay for that, and it, they might not be, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, reviewers, when they start comparing games that are not, like, similar, I get worried that they're gonna make some people not like the hobby as much by showing them games that are not, yeah, not not really in the same, like, level complexity-wise and rule book wise and, you know, getting it to the table, learning curve, all that stuff, mm -hmm. so. Now you have me nervous, because I did say this game is similar to Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter is annoying to learn and But and I feel like it is a similar game. It's just similar, uh, game. yeah, a similar style of co-op and stuff. Yeah. But Dead of Winter has a whole uh, betrayer mechanic if you, if you yeah, keep but, it in there. Yeah, one piece of the game. But I'm not saying it's exactly the same. I'm just saying the mechanics of the game is Yeah, similar. putting out fires, yeah. feeling like you're, going, you're failing all the time. And different locations. You're going to different locations to get specific items if you can. Yeah, because Dead of Winter is survival horror, right? Yeah. This is survival horror. Like, yeah, so... I always compare it to Resident Evil because that's my experience with survival horror. But also, um, Tain and Grail is a survival horror game, in my opinion. Uh, you know? Yeah. you got to stay alive. It's all about survival. 
Okay, good. The game's just... trying to kill you all the time. Yeah. It's like that. Uh, Dead of Winter is uh, 3.01 complexity. Okay. So in so the same close. range. Yeah. In the same range of complexity wise, yeah. Oh, Dead of Winter is ranked better than this. Uh, yep. Dead of Winter is ranked 129 out of all board games of all time still. Hmm. Even though people always tell us it's like no longer relevant. But I still people see people discussing it online. I still hear people buying it to this day and, and experiencing it who are coming into the hobby. And I think it's still a great game. Yeah, yeah I it's do too. got some flaws, I feel. But uh, yeah, we got to play that again. Yeah. But not two player. Because I know it yeah, sucks two sucks player. two player. But see, that's the difference. This game, we just played at two player. It's great at two player. I know. Because now. That game. I feel, like the industry, I feel like the industry has gone more in understanding low player count and solo games sell very well. And so if you're going to make a game for, you know, four or five people and design it for that, make sure you balance it or have the mechanics designed so you can have two people at the table and still have fun. And I feel like a lot of early board games we got when we got into the hobby, a lot of the games that had amazing mechanics, amazing gameplay, you know, I felt like they were, they just didn't care. They expect all board games to be played four player or higher. But I feel like it's, it's kind of like turned on his head. And Yogi says you could play Dead of Winter as a straight co-op variant. Yes, which we discussed. Yes. And yes, that's how you have to play it as two-player. Yeah. And the game sucks playing it like that. It sucks. It's fine. It's passable. But there's just way better games that you can play instead of that at two-player. This one. Dead of Winter, you buy <laughs> that. To play three, four, four or five, I'd recommend. Yeah. Player. Uh, it's recommended at best with four. But get four or five players around the table, play Dead of Winter, not knowing if somebody is trying to tank your playthrough. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's a fun time for sure. And you're all trying to work together, like, feed the people, kill the zombies, go out and find gas, go out and find food. Oh my god, you, just, you got frostbit. Oh my god, you're surrounded by zombies, let them die. Wait, are they trying to tank us? Everyone, let's vote and try to vote them out of our shelter, you know? And then, oh wait, they were actually not trying to tank us. They just sucked at playing the game and helping us. And... <laughs> Roll bad. Inefficient. And, oh my god. Like, ah, uh, so bad. Like, yeah, just so many fun uh, experiences. Find a fun play group that all have good poker faces and all like screwing with each other and get them around the table and you have a great co op game on your hands with mm -hmm. a trader mechanic. Very fun game. Very, very fun game. Uh, Dead of Winter is great. Dead of Winter is great. There's a reason why Asmodee kept the Dead of Winter IP when Plat Hat Games left the studio or left that uh, company. Uh, there's a reason why they kept it, because it obviously still sells well. And now Dead of Winter actually it falls under FFG, uh, I believe. Oh, yeah? Uh, Fantasy Flight Games now is responsible for the Dead of Winter publishing uh, going forward. And I, yeah, it's like Battlestar Galactica. I haven't played Battlestar oh. Galactica. We now have it, but I'm waiting till COVID passes and we can have like four or five players around the table and we can play that live on stream. Uh, I'm excited to try that game. That's it's one that I've been wanting since I got into the hobby. And thanks again to Meeple Monkey, uh, who you guys see in the chat sometimes, for sending that to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because yeah, that game is super expensive, hard to find, out of print, and I feel uh, very blessed that we have it. Um, and yeah, thank you for that again. Which we will, I will kiss his butt all day <laughs> in that stream when we finally get the players <laughs> over to play it. But yes, I can't wait. Uh, Steve says, this Warmind is a good co-op. It's a great co-op. It's one of my favorite games, 100%. And Yogi says, 4v4 uh, Warring Colonies. We played 2v2 Warring Colonies. We streamed that. But we haven't played 4, 4v4 yet. Yeah. Yeah, we never did 4v4, have, yeah. Yeah. We don't have the capacity, I don't think, to film 8 players, do we? Uh, well, maybe, but... <laughs> we did 7 for yeah, Game of Thrones, the board game second edition, and we were trying to have an 8th, but somebody didn't show up, so we had to play with 7. Yeah, true. But we, so, yes, we technically we can. can do a live stream with 8 players. Yes, the sound might not be the greatest, because I can't mic up everybody. Um, but we would have mics in the room, so you should be able to hear everybody. But the problem with that many players, I find, it's it everyone starts talking over each other yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it's more difficult. Uh, so it gets a little annoying to watch, but it's we've done it before. We've played games on stream or on video, six players in yeah. the past, eight players, seven players. Yeah, yeah. we could definitely so do that. We could that. do that. It just would be hard to follow along. We'd have to, like, with so many components on the table and so many players, you have to, like, zoom out further, too. So it might be a little harder to see everything. And it would mm -hmm. take a really long time, too, because everyone explaining what they're doing and trying to show the camera things. Yeah, and for streaming, for sure. Yeah, it just gets a little messy. It might be a little boring if nobody's explaining what they're doing and kind of being quiet and things. Like, yeah. 
But anyways, we're going to get out of here so we can go eat some dinner. Uh, but this has been awesome. I had fun with this. This game is definitely growing on me. I am not... Like I said, after the first playthrough of this, I was like, I don't care for this game. Second playthrough, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm understanding a little better. I'm getting past all the fiddly card decks and things. I'm understanding the flow of the game now. And uh, the third playthrough, yes, this game has definitely grown on me. I will play this anytime. And uh, yeah, we'll play this again on the channel for sure. 100%. We're going to stream this game again, 1,000%. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow. We're going to be playing uh, Arkham Horror, the living card game. We're doing a standalone scenario tomorrow. We're going to play Roguru, Curse of the Roguru, uh, again. This time not as part of a campaign. We're going to play it solo for our second time only. Uh, we're going to try out a couple of the Investigator Starter decks and not modifying them. So that may be a bad thing. It, it may We may fail, fall flat on our face. But either way, we're going to have fun tomorrow not being stressed out about earning experience and dying in our campaigns oh, yeah. or anything like yeah, that. It's, it's more, uh, yes. yeah. I'm looking forward to just playing a standalone scenario of Arkham that we can fail horribly and I can walk away not feeling like I tanked our campaign. Yeah, it doesn't affect the rest of the so hopefully, upcoming yeah, games. I won't get stressed out as much, hopefully, and I want to see how the game works to stand alone because I may have more fun with it in that mod mode. Surprising, <laughs> after I love campaign games, but yeah, we should be fine. Says Yogi. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, um, I'm excited. Uh, also, tune in early. We're going to, I think... No, we'll, we'll choose the experience, how we upgrade our decks, right? Or should we... Whatever you we'll want see. To do. If we have time tonight, I want to upgrade those decks because we're going to play with up to nine experience. I think you're allowed for a standalone. Yeah. Before taking an extra horror or something. An extra weakness. Extra weakness. Oh yeah. yeah. So we will spend up to nine experience from the from the investigator deck. Uh, so you're kind of locked into like what you could choose from. And if there's choices, we could just choose, or we could talk about it on stream tomorrow and try to pick which cards we play with. But we're going to be back for that tomorrow. Playing with the Investigator Starter Deck products, which we have all five now. It happened. It happened. <laughs> it did. I had to buy them from the U.S., a little more expensive. And then they started showing up in Canada. Uh, but they sell out so fast that I wasn't even able to get any. I was trying to get a second set of them in Canada, but I still haven't been able to. By the time I get the email notification, log into the store to buy it, they're already gone. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's nuts. But it's a good nuts. FFG, print more. Yeah. They will sell. Yeah. People want to get into that game about it will be quick okay yeah we can, we yeah, can discuss I it the, yeah we only have so many options to choose yeah. from we're not going through the whole card pool it's only what's in that enclosed that deck but so. i do want to show off the starter decks for people who might be afraid of getting into arkham horror as a way to start playing the game and like getting some extra investigators and more cards in your pool i think they're cool products i just want to see how they work yeah like how how decent they are and i've heard they're pretty good uh even on their own and they can still get you through some scenarios and stuff so mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't like the play of FFG to usually give you like a mediocre starter deck and you kind of have to go buy other stuff to make the deck even worthy to play with. Uh, so suppose they did a better job with it. Well, the starter decks have good info for initial upgrades. Oh, perfect. Well, maybe we just do that then. Yeah. Maybe we just we just follow that. We'll, we'll take a look at it. I'm yeah. going to read the sheets uh, tonight and we'll see. Maybe we just tweak our decks and stuff um, before we stream. We'll see. And then we'll just talk about it. 9 XP and only from starter decks is pretty easy. Okay, okay. That's what I would think. There's not that many yeah. choices, right? Okay, okay. We can do it on the stream, yeah. too. Yeah. All right. We're going to get out of here. Thanks all for watching. Thank everyone for your support. Anyone wants to donate to the channel, links are down in the video description. Make sure you hit that like button. It helps YouTube promote this video to other people who are interested in Arkham Horror, board games, all that kind of stuff. Helps us with the algorithm and helps grow the channel, helps more people show up in chat. And yeah, it just keeps us going. So thank you all for the support. Uh, again, if you're watching this later, you have any comments or suggestions, any replies to anything we talked about today, timestamp it if you can, if it's relevant to rules lookups that can help other people learn from our mistakes, uh, or if it's just strategy stuff or your experience with the game or information about expansions, or tell us we're crazy for which Arkham games we like better than others. No. Or sure. tell us how your playthrough went. Yeah. With no spoilers, I guess. Oh, I guess that might be. Yeah, try to keep a spoiler yeah, free ish no in the comments just for people might find this as like their first Arkham Horror video and I don't want to spoil them. Yeah. Um, but if they're looking for rules corrections down in the comments, uh, that's awesome. But feel free to reply, drop in the comments anything that, uh, yeah, give us feedback or anything like that. Always great. And we'll see you for tomorrow's live stream. And of course, if you're not subscribed, like 60 ish percent or something <laughs> watching, I'm looking at you. I see you watching and not subscribing. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Helps the channel grow, of course. And thank you all. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.